o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen. And we are here. Here we are. Look, there's yeah. three of us this time. Isn't that neat? Yeah, we got us all on camera, it looks like. <laughs> Let me get an audio check, guys, uh, in the comment sections. Uh, can you hear us all right? Yeah, because I changed the uh, setting right. on the mic to be, like, all around so we could hopefully hear everybody. And yeah. I turned it up some because I know we were having some problems with uh, <laughs> Sandra. Sandra is so excited to see you because she's very she was very curious about you. About me? Yeah. yeah. Hi! <laughs> When I was doing this, I was yeah. thinking, isn't in the Willy Wonka movie, isn't doesn't Mike TV say something about like, hi, my hi, dad, or one of them does? Yeah, he does, right? actually. Yeah. I'm on TV or something. <laughs> yeah. That's what I feel like. Yeah. This is the closest thing I'm ever going to get to be. Oh, it was TV. hi, mom, hi, dad, hi, fish face, I think he there said. There you go. Hi, fish face. Hi, mm -hmm. fish face. <laughs> So there you go. Yeah. Oh shit. We got a guest. Says DJ Mania. Yes, I announced that yeah. one earlier. Probably Sophie's we announced for, it. Sophie's with us for two weeks. She's going to be a regular for the next two weeks. Yeah. So she'll be on all the yeah. probably movie live streams, and she will also be on next week's show, which is my birthday show. Yeah. We're going to eat some cake on this. Yeah. Shit. We're gonna have <laughs> birthday celebration will be live. We're going to be drinking. I don't. We probably won't do presents, but we're going to do the cake. Yeah, because I don't know. I don't know what presents. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll do the presents. <laughs> presents will be live. There's checked. a good chance my presents won't arrive on time. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so hopefully nobody will like give me anything that I'll open it and it'll be like super embarrassing. Yeah. Which is, not you know, that's that's not gonna happen. So nothing this, embarrasses yeah. me. It's funniest thing. Like uh, Sophie, Sophie was was kind of like a, a fan of the show, and then we kind of met her online and. Then she came over and hung out with us, and it's the fucking funniest thing. It turns out she was hanging out with a dude I grew up with in Michigan. Well, I personally friend. wasn't. Yeah. My middle sister. Middle sister was. Is yeah. friends with yeah. his friend's sister, and right. they do art conventions and things yeah. together. So there's like a weird connection going on. Yeah, it's like on. a weird. It was yeah. the force. Yeah. It was the, the force. Yeah, connected yeah. me to you guys. That's what it was. It's true. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, I'll work that girl out, man. She took her to the gym today. Got the gym. How how did how my feel? arms are shaking? Yeah. It's a good thing I didn't I didn't attempt to do eyeliner because it was like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of dark yeah. in here anyway. It's yeah. like you yeah. can never like I have eyeliner, but you can't really see it because of my damn glasses. Because when I don't have glasses on, I can't see my nose. Bench press, Carl, yep. and lower body. That was it. So it was a full body workout. Alex okay. says, there's already the one dislike. I swear. I'm telling you, there's a person out there, and they think yeah. that's their job. Yeah. I have seen the cutest. I told you there's, like, videos of baby goats wearing pajamas jumping around. There's videos yeah. of kittens hugging each other. And there's, like, hundreds of dislikes on that. And I'm like, why do you hate Joy? Why? Uh, it's a hate watcher. <laughs> I know. I'm I not guess. worried about hate watchers. I'm it's, not either. I just it's think probably, it's very funny. It's probably one of the dudes that fucking says something sideways and I told him to fuck off. It's probably all of that. <laughs> or it's a 13-year-old that gets their kicks by just going yeah. around and just hitting it on everybody's yeah. videos. Or it's, <laughs> a, <laughs> it's just trolling. That's what I mean. It's you go around trolling. and you just hit it on everyone's yeah. video. Sanders yeah, says, like, does BTK have internet in prison? It maybe it's him. <laughs> yeah. No, he would love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's BTK. He's, you're like his biggest fan. I mean, who else is talking about him? that much he's not relevant probably anymore. he does we probably shouldn't be giving him the attention he desires <laughs> if he can even they better not be giving him internet in prison that it's not that i it's not that i'm looking for attention or anything it's just it just normally happens when you have a man of my magnitude you know? <laughs> my magnetism of course you know women are going to talk to me that's just what they they know x factor when they see x factor mm -hmm. you know, just, yeah. he's a minotaur i'm a minotaur in making my own maze theseus trying to lay the string <laughs> You know, even the ancient Greeks knew. <laughs> they knew the power of the bull. <laughs> yeah. Hung like a bull. Uh, okay. I'm not really. I'm not really buying that. I'm, not, I'm looking at BTK. And I'm not really thinking that that motherfucker's hung. Well, if he was, I really don't think he would have had to become a serial killer. I'm well, just saying. Well, I'm not saying that little dick motherfuckers become serial killers. And that well, no, not either. all of them. But I'm just, just saying. I just well, look, look at him. At, look at look at D'Angelo. I wish. Yeah, you, yeah, wouldn't yeah. you like to know? Wouldn't you like to know? Like, yeah, be like, the well, lineup, be like how, what's the real person? Yeah, like, so like, be like, what's the deal? What's the deal, yeah. man? Fucking tr <laughs> drop your drawers. Let's see yeah. if you really. D'Angelo would be like pulling you. guns on like, me. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. My penis yeah. is not strong. Stop yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, D'Angelo would rather die. He'd rather die than let everybody know. He was killing couples while they were in bed and everything. Yeah, that was Motherfuckers. Bad cop, dirty cop. 
Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. That does not surprise me. Derek, and yeah. like I said, we called it. Because we did yeah. a show about that motherfucker before he even got caught. I had a feeling he was a cop. It was somebody yeah, who came was across comfortable. very complex. Well, it's a lot of those types of serial killers, that particular type of serial killer, are like cop groupies. So even if they're not cops, they, you know, they they they're uh-huh. cop adjacent. No, I had the feeling that he was comfortable walking around in neighborhoods with guns at night and crawling into people's windows and going into people's houses, and he was comfortable with it. And I think he did it as a job, as a day job. And then it turns out it was right. I said that he was probably a cop. Because he, he knew how to control two people. It's like basically making arrests is what he was doing. Yeah. yeah. I'm reading he, comments, he sorry. It says, yeah. no, I'm not from New York. I'm from Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good old mitten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as was voted on by last week's patrons, the, I kind of, okay, so this is what happened. I just, without thinking too much about it. Because somebody said, oh, you should do like a killer nurses show or like an Angels of Mercy kind of show. And I was like, okay. So I put that up there and most people voted for that. So then I was kind of like, well, shit, um, there's a lot of those. So which ones should I do? And so I just basically went through and picked like four at random just so I could kind of get, um, you know, kind of a wide range of motivations. I wanted a couple of female ones, a couple male ones. Um, you know, one of them's a doctor. Uh, but, the, you know, the other ones are nurses. Like, you know, I'm going to do How, uh, Harold Shipman, probably one of uh, the UK's most prolific serial killers. May have killed as many as 250 people. They're not entirely sure. Uh, also going to do Jane Toppin because I want to do, like, kind of that old school, early 20th century poisoner. Also, female serial killer who maybe had a sexual motive, which is very unusual um, if, you know, if what she said is to be believed. Uh, and also then there was a couple other ones that were kind of, uh, you know, that were prolific or, you know, came up in first in a lot of searches. Now, some people have mentioned in the comments, like a couple of other ones that I was thinking about doing, but I was like, well, I don't want this show to be like five hours long. So, um, I might do a volume two of this at some point. So this might be one of those things where it's like the creepy disappearances show, you know what I mean? Where I have to like keep doing volumes because there's so many of them, sadly. But yeah, so uh, that's what we're going to do on this. And we're going to talk about four cases, hopefully. Um, and we won't, hopefully won't get too drunk at the end. And I'll just be like ranting and raving and not <laughs> remembering what I'm talking about. As happened on the Collar Bomb show, which I still do not remember the end that of. That was fucking funny. And which I still have not had the courage yeah. to watch. <laughs> no, it was great. I loved it. Everybody seemed to like that show. I, I, they did. I have got so many messages going, that was the best show ever. I and have so like, much sympathy because I, I've been there. And I was <laughs> like, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> I, well, I had to walk her through, yeah. through Well, the and I was getting so sleepy. She was starting to go just... sideways and I'm just like, I'm trying to keep her back on track. Oh. You did a good job though. I did. Yeah, I was making sure you covered the bases. I can't in order to close. it together. It's just time to close the show down. It was time to close it down. And yeah. I just had to make sure that some of the main points were there. You were kind of losing track. But, you know, as long as your mouth was running, you you were putting on a good show. <laughs> as long as my mouth was running. As long running. as your mouth was running, the show was good. Well, that was the bad thing because I was, like, getting really sleepy. And I'm just like, I just want to put my head down and go to sleep for a minute. I'm just, like, really The only problem head. is sometimes <laughs> when you get drunk and when you get tired like that, you start going sideways, you'll kind of repeat the same thing maybe twice two or three times yeah well i do that when i'm because it's almost kind of like you're trying to make filler when you know you know what i mean i'm just like okay what's next what's next and then you'll you push on that's really the only difference okay you might say something twice or three three times you just because i have had several bartenders tell me that they could tell when tom was drunk but they couldn't tell when i was drunk (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah yeah when i'm drunk like i'm pretty good at hiding it but I mean, I have to be pretty far gone before when, people will be like, man, you're fucked up. You guys would fucking laugh if you saw me when I was fucking <laughs> Because I've, be, I've become a fucking beta. I just fucking sit there and I start zoning out and Jenny starts fucking picking on me. Well, yeah, because oh, it's, it's, fucking, because it's funny. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah. you always pick on me all the time, yeah. so it's nice. So when you're in a vulnerable, when you're in a vulnerable position, I like to like yeah. take advantage. Yeah, and then and then <laughs> and, and what was the female bartender's name? Um, Which one, Tiff? Tiff, yeah. And Tiff like, you okay, Tom? You all right, Tom? Like, yeah, I'm okay. She's you're probably picking. only half like listening to what she's Yeah, saying, only half right? listening. You're like, yeah, okay. I'm barely, barely yeah. standing. Yeah, yeah that's saying. So. She, she, she pick, she's picking on you again, Tom. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You okay, Tom? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I get beta as fuck when I'm drunk. Aw. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's like, yeah. that's what I mean. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> 
Now yeah. I get now I get you back. Now I get you back. I but do not yeah. pick on you. I tease you. you it's different. You kind of pick. Oh, stop. It. You kind of pick stop on it. me. No. <laughs> no Edmund Cullen. I know. See, that was one of the ones that like I wanted to do. And like somebody else said, I think uh, Richard Angelo. He was one that was kind of like uh, one of those what they call a malignant hero. Where he would, like, fuck people up just so he could come in and go, I'll save you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That type of thing. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be for volume two. Like I said, these ones I just picked kind of like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. And I, you know. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to do four cases. Uh, so anyway, so you want to do shout outs? Let's do shout outs. Yeah, do shout outs. Yeah, Tim, but T- St- Stonebo is saying I'm a beta when I'm drunk. I said, yeah. I'm a- <laughs> you have to see it. It's not like I instantly become a beta. I get drunk. I become fucking funny as fuck. I become an alpha. I'm the, I'm the fucking life of the fucking party. Then I might want to try to throw my weight around a couple, a little bit. You know what I mean? Or stand up for somebody. I might almost get into a fight. That yeah, has happened. That's happened. And then if I keep going, all of a sudden it's like, boom, I'm a beta. Boom, I'm boom. a beta. Like just boom. There's another shirt. And I'm, yeah, boom. And I'm like, with a little huh, picture of what? Tom going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. do you remember it the next no, day? I don't, I, no, I remember it. I remember he kind of remembers. So you're like, it doesn't count. It's not, it's well, not see, yeah. The reason why I become a beta is because I'm holding on for dear fucking life. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to re- maintain an even keel. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do that. It's like holding on. I'm walking. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. When I think about when I have to go right. downstairs, I like think about my my mind needs to be yeah, yeah. yeah. one step to yeah. Yeah. Well, because Don't I've fall, well yeah. at Ibar, I've fallen down the stairs when I was stone cold sober yeah. because I'm a klutz. Yeah. So I'm really, really, really very yeah. careful when I'm drunk. Like or when I have a, like a credit card or something out, I'm like, <laughs> I'm taking this now, putting it in this wallet, and yeah, it's going I here, and I have to like yeah. process it all. In my yeah, head. it's like, is, is that in there? Yes. Did that imprint? Yes. So tomorrow I'm just like, yeah. shit, where's my shit? Exactly. I'm like, no, 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 no. I thought this through very yeah, carefully. Yeah, I do. I do the exact same thing. That's so yeah. funny. And it's like, yeah, you try to like stamp it in there. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you wake up, See, the next, I'm not drunk. I because I will <laughs> wake up the next day day and be like where's my wallet where's my car where's my this where's my that you know what i mean so yeah. you know if it's been a good night they're quoting me boom i'm a beta <laughs> yep <laughs> see you said how it. does this shit happen man i'm coming up with fucking well, i just talking fault. band names happen names for bands happen Na- fucking bumper stickers happen fucking shit for shirts just i uh, say some shit and all of a sudden everybody's like yeah uh, it doesn't sound special to me <laughs> It doesn't sound special. That's good. Somebody, somebody commented that I'm like Lee Ermey. I was actually kind of fucking honored. Because that was, well, like, yeah. was the master fucking drill sergeant. You know, yeah. One of the best drill sergeant of all times. Is it from a movie? I could, yeah. I'll show you. <laughs> I'm going to show you Full Metal Jacket. And you will see it's sitting in there. You will yeah. see Lee Ermey in action. And he's, oh, wait. Is this the one from that clip? There's like a meme clip where you're yeah, 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 yeah. yelling he's at the kid. He's yelling at the kid. Yeah, he's yeah. Super and there's those yeah. memes yeah. and like yeah. ones where it turns into music. Yeah. Yeah, and that is not an act. During the time I was at Sand Hill, and <laughs> it was wartime during the first Gulf War. That's the way drill, drill sergeant. How did you not just laugh though? Because like you don't take that shit that seriously. I mean, you do, but you know, it doesn't break you. You're just like, yeah, okay. So. Well, <laughs> you're so fucking tired. Most of the time, you can't laugh. You'll you'll laugh well, afterwards. Yeah. You're just fucking beat tired because like, they've been beating whatever, on you yeah. and making running you around, <laughs> and you haven't had much sleep. Yeah, you know. So you're just- the, the, in 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 the movie, he laughs because he just arrived there. Okay. They're still fresh. I After mean, like a couple of days, you're just fucking. I'm just worn saying, out. if somebody yelled at me like a stereotypical drill sergeant, I wouldn't be like, "Oh my god!" Like I'd be like, "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay." Like, <laughs> well, they're not yelling at you. Yeah, they're yeah. yelling at something that you did, and they are fucking with you. But it's part of the game. That's what I mean. You have to but I know it. that it's part of the game, so yeah. I'm like, "All right." Yeah. Let's they play. don't. The <laughs> idea is that you, is they want they're testing. They're looking for psychos, a guy who can't take it, a guy who can dish it but can't take it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're waiting for somebody to react, like throw a punch or something, so they can throw you out. Right. But That's if you it don't, is. then it's like, oh, you're it's just part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> but it is fucking hilarious. I mean, they're 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 like comedians, mean spirited comedians. Well, all comedians are mean spirited. Okay. If you're not mean spirited, you're not a good comedian, really. You're for kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Think about it. You know, what I mean, every comedian I've ever heard, the motherfucker was kind of mean. You know, but. Uh, I think so. didn't somebody somebody said that that you, to to be a comedian I think you have to you have to be depressed or what is it? A, well, I feel um, like a lot of them sadly are self loathing It's aggressive, yeah. Because humor is a Fun. defense mechanism. Like a, yeah. Yeah. You're kind of like making fun. Well, not necessarily making fun of other people because I don't really find that all that funny unless 
I hate the per- same person that they're talking about, but um, it's I, I do feel like it's deflecting shit away from like people picking on them to like picking on others. You know what I mean? Like so that's why a lot of comedians are messed up emotionally. Probably vindictive. Like someone did the yeah. parody and they're like, I'm gonna. Like not all of them. You. I don't. I don't think that's necessarily yeah. the case, but a lot of them that is kind of a stereotype. Yeah. You know what all I mean? Right. Um, yeah, somebody, uh, somebody said earlier that, like, that, that show, that infamous collar bomb show, uh, Sandra said, she's like, Jenny wanted, she was disappointed that the show was over. I, you know why? <laughs> it was because I thought that I didn't cover everything, and I was sitting there going, I have so much shit left, you didn't, wouldn't let me talk, you know what I mean? So I was getting like that, so it wasn't so much, because I was tired and I wanted to end, but I thought that we hadn't talked about the topic. Is, that's yeah. why I was getting upset about ending it because I thought like we just like fucking just left it, but I guess it was all right. But like I said, I will probably never listen to that just because I, or watch it because I don't want to see what happened. But yeah, so <laughs> even though everyone told me it was awesome, all right, so we're gonna do some shout outs. Um, some of these I've already done on some of the uh, matinee live streams, but you know I like to do them on the main show in case other people aren't watching. So we have a couple of new patrons, uh, Blake and Shay Nicole. So, hey there. Thank you very much and welcome. Also, um, I showed this on the show and I'm like kind of like scared to pick it up, but I don't really want to move the camera over. So, Jamie, aka Black Marigold, who is one of our patrons also. You can pick that camera up. Yeah, well, then we'll have to like fuck it up and put I it back. I could put it back. Okay, I you can, I can put be it back. cameraman. Yeah, look at the. Okay, so this is the Weeble Haunted Mansion. Oh, Wait, can, can we this? see it? Let me see. Let me see. see Hit it? the back off. Yeah. yeah. Gotta see it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There's the Weeble Haunted Mansion. Yeah. It's open. See, I didn't yeah. have it open before. It's from the 70s, huh? Eh? It is. Yeah. I had this when I was a kid. There's the front of it. Look, beware of ghost. Little door opens. It's adorable. Little witch up there. Little ghost. All this other stuff. So, I think I had mentioned it once on the show, and I also wrote a blog post a while back about some of my favorite toys from when I was a kid. And I guess she had read that and she sent it to me for my birthday. And I was super touched. Like as soon as I opened the box and I saw this piece back here on the roof and I was just kind of like, Oh my God. I was like so excited. You saw it. I was so excited. Okay. You going to put it back? Yep. There we go. Yeah. Our on air sign is not, it just says on the, that's okay though. (laughs) Because it's not, we don't have like that a wide cool. enough. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of funny that you guys bought that because that was another thing. Sandra says I'm Santa Claus. She kind of commented because I sent y'all the gift. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was on my like, okay, yeah. If they don't get one, I'm gonna have to buy one. And then you did, and I was like, yeah, you got it. And then yeah. I painted it. Yeah, it's like, I didn't like the original color. I don't color. have to buy one because <laughs> it was kind of gray or silver, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it was tan. It was tan. I think remember? You can see it better. It stands out with the yeah. with the dark. I'm pretty sure it was silver or gray or something. Oh, it was tan. Okay. Yeah, I remember it was it was a tan color, like like a wood, a fake wood grain, and I masked it off and then spray painted it black. Maybe I'm blinder than I thought I was. I spray painted it black first, and then I, <laughs> then I spray painted over it like, like kind of like an onyx green over it. Yeah. So it looks like like steel. You might have to move this over slightly. Okay. Okay. Wait, I'm stupid. It's the wrong way. Okay. I'm still as as long as we've been doing this show, I'm still confused yeah, as to the direction. I always go like the wrong way the first time. Always. Okay. Um, also. You don't have that much more time if you want to buy tickets to the Strange Realities online uh, conference, at which I'm going to be speaking uh, this coming Friday night, the 25th. My time slot is 10.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm be doing, like, some true crime shit. Uh, I'll be on for about an hour, and then I think there's, like, a 10 or 15 minute period after where you can, like, ask questions if you want. So, um... So yeah, so that's coming up Friday if you want to get tickets for that. There's a whole bunch of other speakers that goes on like all weekend. Um, and I also did like a Conspiranormal show and I did a Banal of America show like where I was talking about true crime too and we we're talking about the lead up to it. So yeah. And also if you are a patron, remember you have until tomorrow at noon Eastern Standard Time to vote for next week's episode and next week's movie retrospective. And uh, it looks like I went in there and checked on the votes and it looks like the topic is like there's one that's way, way, way ahead. I'm gonna go sneak in there and look. <laughs> it's gonna be gonna be some urban legend type of stuff. It's like way ahead. The movies, um, last I checked, there was two that were like in a dead heat, so I'm not really sure. Maybe we'll do both of them. Who knows? <coughs> or I'll flip a coin. We'll see how it goes. I don't really know. But yeah, so if you haven't voted, you have until tomorrow to vote. 
and uh, I'll announce it on Patreon what the winners were and what the other shows are coming up next week. So uh, I think that's all the shout outs, yeah? Yeah. You guys have anything else you want to say? Oh. Mm. So let's and, uh, start. If you need what? a drink, just tell me. I'll fill up drinks. I got the drinks. Yeah. So don't, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to go in there and play around in the kitchen. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll make the drinks. I'll like, make the drinks. Where is it? I'm saying don't feel like you have to make that last the whole show. You can drink. Oh. I probably should, though. I mean... That's not that strong. <laughs> yeah, it was like two. Yeah, like have you two. seen what happens like when we get two yeah. or three yeah. drinks in? Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel to be on the show so far? Bizarre. Is it Bizarre? weird? It's super surreal. I'm yeah, like, because you're used to watching it. like yeah. on. And you don't see the people, so it's like, there's people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're somewhere out there in the ethereal space. But... There's, uh, there's only 35 of them watching right now, but that's actually a decent-sized crowd. Well, yeah. Yeah. Then that I'm really not like an extrovert or socially competent, so like this is this is very oh, different. Not. This is different. I'm not either, but yeah. you know, I've and you I, do a great job, so I, mean, I, I have to I, fake it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, and I always get like really nervous, like before, even though we've been doing this for what four years, yeah, something like that. I still get nervous. You also over over prepare. Well, you write a lot more notes than you actually have to. I know. You'll write fucking enough notes to cover eight hours of material, then we only do like a two hour show. I know. Two hour show. That's I know. It's just well, part, it's part of your personality. That's what my personality. I yeah. overthink everything. I over prepare for everything. I'm that's why you guys need to write, That's why you guys need to buy the books. <laughs> the books are fucking real. They're even better. well because then I can just go on and she on as long on as on I out. want, and yeah. it's like I don't have like any time constraints, which is nice. Yeah. Which, but that's weird because it's when I'm writing fiction. When I'm writing nonfiction, like I'll just go on and on. But when I'm writing fiction, I can't. I have a hard time like writing anything super long you know you'd think that i would be like stephen king that i would just keep going yeah. on and on for a thousand pages but i never do that like just, all, all my novels are fairly short it's just a big difference between books and a youtube show youtube shows you know what i mean it's it's entertainment yeah there's information in it but it's got to be in an entertaining format you know what i mean fucking interaction and interaction with the crowd and have have some laughs nice people are just working you know what i mean trying to kill a couple of hours while they're working or driving you know we got guys that are fucking truckers out there keeping the fucking circulatory system of the fucking country running <laughs> they're like the red blood cells bringing of us the, the foods yeah they're like the red blood cells <laughs> of, the, of the country you know and uh all right let's go ahead and get into the fucking yeah topic. we've got a comment there the very first episode you can visibly hear how nervous you both were yeah i can imagine Remember that first show that we did? We didn't have yeah. a visual component then. It was about The Shining and the entity. Yeah. Or the case behind the entity we talked about. And we talked about The Shining also. I haven't listened to it in a long time. But yeah, I had never really done anything like that before. So I was kind of like... Yeah. Hey. And that wasn't even live. So you could have just like edited it or done whatever you wanted. Really. Thank you, Bunya Punter. Thank you, man. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. That's okay. We haven't even like started talking about the topic yet. You know how we do. <laughs> a bunyip, a bunyip is something Korean, isn't it? No, that's an Australian that's thing. An Australian thing. Okay. I mean, I thought it was an Australian thing, right? Is it some kind of monster? Bunyip, bunyip sounds like a Korean name. I Maybe mean, I I've seen know. it spelled with a Y. I just assumed that that's what that that's okay. what they were talking about right. because I've heard of a bunyip like a little monster, kinda, okay, like a urban legendy kind of monster. All right, so on today's show, we are going to be talking about Angel of Mercy, Angel of Death killers, serial killers who are medical professionals and kind of get off on killing people under their care for whatever reason. Yeah, usually women. Um, not always. Um, usually. Yeah. You know what's yeah. weird? This is a crazy statistic that I, uh, that I just recently discovered. Of female serial killers, which there are, I mean, comparatively not that many, um, of female serial killers, approximately 30% of them are nurses. Isn't that crazy? Because they're basically this type of killer. Yeah. Where they're just like, they get off on points. Now, when you're talking about an angel of death killer, angel of mercy killer, from a criminology standpoint, basically the motivations, there are like three different classifications of these types of of killers first you got your uh yeah see a bunyip is australia's version of bigfoot uh the yeti or sasquatch that's okay. what i thought yeah it's like some kind of monster oh thank you man thank yeah, you for yeah. the super chats thank you super thank chats. you thank you thank you thank you let me see them flash bulbs <laughs> that's because we're like like a celebrity walking in yeah. <laughs> flash bulbs you had to see airplane you i have see seen airplane, airplane, airplane but it's it, like I, I only remember certain parts but i know it's funny yeah. it's funny yeah the two black bulbs two black dudes 
Let me see some of my flash I tried bulbs. to look up the, I tried to find <laughs> that clip on YouTube and I couldn't find it. No. So I was like, I want to see the part that you're talking about. See if Man. I remember it. But. For you guys who read fucking Math Mountain Poultry Guys, man, my uncle read. Me and my uncle read fucking. We loved that fucking movie. And fucking Red would say that a lot. Let me see some of Flash Bowl. <laughs> so really, that's fucking Uncle my Uncle Red. Fucking, I don't invent all the shit that I do. I'm just inspired. You're by just, it. you're just copying. Just copying. <laughs> just copying. Copy. Bunny up says, "What's with the third amigo?" Oh, that's right. You're late. This is Sophie. Hi. This is Sophie. Friend she's of ours. a friend of ours. She is yeah. staying here for the next couple weeks, and so she's going to be on all our live streams yep. uh, for the next couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Including all our movie reviews and stuff. Yeah. And we gotta watch a movie later if I'm not too drunk to like. Yeah. If I'm sober enough to remember it, because you know how that goes. But yeah, so basically you have three different categories, I guess. Uh, one of these would be a mercy killer. Now this would be somebody who actually believed that the people that they're killing <coughs> are suffering and that they would be better off dead. Um, whether that's true or not doesn't really matter. That might actually be a delusional belief, but they do gen- genuinely seem to believe that. Um, or you also got your sadistic mercy killers who just enjoy uh, having the power of life and death over other people who are helpless and can't do anything to stop them. And also, as I mentioned earlier, you got your malignant hero which is somebody who just likes to um, do terrible things to people so they can be seen to be swooping in and helping that person. Almost uh, kind of like B- Munchausen Bar Munchausen Proxy. Munchausen Proxy. And yeah. one of the people, uh, Nurse Beverly Allett, who we will be talking about probably last, um, she seems to have had this. She's actually one of the very rare people in the psychological literature that seems to have suffered from Munchausen Syndrome and Munchausen Syndrome by proxy also. Uh, this is very, very unusual for somebody to have both of those things hmm. going on. But she seems to have. She had a lot of problems, is what I'm saying. Bitch yeah. was crazy. Bitch was crazy. Bitch was crazy. Bitch be crazy. Bitch Big be crazy. time. <laughs> we are. Bitches be crazy more than any other kind of crazy. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I suppose Man so. could be crazy. He's not going to do a whole lot of damage. But when a bitch is crazy, she does all kinds of fucking damage. Well, see, I don't think that's true. I kind of agree, too. What, well, what about like shooting up places? Like, dude, do that's, that. No, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's not that much damage though, because it's obvious what that is. It's it, a lot, a lot, when a woman does it, the shit's stealth. Right, but more people might lose their lives stealth. though. With the because movie. we're smarter. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a lot of factors. W- women are not up for the stand-up fight. They're yeah. not. They're not into that. They actually kind of like the power of being sneaky. Yeah. Well, yeah. and honestly, um, and they're it, sorceresses. That's yeah. basically what it well, is in, in Conan minute, terms. In, in Conan a minute, terms, they're, they're <laughs> they, they were watching the Conan. They were watching though. Conan. They're like a, they're like that girl. They fucking they would be a price barbarian. You know what I mean? Fucking you know, and she's fucking trying to suck down his his life energy, and she throws okay. him into the fuck. She throws she's her suck down his what now? She was trying to <laughs> suck it down. She was trying to suck it down. She was going to tell him what she wanted, but she was also going to take his masculine energy. See. You don't want yeah, that to happen. That you don't want your masculine energy to be taken. You, you never know. Women could destroy you. You got. She had right. another motherfucker chained up on a rock behind so the house. Fuck with us. That's what we're yeah, saying. Yeah. Okay. Don't all right. Fuck with us. Say, all right. No, I'm just saying that. Um, the thing about it, though, like a lot of female serial killers, even though you do get your kind of like Munchausen by proxy, you do get stuff like that. But it seems like in the large majority of cases of female serial killers, they are usually practical killers in the sense that they kill for monetary gain. They, they kill because, you know, it's, they're bumping off husbands like to get insurance. They're doing stuff like that. So they don't usually do it for sexual purposes. Although um, this next chick we're going to be talking about, Jane Toppin, may be one of the, maybe uh, an exception to that rule if what she, has, if, if what she said is true, um, that she actually did kind of get off on it. Um, but that would be very strange. Like, women killers do not usually get a sexual thrill out of killing people. They usually do it for practical reasons. Um, but yeah. So, uh, as I said, uh, they, female serial killers, 30% of whom are nurses. So that is like a, I'm not saying all nurses are serial killers, obviously, but it's just saying that's a over It's a position of power that they can, yeah. that they can, that they can abuse. In the same way that a, a psycho can make himself... Thank you, Ken. Can get... Thank you very much, Ken. <laughs> to show Sophie what flashbulbs are all about. That's what they're talking about, the fucking flashbulbs. I mean, I know, I get, I get what it is for the show, but I just don't remember it in Airplane. That's I'll show, I'll show yeah. you in Airplane. I'll show it to you. Um, it's the same... T- a psycho woman's going to want to be a damn nurse. Because it's, it's an easy way to get authority. That's like how pedophiles want to be around kids. Exactly. Yeah. 
Kind of like how a motherfucker that wants to kill some people, do damage, and be cruel to them might want to fucking try to work his way into the police force. Yeah. They keep a, they know about it. They try to keep an eye out for it, but it happens. I've run into look. I've worked for companies that worked for that provided services for cops. You know, state police level policemen. And most of the dudes are okay. A lot of them, some of them are good. They do have some fucking crazy motherfuckers in there. Well, you'll get a higher than normal percentage yeah. because that's what yeah. they. It's like in the Catholic Church and everything. Right. Like, oh, you're yeah, going to be because, around right. boys? Okay, well. Because, yeah, yeah you're going to get people yeah. that are already have those proclivities. Yeah. Right. They're like, hey, I want to, like, gravitate yeah. toward that, right. like, career path. No, I don't. Like I said, I don't have. I don't think I have an unfair fucking opinion of the police. You know, right now, the police are catching a lot of shit. The average one's a normal dude, trying, and there's nothing wrong with them. When they run into one of those fucking weirdos, they do what they can to get rid of them. And from what I saw from the support angle... They mostly didn't last long, a year or two. Um, most of them were just a nuisance more than anything else. They weren't really, you know what I mean? They weren't killing people. You know, they weren't ru- well, raping Well, they might have just, yeah, they, they might have just, just been doing... They were just nuisances, fucking yeah. throwing their fucking weight around and picking on people and try, you know, trying to get them in trouble just, just because, you know what I mean? Which, But the, the, ones, the, guy, the cops that were there for a long time tended to be cool. They were kind of chilled out behind it. You know what I mean? They were, they were kind of... Well, you would think that after they had a while, chilled out for a while. Yeah, right. after a while, and you'd seen it all and everything, right. you'd just be like, "All right, whatever, I get yeah. it." Yeah, and in a good police force, these guys keep an eye out for the new cops and try to get rid of the bad apples. You know what I'm talking about? They know. Yeah, they know who they are. But as I said, it really yeah. does. It's just kind of like how we talked about, like on some of our highway killer shows, like how a lot of men who. Um, are that type of serial killer that prey yeah. on like you know sex workers or drug addicts or whatever? How a lot of them will gravitate toward being a truck driver because you get to be alone for a long time. You yeah. know, you're just out, nobody's watching, you know, nobody's supervising. So it's like a very, um, you know, it's it's a job that appeals to them. Well, another thing is is that move constantly moving through people's jurisdictions helps you commit crimes. That too, because you can just you know you kill just somebody and dump them, and yeah. like there's no personal relationship between you and the victim, and so yeah. it's much harder to they're, catch you. They're abducting a, a, a person in one jurisdiction and killing them, and then throwing them off into an t- entirely other jurisdiction, maybe two or three st- states away. Yeah, that's why it's so hard to catch. And there's no there's witnesses, none. and you just they, it's hard to catch. Well, in kind of coming back to the Angels of Mercy or Angel of Death killers, this is it. Some of these people were able to kill, like in Harold Shipman's case, they think that he might have killed like 250 people just because you're in a line of work where people are going to die. I mean, you're in the medical field, people are coming to you, they're sick. So somebody dying and it doesn't look like anybody did anything like to them, you wouldn't necessarily think. That they're just like, oh, you know, they had a sickness, they died. It happens all the time. So that's why they're able to get away with it for such a long time because no one no one really thinks that the doctor is doing it for some reason. Although in that case he was. And in some of these other cases too, it's like it's, this is gonna make you not want to go to a hospital ever again. What are you doing? I told her to drink. He's that. trying to get me. <laughs> I'm not understand. I, I have a history of drinking too fast and getting myself in trouble. But the drunker we get, the more fun it will be. Was I like, look at this? This is a four-hour process. <laughs> she's talking to the crowd, and I'm saying we we need to fucking get some of this alcohol down. I'll make the next round because I I got a feeling tonight's gonna be the show. I just have a feeling. Even though it's kind of a depressing topic, but. Yeah. That never stopped us that before, stop did anything. it? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I just got, you know. Never stopped us yeah. before. Yeah. Multiple people have asked for Dennis. Yeah, yeah. Was trying we to might need to bring Dennis you know, in on this. He, he needs was to one wait of my little children I sent over here, too. Yeah, so I need to meet yeah. him for the first time. Yeah. Right. I've Sophie, never met Sophie Dennis. Sophie sent us Sophie Dennis, us, yeah. actually. I bought his ass and I never met him. <laughs> Look at him. He's so bald. Got the box and everything. He was a good investment. He's yeah. probably the best thing I gave you it's guys. It's heavy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I think that painting. I, mean, I fucking love that. You like painting. that better? Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't like that really. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a good, it's a nice canvas. It is nice. Yeah. It looks really the the lighting. Whatever you have the lighting, like if you look yeah. at the camera, it, it's like right on there. You yeah, know? I got yeah. That, I got that kind of peach kind colored of light on it. Yeah, it works. Even really though from well. here okay. it looks pink, or it looks yeah. pink to me. You got a channel. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, his head fell off. His head fell off. Is it Dennis? Oh shit! Did you he, break it? Oh I can fix God. it. You just broke Dennis. I broke Dennis. 
Oh wow. my god. I broke you dinner. saw it here first. Yeah. Fucking asshole. I broke in. <laughs> <laughs> it just <laughs> slipped out of my hand. I fucking, it's okay. It can, it can be fixed. I'm I got glad it. I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh it my! No, it says yeah, vegan. No. I can't believe it. Yeah, I get you some glue. I got good glue for that. I got some of that damn Man, Chinese Dennis glue. Dennis has just been just, sitting he's safely. He's just gonna have on to that. hold his head for yeah. this. He's just gonna be a little. I got. <laughs> I got some of that two-part Chinese fucking epoxy. The stuff that they're not supposed to sell. It's not supposed to be in this damn like, country. Yeah, that gives fucking, you lung cancer. It'll fucking give you cancer. <laughs> you know, I glue them right back together. Ain't that something? I killed Dennis, people. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm retiring. I can't believe it. I'm retiring. I can't believe you did that. I can't believe I fucking did that too. It I was mean, on carpet too, no less. Carpet. He didn't go very far. <laughs> it landed directly on its head. Yeah, this is some uh, hard yeah, ass carpet. I'll fix it. Now, please don't. Your glasses are down there on the don't floor. Step on so those please don't. Because I'm upset. I'm fucking traumatized. <laughs> He's traumatized. I'm traumatized. From killing. You just watched the murder. Dennis. He just witnessed. He just committed a murder. Oh God, I know. Fucking killed Dennis. God you're damn. you're losing your mind. Now if if actual Dennis died in his cell, oh, oh, shit, like man. a voodoo thing or like whatever it's that. What is that? Is it voodoo? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know what it is. yeah. Yeah. That would be, it'd be like sympathetic magic. Yeah. Like you just. They found him in his cell he and his head on fell some off. Water and yeah. he fell and he hit his head and he was yeah. dead. Sophie's wanting me to show her the poltergeist. I we mean, were talking about it yesterday. Yeah. I mean, if it happens, it happens. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't really been all that excite- exciting yeah. lately, other than the TV coming on. But that wasn't that. that if you wasn't think that about it, like, though. psych yourself up. Yeah, it was more annoying than anything. Yeah. But it's you know, yeah. psych yourself up, man. Just like I can't do it. I'm drunk. Do it on the show. I've never seen anything yeah. cool. Like nothing, no, no paranormal, nothing, nothing at all. Yeah. I'm open minded to it, but I've never seen a single thing even close. It'll to only it. happen when you're not looking directly at it, yeah. like something behind you. But it's undeniable. You know. Yeah. Like it pulled the damn shelves off and they're trim off of shit and fucking does weird shit. Oh, I saw stuff happen out of the corner of my eye. I don't want to. What's, we're getting off topic. Dennis seems visibly upset, says business. I, he, he did might he be visibly upset. upset. He was very, he was very upset. Was I'm very trying upset. to think of the best way to, off. best way to, I, I have, I, I have that epoxy, <laughs> but I was thinking about maybe fucking drilling a dowel in there, oh, a steel dowel. I can't believe I just witnessed Man. this. I'm, I'm I can't believe shocked. it either. I just, I can't believe it either. <laughs> it landed on its head. He yeah, but what's the chances? I don't know. <laughs> you killed Dennis and... I'm upset about it. And he left the stove on all night last night. <gasps> She's fucking Shit. ratting me out. I didn't hear that. He left the stove. I got up this morning and I was like, why is the stove still on? You're going to burn the house down. Maybe the poltergeist. You should have said the poltergeist did it. It's that head injury. Yeah, but you should have blamed it on the poltergeist. Yeah. yeah see, I didn't do that. You could have done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> Just saying, you're losing it. You're losing it. I get head injury. I'm getting old. Yeah, we are all, all those getting, drugs. We're all getting old. All those drugs. <laughs> uh, yeah, you druggy. All my weird fucking hormonal imbalances <laughs> and shit. I know. <laughs> I know all this shit. You just, who knows? I what take all these weird doing. arms and shit, and I get all hormonally imbalanced and shit. Business says I've left sleeping. the stove on many times on Ambien. I've heard some like yeah. really bad shit about that. Like people getting up and like making yeah. whole meals without even realizing it and shit. Holy crap! Yeah, I can't imagine. But yeah, somebody in the comments mentioned earlier, um, one of these malignant hero serial killers, uh, Richard Angelo. Like I said, we'll probably do a volume two of this eventually, and we'll probably talk about him on there. But he was kind of one of those guys where he got off on, he would like inject somebody with some drug, and then there'd be like, you know, a medical emergency, and he would like rush in there and be like, I'll help them, I'll help them. And then he would like revive them. And so the family would be like, oh, thank God, thank God. So he was kind of more like an attention seeking type of thing. <laughs> Which, like I said, I feel like um, Beverly Allen, who we'll talk about later, that's kind of like her deal as well, because she had some serious uh, issues. Making you know, fun of me because it. I fucking dropped Dennis. I, st- I can't believe you did that. I just I can't know. believe you did that. Uh, yeah. I'll bring him back. I'll fix him. After all that time, you'll I, resurrect Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I can fix it. It's not serious. I can fix it. I can fix it. It's just, I, I, it was the thing. Here's the thing. We have a box. We had the literature that it came with. It's numbered. The it's guy, a, the guy that oh, I ordered it from, like he he like emailed me when I ordered yeah. it. I think he put your either he asked if it was yeah. a gift or something. You know, yeah. 
I feel like maybe he hasn't. Yeah, he hasn't sold that many of them. Like you have a limited edition Dennis. Yeah, and he makes he makes a bunch of them. Yeah. Though, in terms of like different characters. Yeah, he had a bunch of different. He had a bunch yeah. of different serial killers. Yeah. I mean, I could get Dennis some friends, but I think he might be afraid to like share this. We gotta give them a plug. We gotta give. Uh, where's that box? It's around here somewhere. We'll we'll give that company That's a plug. That's true. It I might should, be. I should there. come. I should find that guy's email yeah. and email. Like you know that like your little art piece is famous. Yeah. Yeah, because there's other people, <laughs> other people might want a Dennis or somebody yeah. else too. Because there's a lot of different serial killers. He has a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably a fucking D'Angelo too. There yeah, he be. had. I looked on his site. One of those. I I remember that he had two John Wayne Gacy's. He had them like normal, and he had like the clown yeah. thing. Yeah. And uh, I think he had a Dahmer. And he might shit. have a uh, what's his name, Ted Bundy. He might have had it. Yeah, I think he, he might have had a tattoo. Eileen Warnos, or whatever her name is. But it was, oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was numbered. It was less we than 100. I haven't done a show about Eileen Warnos yet. Even I, though she's from, she was from like around here. I think it was like Unit 40 or something. Yeah. yeah. And then, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if that's yeah. how many Dennis's he sold or how many the whole thing. I'm I think just sure. Dennis. Yeah. Maybe yeah, because I think usually they just. It was do like Dennis that. number 40. So Dennis there's not many. Dennis number 40. Yeah. No, I, was whoever he was was very. Polite I'll and fix genuine it. when I ordered it. So I mean, I'll fix it. it was just a whim birthday gift, and then it like turned out to be like a staple of the show. I'm like, yeah. I feel so special. I brought this. We did a show about BTK, and I was just yeah. kind of like, well, and you did such a good BTK impression of me. Yeah, I, I'll get back. I'll bring it back. Yeah, yeah. I'll make it a priority. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, you better. All right. Now, now I'm kind of upset. I'm not. It's gonna just keep, I'm it's keep sitting there in your head. You're gonna be like. He decapitated death. I know. What the fuck? <laughs> now, like I said, that would be super cool if, like, he actually did die and, like, his head fell no, off. No, like, this won't be missed. I'm bringing it back. Well, He's no, I know. Okay. No, the real one, though. What if the the real one. Slipped the and real one. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that yeah. one's much cuter They're than the They're talking about, one. oh, Dennis, is good. Dennis isn't gone. I'll fix it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll fix it. I'll fix him. It's just he should be okay because the spring is higher up than where yeah. the break is, like, down here and his spring is, yeah. like, up here. <laughs> and it snapped off clean. Like, it shattered like glass. Just right there. It's a heavy duty like resin. Yeah. It's some kind of a resin. We have some of that. And uh, I think that epoxy. hardcore Chinese epoxy that I have that doesn't belong in this damn country, it fucking gets you high just in the open one. That shit got to be carcinogenous as fuck. I'm sure. But it, it is. glues anything together, including metal. Yeah. Yeah. It was for motorcycles. Fucking fixing motorcycle shit. For, but I'll, I'll for gluing yeah, motorcycles. He's got to do surgery. You're going to do, gonna do uh, fucking, yeah. Do he's going to be a surgeon. He's How's gonna... Pookie in Beijing? They are very well, thank you. You're going to tell him about Beijing? Oh, oh my goodness. Tell Beijing story, yeah. You guys. I mean, I know we're already an hour in. It's like we haven't, but uh, whatever, fuck it. So uh, Beijing, as, as we've told you, she doesn't like to come on the show. She's very aloof. Uh, as soon as Sophie arrived from the airport last night and came in the house, Beijing... Ran out of the guest room. Calling her. She low bombed me. Literally yeah. low bombed And she me. like, cl- and she jumped up on the bar chair and she was like climbing on her like trying to hug her. I had yeah, to she- unhook her from my shirt multiple times because her claws <laughs> were like, I love you, I love you. <laughs> I've never up. seen her do that, <laughs> ever. Because she remembered you. She did. Yeah. She was she's really friendly before. with me last yeah. time when I was here. Yeah. And I I don't know. Like, we just clicked. I'm like, oh, yeah. you're my girl. All right. Yeah. She's like, you're back. <laughs> yeah. She was trying to, she got up on a bar stool and fucking hugged her like that. I know. And was trying to climb up her. <laughs> yeah. And she's rubbing her face and rubbing yeah. it and rubbing it. I, yeah, I, was, yeah. I had a black shirt and I'm like, oh, she's trying to turn it white because, like, yeah. her fur her was fur, just she out of so much. Yeah. And she was going, burr, 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 yeah. burr. It was. Yeah. I miss you. She knew you. She knows. She knows you. She did. Yeah. You have did she sleep head. up there in bed with you? No, but I had right. got up to go to the bathroom. At, like I woke up at five a.m. and was like wide awake. And for some, yeah. she was. She kind of hung out with me a little bit there, and she was like, "Hey, okay. what are you doing?" Okay. <laughs> so, but so I, then I don't over. know where she went after that. All right. Yeah, P- um, Pookie hid under the bed when you got, but then eventually she came out. She's yeah. like kind of shy when people first come over. I think Pookie just wants to be the star of the show, and even a human coming into the house, she's like, "Whoa." This is different. She's like, what? Yeah. I'm not like, not, uh, we're not special baby this. anymore? Yeah. Fuck this. I'm going under the bed. Yeah. Like this. Fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. But yeah, that's what she did. But she came out eventually. <laughs> she didn't. I was petting her when we were watching movies earlier. I was. She came over. I was scratching her butt and stuff. So <coughs> I think we're on okay terms. Yeah. yeah. It's like like I said, she, she takes longer to... But it's weird that Beijing just came out. Like, I've never seen her... Like every now and then... If she kind of gets lonely, like, Beijing will come in my office and, like, get up in my lap and, like, you know, stick her head in my boob or something. But it's, like, she's not real affectionate normally. 
You know what I mean? She's not yeah. real. She's kind of aloof, and even if you try to pet her, she's just like, Meh. stop it. Bae she's kind of like recognized that. you. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, as were. soon as she came in, she was like, like oh, you, you, I remember Yay! you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she, she definitely remembered you. It was so wild. How long ago was that you were here? Last year. Like, last year? Last year? Yeah. A year? Okay. Okay, so it was like yeah. a year. She year definitely after. remembered you. She's like, it's you. She came oh. running. Man, it's man, like man. I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the animals love you, you know, like you're doing yeah. something right. You're like, okay. She'd yeah. probably been wondering where you were. Probably. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. She's like, hey, I remember you. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's start talking about some of these motherfuckers since we've already been going on for an hour and we have. How was Beijing before Pookie was there? The same. Yeah, she's always Not been. Same. She's always been kind of aloof. Yeah. She she got crabbier, like when Pookie came. But I don't know if that was just entirely because of Pookie or just because she was getting older. She's middle aged now. She's a grown woman. She's eleven, right? Yeah. yeah. I think she's ten or eleven. Yeah. And um, you know, she was pissed off when Pookie came because she's like, "Oh God damn it, a baby! I'm so yeah. I'm supposed to be the baby." Yeah. But um, but she was always kind of aloof before. She was never real. I can't read it. No. She never like jumped up on people's laps. Really, she wasn't real I... affectionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the comments are saying that I couldn't handle de- uh, being baited. I had to kill off. Yeah, to kill the motherfuckers neck to feel better. <laughs> See, sometimes, sometimes you have to understand something. Okay. Alcohol is a drug. It's a hell of a drug. All right. And <laughs> if is. you start taking too much of it in a short period of time, even a macho motherfucker such as myself, okay, a man that. Macho, uh, yeah, macho exactly. time. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the village people. The village people, even. When, you guys are trying to get me talking shit. I know what it is. They try to well, get me. They, they say this shit. It's so trying easy. to get me to talk shit. It's you know so easy. About? Okay. <laughs> Ah, fuck it. <laughs> you drink too much of that shit, and then even a man like me can turn beta. And I'm sitting there at the fucking bar, and Jenny <laughs> fucking with me. Just I see calling weakness, me all kinds, calling and me I go all, in like a shark. Yeah, she's just calling me all kinds of motherfuckers and talking about it. You won't dance. You, you, you're not going to dance with me. And I'm just like getting smaller it's like and smaller you're so lame. And smaller. What the fuck is you're fucking you? lame. You're, you're fucking lame. Why don't you come dance with me? I'm going to dance with these other dudes. You know, I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the fucking... Fucking Tiff, bartender Tiff comes up. He goes, "You okay, Tom? You okay, Tom? You want some water? Is she picking on you? Is she picking on you? She thinks it's funny. Too, yeah, though. yeah. Is she picking on you? Says, we yeah, all think she it's picking funny. On, she picking on. Yeah. Well, because yeah. I mean, when you're sober, you're just very like gregarious, and you're very kind of like. <laughs> You know what I mean? Gregarious. That's the nice way of putting yeah. it. Well, you're. Um, oh, it's a nice way to put it. You say I'm a dick when I'm. No, no, I'm a dick? I didn't. I wasn't going to say you were so a dick. I'm a dick. She, you're just kind of like. Um, you're really like over. You, you, you know, you talk really loud and you're just like kind of like going on and. I'm having fun when I'm there. That's what, yeah, that's what I mean. I think so she's capitalizing on weakness too. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because like I'm, I'm, show. I'm a super nice person, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, right? Most of the mm-hmm. time. But yeah. if, like, you know. If I perceive that he is like not at his height, then I will. Me, I will go in for the kill. A moment of fucking weakness. That's yes. why you can never show weakness to a woman. Never, never show weakness. You can show weakness to me. Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. It then depends. It, it depends. It, 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 they're gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna lose respect. Honestly, someone showing you, weakness to me though, I see as a respect. strength though, because that means that don't, I earn the respect. Don't believe that shit. Don't believe. No, that shit. I no, I get that. That's how I. I am, I'm only mean to him because he's very um, because he's always like teasing me and kind of picking at me and stuff like that. And I'm so it's almost kind of like, hey, how do you like it? Kind if of it's thing. tit for tat, then sure. that's what. It, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of how I see it. She just sees me as teasing her. I'm not really teasing her. Uh, what? You're taking it serious? No. <laughs> No, it's just, you know, I just don't necessarily always give her her... You know what it is about that? Sh- Why are we talking about this shit in public? Oh. <laughs> what that shit's about, a lot of times on those same nights, we're also talking business. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. So, hold on. <laughs> oh, his soul's coming out. My you soul's guys. coming out. Gotta... That's that's one of the telltale signs right yeah, there. Yeah, belching slightly. That's alcohol. You know, we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about fucking business, you know what I mean, and... And I, I'm very much have a have a background in sales and marketing and fucking trying to come up with schemes and pipe dreams and schemes. And then later on, when I'm drunk, she doesn't like what I said during the pipe during, during the business meeting. 
And basically, it's like a business meeting. Well, the thing about it, though, is that I'm doing business all the time. So it's yeah. like when I go out to... I don't want to like think Wait, about okay. it. Okay. No, look, look, look. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> but I'm a man. Men, men are, hormon- are hormonally... Hormonal? Hor- there's a, we have a hormonal disposition of getting drunk, talking shit, and talking business. You know, And men will do it. And when you're not... And then she'll get mad because some of these other dudes want to come up to me and start talking about fucking engines. And aircraft. I mean, well, and that machine guns. We're not, we're not going to talk about like that, that one and guy. she starts getting pissed. Because Why are you talking about military science? And I said, this is between men. Well, you know I'm like, I mean? well, I'm going to go dance shit, then. Like, you know I mean? So that's <laughs> where all this shit starts. I just get bored, that's all. Yeah. yeah. Because, well, because, I mean, I'm not going to mention the dude's name, but the dude will stand that there. That particular dude we're talking for about. For like yeah, three yeah. fucking hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a nightclub. And like talk about well, he doesn't cars. Have, he doesn't have a fucking way. He doesn't have a way with women. And oh, we gotta change the subject. You know, be, you know exactly what I'm talking Hopefully about. He's not watching. <laughs> Imagine a fucking good-looking guy. He's a good-looking dude in really good shape that has no way with women at all. Damn. It's just, yeah. That it's sucks. weird. It's weird. This sucks. Yeah. It's weird. This motherfucker. This motherfucker literally looks like Fabio. Then how do women not like go to him? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. I don't understand it. He's so, older than me. Yeah. He's actually older than me, have but I he's seen, a good have guy. Have I seen this dude? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that, remember that British girl came down here and visited us that one time, and she was fucking all over that dude. She loved older guys. Rick says, chicks dig trains, don't they? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about trains all night long. Yeah, you got to talk about trains. <laughs> well, you so, can talk about trains. I'll be over here Talk about trains. <laughs> Not talking about trains, now you're fucking bringing back some memories. One time... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> One time, this is back in the 90s. Okay? And remember how early internet with like Prodigy before you were born, back when you were a baby? Yeah. Like how little. Yeah, yeah well, she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't remember, remember that. I got to say, I'm born in 1991. Yeah. So okay. I'm not. See, I graduated okay. high school so you were in 1990 eight. before so you were born. I was alive for some yeah. of this stuff, but not yeah. cognizant of the. You were about the eight when I was talking. <laughs> One, time I, One time I was looking at like some kind of like singles ads or some shit like that online or I was looking at something that was online and somebody pointed out a singles ad that had me fucking rolling. The, the trains? It was about <laughs> trains. Is was it? It was a gay dude. <laughs> a gay well, dude. Wait, was he talking about running a train? Cause Listen, that's no, 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 no. No, it had to be model trains. It had to be model trains. Model trains. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it was yeah. a picture of Just a checking. gay dude laid Just out checking. Fucking he, laid out on a fucking big old fucking model train table. He he was you know you know his model train. He wanted to get fucked on a model train. Table. He was looking for another gay dude that liked yeah. model trains. Yeah. I love okay. this man. Let's find uh, this right. man. But he was a, he was what they would call in in the gay world a bear, a little oh, short okay. fucking hairy motherfucker. Hairy. But, you know he looked like he looked like something off of Seinfeld. You Did he have a mean? big beard? No, I don't think no. He he didn't. Big beard. And, and he was sitting up there on a on a. With no shirt and like cowboy boots the thing and is, overalls. There and probably fucking... is another dude out there like that. There's must gotta have be been. more than one. Yeah, must have been. So maybe that's a whole niche. They I just need to find their, their. But I was like, I was Everything's like, a fetish. I was like twenty, I was like twenty-seven or twenty-eight. Of course, you know what I mean. Straight as arrow, I'm gonna see that shit. I'm gonna start laughing. So back in the day, was the singles, busting. the gay and straight stuff was together. I don't think I saw it on a single site. I think somebody showed found you. it oh, okay. and showed it on a site that I was on yeah. about how uh, 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 about okay. about like the worst personal ad. Okay. And how it was written. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was also like who he was and like coming and our trains and our cool. trains will be on the track and we'll find. It was just. Corny as oh shit. Oh my god! Our trains are on the same track, and we will build. Oh. We will build mountains together, and all kinds. Of, it is. <laughs> it's like those videos. Remember we showed that I didn't know this existed. But where are you, man? Those Contact videos. Me. Remember the videos? Yeah. With, I didn't. I. This is beyond me. But like the, where you can see, they share them on the internet. Where there's like you guys. We just say there's a channel. Remember people that would submit a video of them talking about themselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, that was what, that. what they called. Okay, this is before yeah, you like, were that's born. That's what I'm saying. I, it's yeah. beyond me. Okay. But I've seen the videos, and some of the people show talk like that about the yeah, trains exactly, and stuff. And exactly. I'm like. Oh no! Well, okay, his ad was influenced from that era. He was okay. trying to bring it to the internet age. Okay, okay. So he's like way ahead of his time. He was okay. ahead. Of, no, he was behind his time in a way. Maybe he was because <laughs> okay, before you were born, okay, yeah. when you were just a twinkle in your father's eye. When I was a little, they sweet. had this thing called 
video dating services. Yeah, yeah I've I seen them, and it was blow my mind. It was like going to a video rental store. All right, and you could rent, pick out these videos. Well, it was like Tinder, but and see members of the audience that sex. Yeah, and they would have these semi-professional videos done, yeah. like an interview, and they were corny as right. fuck. Right, and I've seen some nerdy ones that look yeah. like that, like the right. trains or Star Wars or something. Right. And I'm like, you film that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing: if you for one second think that a cool motherfucker who can fucking get laid is going to ha- use a service like that, you're fucking wrong. No. Those, well, that was, that was bottom yeah, These are all ugly. Most At yeah. least one nice serial thing. killer did. Well, Ronald, he couldn't get uh, laid. Alcala. He couldn't get laid. That was the era of the fucking nightclub and the singles club. If you were going to go find a girlfriend, you just went to these certain clubs, you hung out there, and you, mm-hmm. you met him. Old fashioned style. At least you couldn't get catfish that way because you, you couldn't you get got, catfish because you, you saw who it was. You saw who it was. Well, yeah, but if you purpose. saw the person, like right. they can still lie to you about who they are. Though. That was the, that yeah. was that was the real way of finding a girl. But girlfriend. you can't have some trolly dude like pretend yeah. to be a girl or something for that's months. True. Like there's some cases like that. That are mm-hmm. That's true. wild. So. Yeah, but back in the '90s, video dating rental services, losers, losers. They look like says, just Losers. buy a prostitute, right? I don't. It's like so many problems would be solved. No, they were looking for relationships. Sex workers are there for a reason. They were there for a reason, though. They were looking for a relationship. There's a big difference between a hooker. That's business. That business. That's business. <laughs> so it doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. <laughs> That's business. And another thing is, is the fucking. You know what I mean? You, no, you're dealing with a certain caliber of person. There's no, really only kind of like, well, shit. Are you gonna Are you gonna make a Madonna? I'm not gonna school thing? these people. Uh, on, you're, on, oh, you're gonna school us now. There's different price categories and <laughs> fucking you know. Categories. It's only gonna you get it, what you pay for. It's everybody. really <laughs> only yeah, and really it's only gonna be something that you'd really want to mess around with in the above one thousand dollar a fucking encounter. You know what I mean? Well, if you're gonna spend a thousand dollars, and, 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 and then you're going just... like, and then you're going like a thousand dollars. Nah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of if money. If you have any I mean, kind of talking that, skills, you could nowadays yeah. the culture you could hook up with someone for cheap for or considerably free, less or free than if, if, if yeah. you put in a little effort to go meet some people. But you ha- you're in that culture, you know. But you have to understand, most of the dudes that are going for those, all right. One to have money. The thousand dollars isn't the issue. Right. They're, They're married. Just it out. Yeah. They're married. They a thousand dollars is yeah. for the silence. Yeah, it's for the, the yeah. silence. Yeah. Like hey, They're married. Me. That's why they're doing it, and they don't want it to get back on the wife because if the wife founds out, she's going to get half. Right. And the and the, that motherfucker's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of money. So. The well, hooker won't care. She got her money. She's out of there. She's not going to fuck with your life. She's out. Eh. Yeah. Right. Well, it's uh, the, yeah. her, the silence is what you're paying for. Yeah. Yeah. And usually the thousand dollar and above or the thousand dollar category. They're not high volume. But they probably look decent, though. They get, mean, oh, no, they look great. Yeah. They so look you great. Get what you, you know, you got... You got a lot of them are the porn stars. A lot of them are porn yeah, stars. They They're go. doing that. Uh, but some of them are just fantastic looking. You can find it. Just look online. You'll see it. Uh, guys are Tom coming knows. Up. Tom knows. <laughs> Tom knows. I've been made no secret. Being in the service, fucking going to Korea and shit. Fucking, I grew up in foreign countries where that shit is just a way of life. Ken says, my friend, when he'd stay over growing up, ran up $350 of phone sex calls on our phone. Oh, that's the fucking loser way. The phone sex Wait, now who game. would do that? That was kind of pre fun- That was pre Who would do internet. that at their friend's house? That's a motherfucker that's that doesn't shitty, give a bro. shit. <laughs> yeah, I think I have, seen, I have seen the ads, though. <laughs> I have seen the goddamn ads, though. God damn it. Going the, ads were, the ads were in the pages Jesus of men's Christ. magazines. Well, I saw the ads on TV, <laughs> on local TV is yeah. where I would see Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the, the Jerry Springer girl. show. Well, yeah, or just at night, <laughs> at night, like the commercials between yeah. the really dumb shows would be like some chick yeah. laying on the bed, like, call me. Call me, yeah. we will talk together. Yeah, and Which I is not what, what that chick looks like. I didn't like. really understand it when I was younger, but. Yeah. Nah, and it was a 250 pound fucking chick that you wouldn't fucking Well, she lives in a trailer. She's just making some extra money, man. It's a side gig. And then she's like. She's what you know, she's, she's cooking like, bacon for her kids I mean, or whatever. Yeah. What are you, what are you wearing? What Radio you wearing? men where make, make their living by on their voice, and they're usually yeah. ugly as fuck. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. what are the ugly chicks going to do with I mean, a good voice? A face for radio yeah. is, right? uh, you know, that's a phrase You for can a have a face for phone sex. <laughs> right. It's the same thing. You guys are right? fucking funny. Same thing. Yeah. We're terrible. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're a girl with a really sexy voice, but you don't have the look, what are you going to do? I mean, nowadays it doesn't work, but back in the day? Yeah. 
You yeah. could talk your way through something. Well, Make yeah. Some money. Yeah. Bungip hitting us up again Bun- with some of them Bun- damn Bungip getting with those fucking flash bulbs. Thank you very much. My, my Next, man. you're gonna have to get an actual light or something that like flash. You can flash like when. Oh when shit! Yeah, we know? are gonna have to do that. We'll ha- we'll have to have like or a little like siren or a thing that yeah. makes it little disco noise, like, thing. Woo! 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 <laughs> <laughs> like the shit. Slime like every whistle. time. What was that fast food restaurant? Was it uh, was it fucking Long John Silver's? That if you like the service, you're supposed to like ring the bell on the way. Or out? just a cowbell. You could get a little cowbell bell and go. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, needs more cowbell. Like yeah. Christopher Walken said. Yeah. So can we talk about some nurses now? Yeah. Talk about some well, now, well, now that I'm already, you guys took so long that um, I'm, I'm almost done too. My drink is empty. Okay, here so I'll you make might some, have I'll make to go. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, <laughs> so I got Jenny on my right hand. Here I got the one with ice in it still. Okay, Jenny's in the right hand. Hold on. I'm sorry, guys. I'll drink anything. <laughs> well, they don't care. Well, honestly, it's like, and and anybody that would care that was just like, why don't you guys talk about the topic? I'll just, I'll just delete it. That's so. one thing too. Even when I get drunk, if someone tells me be quiet, I can do that. <laughs> oh, so, I would. Yeah, it's so. that's the thing. It's like I don't like I said. I don't. I don't really care. Yeah. I just like if I'm being annoying and I don't realize <laughs> it, and someone tells me you need to be quiet, I, it can happen. <laughs> Oh, Tom, sit, Tom won't, though. He might not. I don't know. You won't hear a peep. Because I'll be like, because he's like, the show's four hours long. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, why yeah. is that? Because you keep going Doing off that. on tangents yeah. and you keep That's like getting okay. off my notes and shit like that. But like I said, I don't think, and you know, most of the people that come and watch the live show, these are all people that are here every single time we yeah, live stream. Yeah, they love you for just So it's just like, here. we don't even, do I even need a topic? Probably not. I like to have one. Just so we have something to talk about. Well, we need so some substance. I, I get That's it. what I mean. People voted on this. They did. The I actually <laughs> didn't vote for this one. I voted for a different one. I don't know if I should say it or not, but... Which one did you vote for? The Mozart one. Because I'm a history See, person, I... And I like history, so. I'll put, I put it back in the box, though, yeah, so it right. might come up again. I'm kind of hoping eventually... I know it's not scary. I know it's not true crime. Thank you very much. D-L-J-M. Thank you. There you go. Well, I think that's Dan, actually. So thank you very oh, much for that. Cool. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to do, because I, you know, I'm a nerd. Um, so I've read, like, a whole bunch of biographies of Mozart, and he is fascinating. And, like, his um, relationship with his dad is fascinating, his relationship with his sister. Like, all the shit about, like, ooh, maybe he got murdered, nobody knows how he died and stuff like that. It's, like, fascinating, because he died, like, really young. So eventually, maybe, we can do a show about that. I want to do a show about, like, The Haunted Summer, too, like Mary Shelley and all that kind of crap. Michael Schaefer says he can remember when you could get a box of crumbs from Long John Silver's. Remember what he's talking about? What? Yeah, yeah, Those yeah, yeah. little damn fucking little teardrop-shaped fucking yeah. fried things. That was just pieces of damn batter. <clears throat> Yeah. They sold them? Yeah. Well, don't waste it. You yeah, but they're good. <laughs> but that's like garbage. It's garbage, yeah. It's you garbage. sold garbage? <laughs> Not gonna lie, I would eat I would eat that. Usually when you bought something no. from Long John Silver's, well, that was in the bottom of the well, box. Well, they yeah. were in the bottom of your tray. So they just sell those, too. Damn! <laughs> that was just like, because you know if you're, like, what, you know when you're making funnel cakes? I don't know if anybody's made funnel cakes, yeah. but it's like, and you get, like, just the little drips. Yeah. And like you know, it was it was like that, but they'd make like a whole bed out of that shit. The '90s was a high carb, high fat era. They didn't care what was in there. They didn't, they didn't need pr- protein, just as long as it had mass. You could eat it and you got fuller. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of fast food is that you're getting like your day's worth of calories for only a few dollars. Yeah. Although even now it's Put not no as, nutrition, not as cheap as it. Well, you know, yeah, yeah you're gonna get scurvy. I hate to tell yeah. you. In this day and age. All right. So uh, now that I'm already half inebriated. Somebody said, do something about the woman who married Michael Jackson's ghost. When did this shit happen? <laughs> I didn't hear that one. Uh, okay. I need more information on that one, but I need yeah, some let's more, unpack I need that. Some more let's information unpack that. on that one. Um, I didn't that know. That sounds like that a good show, though. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> does he owe her money now? How does that work? Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. <sighs> You could marry, like, David Bowie's ghost or something. <gasps> or someone... I mean, I know he has a wife. No, his wife. ghost is still married to a mom. Yeah, I guess. I yeah. think somebody that you actually, like... Well, yeah. and somebody that's still yeah. single. I don't want to step yeah. on anybody's dick. Yeah, I was saying, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. I just know that you like him. But, you don't know, somebody else that kind of tickled your fancy. You yeah. Can... And that died kind of lonely. That maybe yeah. would want some company in the afterlife yeah. but from a living person. <laughs> I, I sent some fanfic coming on. There you go. <laughs> Chuck Tingle gonna write a book about that. I was just gonna say, he I, I never heard about him until you guys yeah. mentioned him. And I was like, oh boy. 
<laughs> can you just go on Wikipedia and just read the titles? Yeah. yeah. Of all, and I just, I can't even get through the list of the titles of his books without just like cry laughing. Just pounded like, in the ass by my own book. No, so pounded, pounded in the, in the butt. butt. Pounded in the okay. butt by my this own book. Pounded, pounded, in pounded in the butt yeah. by my own butt. That was the first one. Yeah, by yeah, my that's right. Oh. Imagine getting pounded in the ass by your own ass. It just comes yeah. out of nowhere and it tries to take it. It rapes you. It's buttception. Damn. Well, and actually, I think one of the later ones in the series was actually called buttception. Yeah. For yeah, that ass very inside reason. of See, ass because, inside of ass inside of ass. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then it kind of it, it was just like an endless it was an endless recursion like pounded in the butt <laughs> by centric. my own butt was the first one and then that was such a big success that then he wrote pounded in the butt by my book pounded in the butt by my own butt the book that you wrote about right. your ass fucking you in the ass fucks you in the ass that, think of exactly, that shit exactly think of that shit see you That's, you get it. Also, how do you get fucking That's an ass by an ass? That doesn't work. It's only... It, 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 it's That's gay just, pornography. No, but okay? there's like nothing to even see there. Like, it's just going to be butt cheeks. That's it. There's, there's nothing Bees to knows. see. Bees Nest says, who is Chuck Tingle? Oh, please. Okay. Nah, man. Get the go, fuck out of here. Go to this. Wikipedia and look yeah. up Chuck Tingle. He is a... Not not much is known about him as a person. I don't even know. That's not his real name, I'm sure. It could be a woman. It could be... I don't even know who it is. But he writes erotica ebooks, and the fucking titles of them are the funniest things that you could possibly imagine. Kid. There's actually a whole podcast of people... It, I think it's called Pounded in the Butt by My Own Podcast, I think is the name of it, <laughs> um, where they read... That's the whole podcast. They just read excerpts from his books, and it is delightful. It's delightful. Like they, says, they have guests on and stuff reading it. One of the books is called Glazed by the Gay Living Donuts. Yes. Yeah, is his favorite. Yeah. Gay it might, And it might be about donuts. Krispy Kreme. I'm not really sure. Or it was about some so controversy these gay, about... these gay Krispy Kreme donuts come and glaze you. It was something I mean, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's very topical. He'll All always, right. like, whatever is, like... In, in, like, the, the main, like, Google search engine or whatever, he'll write, like, an erotica about that. So it comes yeah. up on the thing. So that's why the titles are so funny, because he comes up with these fucking... You know, yeah. like, remember when that when that color-changing dress was all the rage? Like, I don't even remember when that was. That was a couple years ago. A few years, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, it's blue and black. No, it's orange and white, or whatever the fuck it was. Um, he wrote... I can't even remember the name of it, but it was something to do with... It wasn't pounded in the butt by the color-changing dress, but it was something like that, you know what I mean? So he'll take, like, whatever is in the news. And he also has his own kind of um, things. He really likes Bigfoots, he really, or Big Feet, I don't know. Um, unicorns. He likes um, stuff with, like, billionaires, but also people having sex with airplanes, or, That's what I was going to say. I remember yeah. you guys mentioning one about an airplane. Yeah. It fucked me in the ass or some yeah, shit. Yeah, it was like something a, like yeah. that. And I'm like, That's what we need yeah, to do. Yeah, he's really into like inanimate objects, yeah. particularly like airplanes, because apparently that's a thing. Um, I didn't know, cause for some reason, I don't remember why, because I read an article about uh, erotica and how. Uh, you know, the audience for it was like overwhelmingly female, and they were talking about like the most popular subgenres of erotica. By far, the most popular subgenre is um, essentially like an like animal people, like werewolves or were cats or something like that. Like men that turn into animals, like having sex with women. I thought you would say that for some reason. So I think that's the women are it's a very very yeah. large, yeah. That's a very that's a very large subset of erotica for whatever reason. I don't I don't know I don't I don't I don't know if I'm into that or not. I've ne I've never really read any erotica in that line, so I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, I just thought that was really funny that that was kind of like the major thing. I was just like, hmm, okay. But yeah. All right. So I'm going to, where'd he go? To get ice. He's been gone for such a long time though. Did you, did you get lost? I feel like I'm going to beat him with a small bladder. And go <laughs> boogie too. I'm going to dump him and just the show and it's just going to be you. I can't believe we've been up for an hour and right. 20 minutes. And I'm going to the bathroom. You start talking about the nurse. All right. <laughs> I'm going to help channel this in the right direction. All right, good idea. So now let's look at this. I have three people on the show, and now I'm, I was by myself because Tom got lost on the way to the ice machine. He got lost on the way to the refrigerator. So, all right. So the first nurse we're going to talk about is actually a nurse. I'm doing these in uh, chronological order just because that just makes me happy to do it like that. So the first one we're going to talk about is Jane 
Toppin, otherwise known as Jolly Jane, and uh, we'll figure out, well, it's not sarcastic, we'll uh, figure out why that is later on. So uh, this was an early 20th century lady, um, very prolific serial killer, and as I mentioned earlier, one of the very rare female serial killers who apparently, according to her own account, um, got a sexual charge out of killing people, which women usually do not. So <clears throat> she was actually born Honora Kelly. Uh, she eventually confessed to 31 murders, although it may have been more. That might have been just uh, the number that she remembered uh, because she worked as a nurse for a very long time. Um, one of her very famous quotes is that her ambition in life, and you know, aim high, sister, was to have killed more helpless people than any other man or woman who ever lived. So that's nice. Um, so yeah. Now, because this was so long ago, she was actually born uh, around 1857. They don't know a hell of a lot about her early life. Um, her parents were Irish immigrants. Uh, her mom, Bridget, actually died of tuberculosis when um, Jane was still pretty young. Her dad, Peter Kelly, uh, was a drunk. Like, I guess, like a lot of dudes were back then. Also kind of uh, a little bit crazy. Um, legend has it that his nickname was Kelly the Crack, as in crackpot. Um, there were a lot of, like, legends about how crazy he was. Um, he was a tailor, I guess, and one of the most uh, prevalent legends about him was that he kind of flipped out after his wife died and that he decided he was going to sew his own eyelids shut. Damn! Did he so, do it? That's the story. I don't know if it's actually true or not. I don't not, believe it. But, um, I don't know. But he was kind of, he was kind of crazy, though. So, um... <laughs> Damn. So, I'm, I'm just... thinking of that. I'm just saying yeah, shit, man. I'm sew my eyes let's shut. You gotta be pretty crazy to do, do that shit. I'm just, How you do you know. make a living? How do you pay the rent? I, I guess don't he wasn't he really... Uh, well, he was crazy, so I don't think he really, like, worried all that much about how uh, solvent his financial future was. Okay. I'm just saying. All right. So, at this point, so him and his wife had had um, a bunch of kids. I think they had, like, six kids. Now, at this point, uh, the woman who would become Jane Toppin, the serial killer, she was uh, one of the youngest ones. I think she was uh, six at this point, And she had an older sister named Delia. Now, after their mom died, the dad, of course, being an alcoholic and also being kind of a nutcase, and also being a man and being kind of like, well, I don't, I don't know how to look after two female children. Yuck. So he took them to a, an orphanage, which was called, charmingly, the Boston Female Asylum. Hmm. That's where you dumped your kids and if you didn't know how to take care of them. She's like, here, just have them. Yeah, Put them well, in the asylum. Yeah, they got pregnant. Well, they were six and eight years old. Okay. I don't think they're getting right. pregnant when they're six and no, eight. No, I'm thinking that you, you <laughs> in the female asylum, that's where you send your fucking girls that keep getting Well, pregnant. that's where you send your girls who are doing things that are embarrassing to you. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, though. That's where you send them off, because they're, they're clearly crazy. Yeah. All those ladies. That's what I'm Bitches thinking. be crazy. We have to put them in the female asylum. But yeah, so Actually, these, these, the were, like little, these thing, were little girls. The whole asylum thing back in the day... They were prisons for people that you didn't want. Yeah, clearly. And families had control over all the female members. And if you had one that was acting up, you just put her in the damn asylum. Yeah, because... That's was, all really it really was. Yeah, she was clearly crazy. Because uh, she's doing shit I don't like. But people use that as an excuse not to have mental asylums today, which I don't believe so. You need a, a place for asylum. inconvenient I females. Yeah, you got to have mental asylums. You well, yeah, because some people have problems and should have not be running be around. locked up. Right. Not not through any fault of their own. Right. It's the, just some people have right. problems. The problem back back in those days is they didn't have good. They just uh, put anybody. They in just there. put anybody in them. That was the problem. They didn't have a good filter. There's like, hey, there. I got this wife that is kind of like sassing me back. Can you kind of like just get her out of my way? Please? I think there was more to it than that. I well, think it was more like I got this wife that's fucking around with this dude that I can't deal with and I don't like him. Well, that too. I'm or sure. you're fucking around with somebody and you're yeah, and, I'm and you want her out of the way. Get her get out, out, her out of the way. Sure. That's picture, more yeah. what I think it was. <laughs> Well, yeah, and, and I think there are some documented cases of, like, especially where the wife's family had money and the dude was kind of trying to, it's like, hey, can we yeah. get her declared insane so we can kind of get her out of the way and I can get her money You're right. and then go off and do with the whatever the fuck I want to do. So, yeah, so they put um, so they put this six-year-old and this eight-year-old 
uh, Jane, who was then known as Honora, and her sister Delia in this uh, asylum, orphanage, whatever. Um, now, when Honora, who would later become Jane Toppin, was, uh, I believe she was only eight or ten, eight or ten years old, um, something that they would do if you were an orphan and you were in the asylum is that I guess people that could afford to have housekeepers or maids or whatever would kind of come shopping at the orphanage, like, and uh, be like, "Hey, I want that kid right there to like work as a housekeeper in my house." Like, yeah, good you know. idea. Yeah, so that <laughs> well, you got you got them there. I mean, wh- you know, why not? You go like, you know, what? there's a there, might as well use them. There's a free, free kid. kid. Yeah, I could use that kid. <laughs> That's essentially what happened. <laughs> so <laughs> she gets. Imagine how many of them were That's what for happened. sexual purposes. You have some. Pet, That's what I'm. Pet, I'm pet, sure pet, it was probably. Pedophiles going down there, going I'm like, sure that happened "Damn, a lot. she's pretty hot. I want that one. I want yeah. that one." Boy, that's I'm, a hot eight-year-old. Yeah, and I'm gonna throw that one. I'm gonna spin that one around. I'm yeah, don't take that, that out of one. context. People that's what they were. <laughs> well, how much yeah. you want to bet they were doing that? Oh, I'm sure that was. In fact, I imagine that that was more prevalent You're than. Right. Like, just people being like, yeah, I actually I think people were kind of innocent back then. They didn't really think much of it, and, but they didn't really realize that they had people who were just sexually into kids. I don't even think they really thought about it. I don't even... Re- well, I think that back in those days, I think they didn't even... Like, people that were of a lesser, uh, you know, economic or social station than they them... They probably didn't matter. They just thought that yeah. it, they were, like, not even a person. Yeah, I don't Or they, they weren't up to the same level, so you could just do whatever you wanted. Yeah, if you wanted to screw them, you could. I don't That's what I mean. I, I don't, don't think they had any... Uh, I don't think... I don't know if they didn't have any... I, I don't think they had any conception that that was, like, a bad thing to do. It because seemed, that was, like, some... That wasn't up to your level. It's right. not like you were doing it to someone of your own class. It's not like you were doing it to a, to a person. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that's kind of what thinking. the perception was. Yeah. Which is terrible, and, and but what, I think that's what the perception was. Yeah. Because that was going on in fucking <clears throat> um, juvenile facilities. Yeah. Anywhere where they were, like, juvenile prisons, they were fucking them kids. The staff. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure. Like, remember the what's-his-name? Panzer, Panzeram, yeah, Paul Panzeram. Panzeram went out, and that's what happened to him. The and when he school. in the boys' school, and, 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 yeah. and, 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 and when he got out, he went on a fucking homosexual raping, <laughs> raping rampage. Where Which he I'm not excusing it, but I can understand. Yeah, he because... raped every man he could find. Ain't that some shit? Yep. That's what I mean. He let the women go. He was like, "Yeah, you can go. I'm gonna rape him." Yeah. Yeah. It was well, because just I mean, ground into his brain. Yeah. He hated the world. Yeah. Which, like I yeah. said, I don't condone it, but I understand why somebody would. He was programmed go that way. Programmed with bad data. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. From an early age, abused by fucking evil men. Yep. And came out and, and fucking then spent the rest of his life like raping men, getting vengeance. Yeah. For Weird. It. So. Bums on trains and stuff. He would rape bums. <laughs> I remember you said he'd just yeah. get on a train and be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna see that bum down here. Let's go. Yeah. See that bum over there? Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. fuck yeah. him. Yeah. Stand back. Stinking ass. Stand bum. back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah. He'd be back there throwing his leg up like that. Yeah. <laughs> he fucking giving the camera the thumbs up. You see it? <laughs> giving the camera <laughs> the hypothetical camera that was filming yeah, him yeah, rape yeah. a bum. I'm fucking him. Wow, this is like, going that's way some weird shit, man. That's weird shit. <laughs> Like, you're a bum, you already think your life is hard enough. And then yeah. this motherfucker jumps on the train and you're See? like, oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. That's, what bo- that's what bothered Booty me. Booty warrior. Booty warrior. <laughs> I was like, it's bad enough that you're, you're homeless and you're just yeah. like, I'm having to ride the train. I don't have any food. Yeah. I don't have any teeth. I don't have any... You know, yeah. And then you're this like, motherfucker. Guy, yeah. And then you're I'm a, like, really? You're a 65-year-old Fuck. toothless drunk that hasn't showered in a year in filthy-ass fucking clothes... And this dude fucking jumps up in the train yeah, with you and rapes you. He just looks at you oh, and goes, I gotta have that. I gotta have it. Yeah. That's some weird shit. You're not expecting that. It's not how the, well, how you no, no. Well, because no, uh-huh. the thing about Carl Panzram was that it wasn't sexual. It was yeah. just like degradation. Yeah. He wanted to degrade people. That's what he was doing. You still and have, I, to, you and still I have the, to rock up, though. So that's... Yeah, that, that but makes that me, he's his homosexual. There was sexual... Yeah. Yeah. There was sexual... I mean, I think a lot of rapists are kind of like they have their wires crossed because I don't really necessarily think it's all. I don't. I don't think it's a hundred percent about sexual desire. Oh, oh, I want to fuck that woman. I want to fuck that man. I think it's. I want to degrade that person. I think that's mostly what it is. Um, Yeah. So, so these. um, So Jane gets sent to um, this house. Uh, This woman named Mrs. Ann Toppin. Um, basically went to the orphanage and picked her out, just like you go to the fucking, 
you know, humane society and pick out a puppy or a kitty yeah. or whatever. And went there and, like, picked out an indentured servant. Yeah. And uh, adopted this girl. Well, you changed, were just... This was uh, 1864. Yeah, okay, and look, people, yeah. this, this makes a lot of sense. I mean, you can go back to, uh, what was his name? Um, the dude who wrote fucking... Um, Alice in Wonderland. What was his name? Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll actually was a pedo. He was, yeah. I don't realize this. He He was. He would ride around, and he was into this Sorry to shit on everyone's childhood. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, he's a pedo. He would run around and look at all the little homeless girls Mm -hmm. and um, write in his diary about what they were like. He'd buy them stuff and... Yeah, there's. Take care of I read a book a couple of years ago about him, his relationship with um Her name Alice, was L- Alice, Alice Liddell. Liddell. Yeah. yeah, and Alice Liddell is Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Yep. It's that he he based it. Now he doesn't say that he was having sex with him, but it was definitely some kind of weird little romance where he's yeah. taking them out and buying them things, and he'd give them coins. I think and stuff. those types of dudes, and maybe they wouldn't have seen it like that back in the day. But I think dudes like that, they don't... I feel like they're threatened by women their own age. So I think they yeah. they want to have, like, a kid because... They you were know, non-threatening. The, they were non-threatening. I, I, and they could, like, lord over them. They could teach yeah. them things. They could yeah. do... So they kind of got off on the on yeah. the weird fatherly the, thing, but also kind of a lover thing, which it was is like kind the, of messed up. It was up. like the power dynamics. Yeah. He, they had to be poor and pretty. Yeah, and, he, they didn't want an equal because no. they couldn't handle it. Poor, pretty, and little, and young, and they had to admire him, and he would um, buy them things and take care of them. He never said that he had sex with them, but he must have been. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I've read a couple it books about that. It was definitely romance. It was definitely. It was. It was I, definitely I don't romance. know if he actually had sex with them, but it definitely was that type of interest. Yeah. It wasn't just like a fatherly thing or it wasn't... I mean, it was... It was like a romantic fascination. I thought it was creepy and weird. So whether he had sex with them or not, I mean, it was definitely that type of interest in them for sure. But yeah. So I can't remember what the... I read a book like... It was only like five or six years ago that I read it and it was really good. But it was kind of about that. It was about her and uh, their situation. And the weird thing about it was that her parents were just like, no, okay, fair enough. They just kind of allowed it. I think they got like weirded out later on. Because they were just kind of like, mm, yeah, I don't like this. The way I think this they is thought direction a, this I is heading. They, I think they thought but, it was some kind of weird mentor. Type yeah, of they didn't think anything of it to start with. At, yeah, which I, I guess they, back then you wouldn't. From what I remember, they kind of drove him away. So yeah, you can't see her. Yeah, and I they think, did eventually. And she was like, what, ten? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember exactly like all the details, but yeah, yeah shit, man, we should do a show about that. Yeah, God damn it. And that, what's weird is that that'll get us demonetized big time. And, yeah, we just. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, you don't want and that. what was weird is that the dude was not an idiot. He was a genius. Yeah. He he was a genius. He was a genius mathematician and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what a lot of that shit was in Alice in Wonderland yeah. and all yeah. the other shit he wrote subsequently. Yeah, it was kind of all like it was coded just, messages. About although you know we're looking at it from a cultural standpoint, what a fucking pedophile is. They didn't really even have that concept. I I don't think it's still then. fucked. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even yeah, back like, then, it's they fucked. They had up, it. Yeah. They had it, but it wasn't crystallized into something that was defined. He probably didn't know what he was. Tammy says I saw a movie about it and I can't remember that. It might have been. Was it Finding Neverland? No, was there was a movie called no, Finding that, Neverland? What was about that about? J.M. Barry, the guy. That oh, okay, right, right. That was that and was the peeping. kids and the woman, and he was. Oh, okay. As far as the movie goes, he was not creepy. He was yeah. just trying to help what the hell out was the I thinking family. Of? That was the first thing that popped into my mind, and then I was like, "Wait, that's not it." What? Uh, I can't remember. But it was like I can't remember the name of the book because, but I read it. I checked it. The Victorians did weird shit, and they did yeah, the weird Victorians shit without thinking weirdos. about. One of the one of the they weird things that Victorians did is that. They did things that we would consider to be child pornography. Mm-hmm. They took photographs and made pictures of little naked children. And they got yeah. away with it by putting wings on the back they, of it. I was saying, they probably thought it's it was a like, cherub. Oh, it's cherub. It's a cherub. Yeah. But they put that shit everywhere. It was fuck, kind of suspicious. It is They wouldn't suspicious. fucking put... Well, they did have nude women. Pictures yeah. of nude women. They, they were into Which, that okay, too, normal. but they didn't really... <laughs> It, that wasn't mainstream. What was mainstream with these naked little children? Damn. That they, shouldn't be mainstream. They saw that as some kind of an innocence thing. That was what they said. Oh, okay. Um, but Which, okay, maybe, but... I don't, I don't it's think It's still so. weird. No. Why would you... Why? Why they would you... Claimed they why were, would that occur to you? They claimed it was hearkening back to like a Romanesque era of the classics. Classical art. But the Romans were into that shit. I was shit. just going to say, weren't the so, Romans? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, 
uh, see, that's the thing that you could argue with, the, and maybe they did argue this. I don't know. I don't know if they were that self aware. But it's like if you kind of said, "Hey, that's a little weird that you're taking pictures of like all these naked children," and they're just like, "No, that's just you because you're perverted." I'm yeah. using it as a symbol for innocence, and the fact that yeah. you're thinking of it as a sexual way means that you're a deviant. And uh, yeah. No, it's a cover. which, like, I, I don't mean that. I, I, I don't buy yeah, that. I know, <laughs> but I'm just saying that's something that they probably could have said because they could turn it back on you then. Yeah. Just saying, like, well, I don't see it as sexual. It's it's innocence. They put that yeah. in like all the old like Italian paintings. They were like, yeah. you know, the puto. Yeah, that's what they would say. There, you know what I mean? But I think the ones generating it, at least originally, I think they were into it. I'm just that's just I, what I I kind of suspect they were as well. They just yeah. got away with it because it wasn't as frowned upon. I, the general public was innocent to what was what it was. Yeah, they didn't realize like the depravity that I could look at things. I could of, I guess. Okay, well here's the here's the thing. You know what I mean? Fucking back in the day, you know, I, I read like criminology stuff, and when guys were fucking captured, they'd find fucking what they considered to be child porn stashes. And what the porn stashes were, were basically f- a bunch of little girls, fucking clippings of little girls that were taken out of like the J.C. Penney catalog. Yeah. And that was their... A, a normal guy would look at that and wouldn't see that as porn, but a fucking pedo would. Well, yeah, you know because I, mean? I feel like people that have those kind different. of proclivities... Right. Well, look at somebody like, you know, now we're talking about BTK again, but look at somebody like BTK, <laughs> whose whole sexual identity was based around not even what we would consider pornographic images. Yeah. He really liked... Images that he cut out of catalogs, just women in like bras and girdles, um, you know, just women who were dressed, but it was like the covers of like true crime magazines where they were just tied up, but it wasn't, they weren't naked or anything like that. He just, yeah. but he got off on that. He didn't even like hardcore porn. It didn't, yeah. he said that it, it didn't do anything for him. He liked women that were like dressed, but they were like trussed up. Yeah. So that was kind of like his yeah. thing. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Tammy, Tammy also mentioned that he had photographs of Alice, topless photos of Alice. He did, yeah, I saw them. Yeah. Yeah. That's too much. That's a yeah. little far. That's what he, I mean. That's he would have explained she was it away. Like, what do you say? She was like 10, so that's like right I, at yeah. that cusp of puberty. Yeah, like, that's, that's too yeah. old that's and yeah. too young at the same time. I think time. she was around 10 at the end of it. I don't know, because he knew her, I think, for a couple yeah. of years. Wasn't it yep. a couple of years, I think he was? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a while. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. like I said, her parents were okay with it at first. They just thought, oh, he's like a father figure or a grandfatherly figure or whatever. But it's like, yeah, it got weirder as it went on. And then after a while, they were just like, yeah, no, bro. This is getting a little weird. Yeah. But, yeah, so. <clears throat> holy crap, we're already an hour and 40 minutes. I'm going to so, take the wheel and steer it back to the nurses. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, first, I have to go to the bathroom, so. Okay. <laughs> so, you guys talk amongst yourself for a moment. Yeah, we'll just, uh, back do you have any commercials you can play? Um, not yet. It's okay. a little early for commercials. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and fucking... Take the wheel. Two, <laughs> take, I'm, take the captain's chair. What you guys up to? <clears throat> Bottom of the hush puppies. I don't really know what that's all about. I fucking... You mentioned yeah. hush puppies. I'm fucking... I would love some hush Tater puppies tots, right about right? now. Yeah. yeah. Well, something like that. Somebody's forgetting what... Someone said that they... I'm we're talking, they're talking they about death pictures. Which saying, command death. this shit, Tom. Fucking commanding it. Captain Kirk it. No, Captain Kirk in this yeah. motherfucker. There you go. I'm actually drunk already. Can you I'm tell? I'm probably tipsy, too. Yeah. No, you're drunk. I'm not fully drunk. Not you're about halfway? Probably. All right. Yeah. Doesn't that little cat look like Pookie? That one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that one looks like mine, kind of. The yeah. One. All right. All Got right. some pictures of cats. But, uh, this is my the, first time in this office too, so I'm like looking yeah. around because all the cool stuffs in here. Yeah, it's got all kinds of fucking robots. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <clears throat> it's like the nerd room. Yeah, I showed <clears throat> I showed Soph some fucking movies today. You saw Conan one. Well, I've seen that one before, but we we needed to rewatch it. I did it with commentary. Yeah. To explain it as it went along, all the fucking Nietzschean messages. The hell out of my and chair. then I did. Uh, okay, I'm taking control. <laughs> yeah. Get the hell out of my okay. chair. What were you talking about? I'm talking about the movies. Just what's the Talk Conan and, and Soldier. Yeah. <laughs> movies. Yeah. 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 Oh, you watched Soldier today as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could hear it for like from across the house, but it's I I couldn't tell. I could tell what Conan was, but I couldn't tell what the yeah. other one was. Uh, all right. So how do we get off on that tangent? Okay. So right. we were talking about this mm-hmm. asylum. So, all right. So Honora, as she was known then. It goes to be an indentured servant at the home of a woman named Mrs. Ancy Toppin. Now, she was her name was Honora Kelly, but I guess the people they never like adopted her like into the family or anything like that. But she was just like their maid or whatever. 
But she, for whatever reason, took their last name and I guess they changed her name to Jane. I don't know if that was because it was like easier for them to like yell across the house because it was only one syllable instead of like how, you know, I don't know what it was. But know, they, someone. yeah, so they changed her name to Jane Toppin. So that's okay. what she was known as uh, subsequently. So basically, um, Delia, the older sister, she was two years older. Um, she actually didn't come to a very good end either. She was, um, she was in the asylum, the orphanage, until 1868. And then she got placed as a servant as well when she was 12 years old. And then she later ended up being a sex worker and ended up uh, dying in that line of work, uh, also being an alcoholic. Now, in, in 1885... Jane Toppin starts uh, training to be a nurse at Cambridge Hospital. Now, it seems, like I said, they don't know, other than her dad being like kind of a crazy drunk and her mom dying young, they don't really know a lot about her upbringing. So they don't know if it was her upbringing or if this girl was just messed up, like out of the womb or whatever. But so while she was in her residency, she seems to have already started being... She seemed very interested in the, um, the effects of certain drugs on people. So what she would do is that her patients, while she was in her training, she would give them like different combinations of drugs and different, um, you know, different amounts, uh, generally morphine, atropine, stuff like that. And she would see what it would do to them. Like she was very interested in, she's like, hey, what would happen if I give them this amount of morphine and this amount of atropine, then she'd like stand there and watch them and like see what would happen. So she seemed like she was really interested in that kind of shit. Um, also, she would do shit like um, she would kind of hang out with the patients. She would make up like fake medical charts for them. Um, and then according to her and according to some other people, and maybe they didn't think this was weird at the time because this was the 1880s, but so she got off on them kind of like, you know, going into and out of consciousness. Like she thought that was kind of neat. So she liked to watch that. Also, she would get into bed with them. Weird. And um, caress them. Hmm. Um, Boy, that kind of sounds Some like people Jeffrey are like, Dahmer. well, we're not sure if there's like sexual activity. I'm like, I imagine there was probably sexual activity. That sounds like Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, it's with thank you, Ken. He'd drill a hole in somebody's head and then get in bed with them and fucking rub on them. Yeah, this is, and like I said, this is very unusual for a female serial killer. Cause they thank do, you very much, Ken. They do not usually have a sexual motive, but she kind of seems to have. I mean, she seemed to have a weird scientific interest also because she was very interested in like the effects of certain drugs in certain amounts on people. But she also really liked to like get in bed with them and like pet them and you know do various things like that like yeah. i said they don't have any proof proof that she did sexual things but i imagine she probably did yeah. because she said later on like after they caught her that she got kind of like a charge out of her, like a sexual thrill out of it so i do imagine she was doing some shit to their like unconscious or barely conscious bodies which is fucking weird so um and she also kind of got like a sexual thrill about like them like bringing them to the brink of death and then bringing them back again um, and she also liked to be like holding on to like in bed and holding on to them like while they died, which messed up. She's borderline necrophile. Yeah, that's that's kind of messed up. Now, because this was the 1880s, because she was a nurse and no one would think that anyone was doing anything this depraved, I guess. Um, she didn't get any complaints about her <laughs> job performance and was actually recommended for, um, to work at the Massachusetts General Hospital in 1889, which was actually kind of kind of a prestigious establishment at the point. Um, now, she worked there for about a year, and then she eventually got fired, but not because a lot of people were dying under her watch, but just because she seemed a little uh, free with the way she was uh, administering the drugs. Like, people thought she was a little careless with it. So she got fired because of that, but not because anybody thought, oh, she's killing people. Which this seems to be a recurring theme with a lot of these types of killers is that because you wouldn't think of that. You wouldn't think of like a nurse or doctor was just going in there going, Hey, I'm going to inject this shit in here and I'm going to kill all these people. You would just see, huh, I wonder why all these people are done. Huh? That's weird. But you wouldn't really think, I mean, particularly when you're working there, like on the ground, you're not really thinking, you know, 
this is like way more deaths than usual because you don't have like, you know, a, an objective perspective on it, I guess. You know what I mean? So that's why I think it takes so long for these types of killers to get caught. So, um, so she goes back to Cambridge where she had worked previously. Um, but same kind of thing. She was administering uh, opiates kind of in a reckless fashion. So they fired her as well. At which point she's like, well, you know what? I'm going to start becoming a private nurse because then I'm not going to have any oversight. And then I can just go work for families and uh, I'm not going to have like any doctors or any hospital administration, like looking out for me or looking out for what I'm doing. So she starts doing that and was actually in great demand because, uh, as her nickname of Jolly Jane would, uh, would suggest, she was actually a very, very likable person. Everybody that knew her said she was always very positive. She was very upbeat. She was very charming. And um, everybody liked her. So uh, I think that was another factor that, you know, made it so that she didn't get caught for a very long time because nobody would think that somebody that friendly or outgoing or fun or happy or anything would be doing this kind of depraved ass shit, even though she, she was. So can't trust anybody. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, so she, um, so she goes into a uh, private practice, like being a nurse for various like wealthy people. So in 1895, um, she is like renting a, an apartment or something from these landlords. She poisons them just because she can, I suppose. 1899, she actually killed her foster sister, Elizabeth Toppin, hmm. who was the daughter of the people who had taken her from the orphanage originally, like as an indentured servant. Apparently, I don't know if this is the case, but it does seem like it's kind of like a, a lot of people that have talked about this case have suggested this, is that because she was the servant in this household, she was kind of denigrated, even though she was friends with the daughter, um, the daughter was always kind of like, well, you know, my family is wealthy and you're just the maid, even though we're friends and stuff. But it was just kind of like a frenemy type of thing. So apparently Jane Toppin really, really hated this bitch. And um, <laughs> so like all this time, well, because she was jealous and she was just like, this woman, you know, this girl is always like shitting on me, just reminding me of like my station, like I'm beneath her. So I feel like all of there was like a lot of simmering resentment against uh, against her. And so she was always kind of like waiting to get her back at some point. So in 1899, she finally went and she poisoned her and killed her. Now, in 1901, she moves in with this other family, the Davis family. Now, this uh, there was this guy named Alden Davis. He was kind of older and uh, his wife had died. So uh, Jane moved in like to take care of him and the, and the kids like after, you know, because the wife had died. Um, now, it turned out that actually the wife had died because Jane Toppin had also poisoned her. Uh, so but nobody suspected that, like I said, because she was like very happy and charming and everything. Now, she was only there a few weeks. She kills uh, the daughters, and she also kills the old man. But because she's been experimenting with all these poisons and stuff, no one really suspects it. it was, everybody's just like, oh, it's just like some illness that's going around. So then she moves back to her original hometown, and she goes after Elizabeth, her foster sister. She goes after Elizabeth's husband. The widower so she starts like trying to like get in with him you know yeah. and again i think that's more like fuel for the fire of like she was jealous of that mm -hmm. because she was like a higher social station than her so she was kind of kind of trying to prove hey i'm just as good as you are so i killed you and now i'm gonna come take your fucking husband well the guy didn't really um fall for it she started like trying to poison him uh it didn't really work he got sick but he didn't die then she decided, well, I'm going to poison myself to get sympathy. That didn't work either. Um, so, because he was wise to her tricks, I guess, at this point. So he, like, kicked her out. Now, what ended up happening and how she ended up getting caught was that the Davis family, uh, of which she had poisoned pretty much uh, most of them, uh, the extended relatives, um, for whatever reason, they kind of got suspicious of, hey, this nurse moves into the house and suddenly all the family members die. So that seems a little fishy. So they wanted a toxicology exam done on the Davis family's youngest daughter. So even back in the 1880s, they could figure out 
or the early 1900s rather, they figured out that the youngest daughter had actually been poisoned. So they started watching Jane Toppin like they put her under surveillance. And then in October of 1901, she got arrested for murder. Now, she was in there for a while. And after a while, she finally said, yeah, I killed 31 people. Now, Damn. she may have killed more than that. That was just the ones she could remember. Like they said that when they brought her in, she was like counting them on her fingers. She's like, well, there was this one and this one and this one and yeah. this. So that was, so she may have killed more than that. And she just didn't remember because she worked as a nurse, like I said, for a very long time. So she might have just killed some people for shits and giggles and forgotten about it. Um, but 31, she could remember. So, um, basically they ended up finding her not guilty by reason of insanity because she not only confessed to killing 31 people, but she basically, she also confessed to like getting a sexual charge out of it, out of like, you know, caressing these people and like laying with them and hugging them like while they were dying. But she also basically said, you know, that's kind of like my whole ambition in life is like to kill as many helpless people as possible, like more than anyone else has ever killed. Now, I don't know if that's really true or if she was trying to get an insanity defense, but if that's what she was trying to do, it worked because they were like, yeah, this bitch crazy. <laughs> and uh, and they crazy. put, yeah, and they put her in a mental asylum and she was there for the rest of her life. She was at a place called uh, Taunton. Uh, mental hospital, I think in Massachusetts somewhere. Um, actually, there have been a couple of different uh, fictional portrayals of her. There was a novel called The Bad Seed, which uh, the character was based on her. There's also a film called American Nightmare. I don't know if you guys, I've seen a documentary called that, but this is a different thing. This is a like an indie film called American Nightmare, which is also like loosely based on her as well. So she's actually one of the more prolific female serial killers. And like I said, uh, one of the few whose motivation seems to have been sexual, at least uh, from what she said. All right, so we're already at two hours. Let's start talking about Harold Shipman. This, is the, Harold this Shipman. is the third one, right? This is no, this is the second one. Second one, god damn. Yeah. Well, I'm being as quiet. Wow, I, told yeah. her, <laughs> I told her I can be tipsy, but I can shut my. Yeah, phone. I'm just gonna let her get through the damn I'm material. I'm just letting it go. All right, I'm, if I'm I need making to talk to people, I'm just talking to people on the phone. So <laughs> don't talk to me, talk on here. Yeah. <laughs> Because this is going to be a six-hour show. That's right? what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to be responsible for this. <laughs> I'm just, hold on one second. Hold on one second. What? I'm just looking at this side boob. You're looking at the side boob? Uh, Jenny, man. That motherfucker is huge. God damn. You look, look at this. Hold is on. That, raise, raise your do you feel mind. objectified? I'm sorry. She's like well, objectified. Hold on. Hold on. That's it. That's it. That's I'm it. used to it. I'm Don't done, worry about I'm it. I'm done with it. Don't. You're done with the side I'm just was just looking at you as a sexual object. At least yours just are probably second. real. Mine are all like push up. My face. Girl's gotta do what she's gotta do. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, once your once your boobs get over a certain size, you need the push up shit because otherwise they're just gonna like hang way the fuck down here. It's just nature. Yeah, that's nature. What are you gonna do? I mean, I if I don't, I have to wear a bra like all the time because if I don't, they'll just be like those don't hang. Not as bad as you think they do. Well. I don't know. It feels like they do. Yeah, it's in your mind. And plus, it's Florida, and yeah. like, not to be gross, but no. it's just fucking Humidity. sweating under there <laughs> yeah. all the Sweaty time. Sweaty tits. Yeah, yeah. You need to put like fucking baby powder under there all the time. It's terrible. <laughs> there's these, there's terrible. these, there's these two girls. There's these two girls that are like these cam porn stars that we know. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you guys say about I that. Know, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Their fucking boobs are the size of fucking beach balls. Yeah, they're. Drink. I've seen people they're like that. They're fucking yeah, yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show. I'll show. We them have them a to picture you. of them somewhere. Yeah. If you guys want to look, it's Penelope Pumpkins and Princess. <laughs> oh, I get it, pumpkins. Yeah, yeah Penelope <laughs> Pumpkins and Princess Pinky Toes. Those fucking. That's their names. That's their porn names. Yeah. Fucking huge. So you know what I mean? Like, they're super nice girls, also. They're fucking cool too. Yeah, and they're married to each other. Damn. And but there's, there's, a, a, dude, there's, there's a, a dude involved in it, too. It's like a threesome. Yeah. It's like a threesome thing, yeah. Well, it was. I don't know yeah. if it is anymore. I haven't seen yeah. it in a long time. Oh, oh, you see that thank you. Yeah, you start <laughs> talking a lot. You start baby talk, powder fun. <laughs> start talking sporty. You start doing sporty shit, and the money starts coming in. <laughs> you girls are going to have to bust it out. You see, that's what I was going to say. Bust these titties out of here, and we'll fucking walk out of here. Well, it's bad, because like if you keep plying with liquor, I probably will. And then and then that'll be like another show. They will cut the fucking stream. That's they what I need. Right? The the and then yeah, YouTube will, will cut me off. They will cut the fucking stream. Because I've, I've been drunk enough. Have I ever done that? I don't think I've ever done that in public. No. No, I've never flashed my tits in public. No. When we went to the strip club, though, that was pretty wild. Remember that? 
Oh, yeah. Well, that was a fucking wild ass. But everybody night. was doing These that. These strippers shit. fucking love Jenny. They, just they wanted to recruit you, and you're they're like, they're no, fucking no, no, out no, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Strippers love me. I don't yeah. know why. The strippers wanted to come home with us. I've never they been did. to a strip club, yeah. so I don't know. I yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. So. We had the best time. <laughs> yeah. Which is, I know this is another like, yeah. diversion, but whatever. We had the, we only went because, <laughs> this is an excuse. We only went because there was, um, there's a very big, like, very famous strip club called Rachel's yeah. um, here in Orlando. It, it's also a steakhouse. I don't know what the steaks are like. I've never had Good. Them. They're good, evidently. Are they? Yeah, okay. from what I heard. I've never had From them. what I heard, the food is fantastic. And I, and I like the, the store across the street, Sweethearts, where they have, like, all the stripper clothes and stuff. I like to buy, like, uh, leggings and, like, uh, shirts and stuff over there. But, yeah, so we went because one of our um, bartenders that we know, like, a, a friend of ours... They were doing like a battle of the bartenders, and so we were going to like support our bartender. So he's like, "Hey, we're doing it at Rachel's, like the strip club," and we're like, "Yeah, why not?" So like a whole bunch, of, you know, he he was the bartender at like the goth club. So all the goths came out, like there was a contingent of goths like at the strip yeah. club, and the strippers were into it. Well, a lot of strippers are goth. Well, and yeah. plus, it's probably like a nice change from like all the yeah. grabby like assholes they were sick, that are they usually were sick of mundane. We call them mundane. All the frat well, the boys that are usually in the... used to like tits yeah. and stuff. Like yeah. that's what I mean because we don't get like, like some... all obnoxious yeah. about. Yeah. We're not obnoxious. Like you said you've seen it all. It doesn't really. Right. The funniest yeah. thing I remember is there's this black dude there. All right, mm -hmm. and he was sitting there fucking worshiping this fucking super hot black chick who's fucking down. Remember, Jenny was there with me. Yeah, and she remember that she's on top of that bar stool, fucking shaking his booty. I kind of remember. And fucking, that. she was just she was like a ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. And I'm fucking looking at the dude, and I says, "You gonna make it?" And he goes, "Dude, you don't understand. <laughs> says, Do you understand? This is my roommate." And I was like, <laughs> "What? Oh, shit. He goes, this is my roommate, man." And I said, "Are you hitting it?" And he goes, "No, no. man. She's a lesbian." Oh, and, fucking, and, and, I went, like, oh. and I went, wait a minute, hold on. You got, because he was a big old you handsome black dude. You can see that, but you can't touch yeah, yeah, that. He, yeah, yeah, he was a big old handsome black dude. Which and I was makes like, wait a minute, hold on, man. Which more desirable. Yeah, he, was, he was a fucking real handsome black dude. I was like, wait a minute, hold on. I says, and I told him, I says, you're not, you're not, you're his roommate? And he's like, yeah. And, he goes, and you're not? And he's like, uh uh. And I said, and I said, that's a handsome man. She goes, I hate men. men. And she's fucking dancing. I, said, I think you most, hate men. I feel like most just, strippers hate, hate men. I feel like most strippers yeah, hate men. Yeah, well, but because they like see it. the worst examples of it, like <laughs> yeah. day in and day out. So they're just probably like, yeah, fuck this entire gender. It was hilarious. I get it. So. I get it. Dude was fucking just sweating, and I was like, man, I feel it. Because you feel it. Says, I feel your pain. <laughs> It's like a torture session. Well, see, yeah. that's why I feel like that's why I feel like strippers. Like when we yeah. go to the strip club, that's why I feel like they all like they want to tell me their whole life story, like all their problems and stuff. One because I'll listen and I'm a nice person, yeah. but also because they're so used to like dealing with douchebags day in and day out that they're probably like, oh my god, a nice woman, please. <laughs> Like, mm. let me just rub my tits in your face a minute and, like, just keep me away. Just please, like, listen to my problems. And I'm just like, okay, girl, I got you. Alex is saying I heard Ben Franklin was, too. I don't I didn't, I didn't know what he's talking about, Ben Franklin. But Ben Ben Franklin was a player. He was, For somebody that looked like that, I mean, he must okay. have been very confident. Let me back up. Let me back you up on this. I'm going to back you up. I don't need to back up. I'm going to back you up. Oh, okay. The, Fran <laughs> the Ben Franklin that you're thinking about is the old Ben Franklin. Okay. That I, was when he was in his 60s. Maybe he looked good young. I don't know. He did. Okay. He did. According to my to, according to my readings, when he was like in his 20s and 30s, he was like big, fucking handsome, real good looking, and it had a super fucking really good way with women. And he moved in with a hottie. And he never married. He had a bunch of girlfriends. He had a live-in kind of wife, mm -hmm. like a common-law wife, but it was an open relationship. Um, Franklin, and then he ended up ended up being an ambassador to France, and yeah. he was really good in the French court. I oh, the French, the French, French loved, loved him. The French loved him. He was yeah. our first. He was America's first super international superstar. Yeah. But when you're seeing him, you're seeing him as an old man. In in the depictions. which, if it was me, I would not allow myself. Like, if you're not going to allow yourself to get 
your portrait painted when you were young and hot. Don't let them paint your portrait when you're he old didn't and give a fuck old though. and fat. He was and all like, mm, why okay. would you want to? Because it's like this is for posterity. Like this is how everybody's gonna remember me from now on. Wasn't he Franklin, a nudist? He, Franklin was he a was, nudist. Yeah. He didn't care what he looked like. Yeah, he was just because well, like, well, most nudists. Yeah. Don't. Well, he was. A They're nu- not usually anything to see. But he no, was a nudist in, in his youth. He, was he a, probably was a nudist old too, though. He was old. He was a nudist old also. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, though, is that a man's wealth and his celebrity is part of his attraction. Um, he evidently, and, and also his personality, he could talk his way up a skirt, evidently, even as an older guy. He well, had, personality, he had, he, yeah. personality and, goes a long He way. was evidently it very does. magnetic and very intelligent with a very high charisma. And because his... Because his reputation preceded him when he showed up he was already that's what i thought yeah. he had all yeah. this history yeah. so he had it he had a good yeah. thing going but for he, him he was a nudist he was into free love yeah uh he was, he, smart. Was, he, was yeah. he was very intelligent he was doing he was a scientist huh. and he was uh um the first very international famous american yeah now here's another thing evidently george washington was a hottie too? Just say it. When in his young I think, youth, I can he was, picture that. He was, I can too because he, was, he looked even when he was like older in the portraits. Right. Like he still kind of looked a like a decent looking old man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So reverse that. When he yeah. was young, doing all those colonial wars, uh, he 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 fought in a bunch of a bunch of wars uh, in, involving uh, the Canadians and the fucking. I think it was Canadian stuff. This is before that they were fighting against the uh, the, the British. Uh, he. Uh, he was already a war hero by the time he was 40. And uh, he was evidently very good looking. And very, he was very big. I think he was 6'2", if I remember correctly. But anyway, i got to go to the restaurant. <laughs> I'm going to go after Talking you. about it. Talking about that was abrupt. Did you want to take a leak? Did it? I don't okay. know why. That was, that was very strange. All right. <laughs> Wasn't George Washington very tall? Not very tall, but he was a tall man. Too. I think he was, yeah. I think that helps. I don't know. Yeah, I get. Well, it's weird because I've heard that, but it's like that. I don't know. That was like not something that ever. Occurred but because to me. he was a general and everything, you know, like he had all his paintings and everything. Like, yeah, to have your stature be like all broad shouldered and it's like yeah. looking at yeah. bitches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're a little guy, you gotta, I don't know, have a cool background or something, which is fine. <laughs> it's fine, cool but it's for, for his profession. <laughs> you know, when you think of like someone leading, being the very first president of a country, like that's a badass. Dude, you know? Yeah, it's like, like nobody else can yeah. say that. So you want, like, a big guy to be, like, you know. Yeah. This thing. Like, he's like, sling his dick around, you know, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what George Washington's dick was like. I think he had kids, right? Uh, oh, I don't shit. know, though. I don't know either. <laughs> I've never heard Probably. I feel like they all did back then. You even think? even ones you they think? didn't even know about. That's true. <laughs> like the slave kids and stuff. Yeah. 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 Alex says, I think Tom just needs to start keeping a urine jug in the room. Let's not, let's not, es- <laughs> let's not establish that. He's going to hire you to- <laughs> as a normal thing, because that would be super gross. And I would just be gagging the whole entire time. And you'd hear it, you guys. You'd hear it. Yeah. You Do, does it. anyone really want to hear Tom peeing into a jug on the show? No. <laughs> I'm sure there's one weirdo out there that's like, I do. <laughs> Don't tell me. All right, so... Uh, Get back to the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this guy is actually not a nurse. He's actually a doctor, but, you know, close enough. Medical professional. So this is Harold Shipman, one of the most prolific serial killers in Britain. They think he may have killed as many as 250 people, although they're not really, uh, you know, entirely sure. So he's born in 1946, was a middle child. Now, he had, like, a fairly normal upbringing, although he had... Um, your old domineering mom. He didn't have any, like, the serial killer shit that normal serial killers had when they were kids. Like, he'd, you know, setting fires, wetting beds, killing animals, that kind of shit. He seemed pretty normal. He was actually pretty bright. Um, he was kind of uh, arrogant, though, which kind of carried on into his adult life. Like, he thought he was better than everyone else. Um, but other than that, fairly normal. Like I said, his mom was a little overbearing, but that was about it. So when he's kind of in his teenage years, like his mom gets uh, lung cancer and this might have been like the catalyst for him becoming a serial killer because it seems like at this point he's kind of like, 
he doesn't really take over her care because she had a doctor, but he, you know, he was kind of like there and he saw all the stuff that was like being administered to her. And he sort of got fascinated by the use of drugs to allay people's suffering. And he kind of like seemed like he got off on that. So it might have been, like I said, this might have been like the catalyst that sort of turned him toward that kind of shit. So after she died, um, he decided that he wanted to be a doctor and do the same sort of shit that the doctor that had been taking care of his mom had done. So he goes to medical school. Now, he, um, he, goes, he gets into Leeds University. Uh, and, but he was in there for two years, but then like he failed his entrance exams. Um, but then he took them again and he passed them. So then he um, gets an internship. Now, he was kind of, like I said, he had kind of a superiority complex. He was kind of a loner. Like, nobody thought he was a weirdo necessarily, but they just said, you know, he was kind of a snob and he just, like, hung out by himself all the time. Um, he did actually meet a woman who was willing to marry him. Her name was Primrose. Uh, he was 19. She was 17. She was already pregnant when they got married. Uh, so he actually did end up having a kid. Actually, he eventually ended up having two kids. So he, after he graduates from medical school, he uh, joins a medical practice in Yorkshire in Todmorden. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now, he initially, he had like a pretty good reputation. He was like a GP, like a family practitioner. Um, but then it seems that he became addicted to a painkiller, pethidine. He started forging prescriptions for the drug. Um, I guess he was like forging prescriptions like for, you know, other patients and stuff. And then he was like taking the shit himself. So he eventually got caught in 1975. And then he went into a drug rehab program. So he actually got a, a small fine for this, like a conviction for forgery, because that's obviously very illegal, like, a, you know, forging prescriptions to get drugs for yourself. So this doesn't seem to have set him back too much, though, because a couple of years later, he gets accepted onto the staff at Donnybrook Medical Center in Hyde. And I was like, I lo that made me laugh because I'm like, Donnybrook, that's like a fight, right? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. <laughs> what is this Donnybrook? I feel I like, it's an, like it's an old school word for like a street fight. It might be. I think it is. I've never heard of it. It's not spelled the same because there's lie. an extra e in there. I just tell you what I think. I don't know what that well, is. Well, I'm the vocab nerd, so I'm pretty that. sure that the word Donnybrook okay. means. So it's like never every time it. I watched a documentary about this guy, I'm like, oh, he's like at the at the fight medical school. It's a Donnybrook. Oh, hey, even though it's up. not spelled the same. Somebody's just saying that uh, Franklin was, a, was in a Hellfire Club. Yeah, he was in the Hellfire Club. And if you guys don't know what Hellfire Club is... They used to have these parties. They'd get together and they'd fucking dress up like priests and, and fucking nuns and fucking put on skits and make fun of the Catholic Church. Um, it wasn't necessarily... It didn't necessarily mean that they were atheists or anything. People have kind of blown that out of proportion. They just made fun of the fucking stupid-ass shit that the fucking churches did. The organized Catholic Church well, was you know, real corrupt. Easy enough. Um, most, of the, most of the early American founding father type guys, they were Masons. They had a Christian background to them. They didn't necessarily take it all that seriously. Uh, even, even um, what was his name? Oh, shit. Jefferson. Jefferson had his own version of the New Testament where he cut out all the fucking supernatural bullshit and yeah. tried to get down to the point. The Devil's Bible, they call right. it, right? And they were just trying to figure out what was true. They believed in spirituality they thought there was kind of a dis divine principle or a godlike being. They believed in the Force. That's a good way to put it. Essentially, yeah. That's that, they, they were very much like Jedi from fucking Star Trek or Star Wars. They uh, they believed in the Force. They didn't necessarily believe well, in... Well, they were in, deists. They were deists. That's that's a very sophisticated way to put it. They believed in a god. They just weren't... Which, like, it's, it's essentially like the Force. Like they, the force. they didn't think that it was like an intelligent being. No. It was just like a force of nature. No. A lot of, in a lot of their in a lot of their writings, they would fucking talk about destiny a lot. Yeah, and yeah. that's what they were talking about. I don't think like, they were talking about like an intelligent. No, thing, they thought se. it was. They thought just thought it was a universal force that was unraveling. Sure. And that maybe there was a spirit behind it. And their version of what a spirit was is, you know, there was a principle behind it. Yeah. 
That's what they were. It was talking. a lot more nebulous yeah. than like you know your Christian religion, your monotheistic yeah. religions, which yeah. kind of like personified yeah. it as like a person. They were like, freewheeling. They were freewheeling. Everything depended upon the situation. They were very flexible. They were good men. They were very good men in a very kind of old fashioned system, you know. Yeah. But uh, that's and and they weren't alone. There were a lot of guys that were like that. They were part of a scene. Yeah. Well, in in a lot of ways, they were very ahead of their time. Yeah, but there was a lot of them that were like that. It was, well, yeah, it was, it was the whole thing. Right. It was, in a way, a lot of it kind of French. It was, in, yeah, it was Enlightenment yeah. right. ideals, yeah. essentially, Enlightenment is ideas. what this country exactly. was founded on. That's and, where they got the ideas from. Yeah. And the, the European Enlightenment. Yeah, and uh, I would say the French were the leaders yes. in it. Uh, even, though, even though the, the French Revolution was a fucking disaster. Okay. Yeah, uh, but the you know the idea behind it was good. It just kind of went to shit. It's easy for that shit for the mob mentality to take over, and that's what happened in the. Fr- Which is a shame because yeah. I, I feel like the ideal is it like the ideas that they had were right. good, but it just feel right. Now some people went were, too far in the bed. And here's another thing, you know, fucking um, the French Revolution gave rise to fucking Napoleon Bonaparte, and a lot. Uh, uh, Napoleon was vilified a lot. Um, as some kind of a Hitler type. No, no. Napoleon was a good man trying to restore order and trying to make some kind of a fucking rational government, you know, and trying to raise Europe out of fucking monarchy and theocracy. Uh, he was an original imperial republican. I really had a lot of respect for Napoleon. And no, he was not short. That's a fucking myth. That is a myth, actually. It's a myth. He was... He was a, he was a, he was a above complete, average He was a completely height. normal height. Right. Um, Nothing to write home about at all. Right. So it's just part of the evolution of Europe and European thinking. There's a lot of heroes, a lot of villains, but a lot of heroes. Uh, especially just... You can only do... You can only work with what you have. And you can't judge those people on modern standards. They were in a different time. It was it's, it was a progression. Towards yeah, Veronica says Napoleon was five foot seven, which is that's like that average. That's average. bigger than average for France. A little bit. Tell me, I'm five foot yeah. seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm only five foot. Wait, this, that's how tall Napoleon was. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> yeah, he's tall. Where me. this fucking Napoleon being short came from. That was it, ha- it, that was haters. It was. A, <laughs> they said something along the lines of that French that, that that Napoleon Bonaparte. There was an English translation of a French account that said that Napoleon Bonaparte was five feet two polegadas in height, which meant the British fucking translated that to, to five, five foot, foot two. two. But a polegada was which is not pretty a, short because that's like shorter than me. Yeah, even, but and if, I'm pretty short. But that's not. A polegada, a French foot, is not the same as an it's English a, foot. Sure. All right, that would translate That's to five feet, right about seven or eight inches tall. Which, like I said, that was about a, a little bit of Napoleon above Bonaparte, five foot feet, two polegadas tall, and his imperial guard towered above him. And what that meant was, is that they were saying that Napoleon was tall, and his imperial guard was, was even, even taller. taller. That's what they were saying. But the British probably knew. The aristocracy probably knew what it really meant. They just relished but like, being this, bitchy. Let's fuck with him. Let's put out some fake you news. You know how the British aristocracy yeah, right, yeah. are. Right. And you're talking about... <laughs> you're talking about British monarchs. They did not want a republican form of government. They did not want to get rid of the monarchy. So that's why they're talking well, shit yeah, about... Well, yeah, they didn't want to get off that fucking gravy they train. They're like, look, not. man, I want to lay around in my palace and do right. nothing all day and have right. all the taxpayers like pay for it. Right. So. Now, was, was, was Bonaparte perfect? No, he wasn't perfect. But no he was better is. than a monarch in general. Yeah, I mean, in, you know. In general, he was better than a monarch. It's, it's all relative. Right. <laughs> it's all relative. Right. All right. So, like I said, Donnie Brook, it is mm-hmm. a fight. So, look it up. Okay. So he, so he goes to the Donnie Brook Medical Center in Hyde. Now he, um, initially he does very well there. Like he gets a reputation for being very hardworking, very popular. Although a lot of people that worked there also thought he was kind of a snot. Um, thought he was kind of arrogant, uh, which was something that would plague him throughout his career, um, because he did seem to have, like I said, a superiority complex. Now he was there for. 20 years and probably killed a shit ton of people but no one really uh thought that much about it like i said because yes he was arrogant yes but he was a doctor people were dying under his care but 
That happens all the time? Hold on, hold on. What? No, it wasn't the generals that were above six feet tall. It was his imperial guard. Napoleon had bodyguards. This is back in the time where a fucking weapon only had a single shot. So you might be able to carry a rifle and two pistols. You only had three shots. You needed a dude who was a badass to fucking be your bodyguard. They were, they were, his, his bodyguards were above six feet tall. That's all the, that's all the account is saying. They're saying, there's, it's saying that Bonaparte was tall and his imperial guard was even taller because five, seven in that era was above average height for a Frenchman. If I remember correctly, on the account that I read, claimed that the average height of a French male at that time was more like five foot four. Well, they didn't have the greatest nutrition, nutrition. or medical care. So if I yeah. went back in time... You'd have been a, you'd been a giant. You'd yeah. have been a giant, yeah. <laughs> Those little dudes. And... Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, like I said, because a lot of people's height not only has to do with genetics, but it also has to do with um, nutrition. nutrition and childhood. Yeah. And poor um, people If back you have in the shitty day, nu nutrition, yeah. then you will be stunted. Poor people back in the day were small, like North Koreans. Mm -hmm. They're fucking stunted. They called them the little people. The little people. They were little. They were like five because foot Because if you don't get all the three. vitamins and shit that you need in childhood, yeah. then your bones and shit will not A North correctly. Korean is like 5'2", five 5'3". Five hey, I'm only 5'3". Yeah, but these are the men. Five <laughs> two. That's true. And if you've been to any... Um, yeah. Like when I was in England, I went in Oliver Cromwell's house. If you go to any of the buildings that were around, they were little. Way back yeah. in the, day, yeah. the ceilings are quite short, and you're like, okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's pretty obvious because like if people <laughs> lived in these little houses, they had to be kind of short. Some of that medieval armor, you look at it, it looks like it's made for children. I couldn't fit in it. Yeah. And no, that was that was because people were smaller than it. It's nutrition. Yep. That's nutrition in early difference. childhood. I think it the women were tiny difference. too, though, because look at the dresses, and they were yeah. little. Yeah. <laughs> well, shit, man. I've even like bought dresses from thrift shops, like from the you know early like 1900s. A, a real vintage dress. And the yeah. shit is tiny. Yeah. And I'm like, how the fuck like, did people fit in like, this? I thought they that was have, okay. Yeah. What happened? They must have eaten nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They must have eaten nothing. Very low protein like my ass diet. Isn't or they had like ten kids, and all their body weight just went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all it's around their ankles. It's just gone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they have nothing left. They're just skeletons. You know what's, you know what's crazy? I, mean, I don't know why they just thought of this, but it's like, my grandmother told me, she had three boys, right? And all her teeth fell out. Like, she had to get dentures, like, when she was fairly young. She's like, all of those kids, like, having all those kids, it, like, leached all of the fucking no, I think it's true. shit out of her. Yeah, and it's like, her, and then her teeth started to fall out. Veronica said... Isn't that crazy? Veronica, I believe it, yeah. Veronica Vader is saying that the average height of a French male back then was 5'3". Okay, so that's my height. That's so 5'7 height. would have been big. Yeah. For a dude? For, for a dude yeah. in those... In, so Napoleon is not being described in that passage as being small. Yeah. He's being described as big and his imperial guards even bigger. We're just bigger than him. And then, and then the, the, the paintings that you see from the era of Napoleon... Bonaparte on his horse, he's normal size or big. Well, you know, like I horse. said, I feel like that's one of those things that just got repeated so much over the yeah. years that everyone believes it now that it's like. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's like a Napoleon complex. Yeah. So, so it's like, yeah, sure. You have a yeah. complex yeah. named after you, and it right. isn't yeah. true. But it's, it's not true. No. He's going to come back from the so group and be like, I'm not right. short. God damn it. Like, well, short guys yeah. will become more aggressive because they're picked on. Yeah. But Napoleon wasn't one of them. Napoleon Even if was you weren't picked on, I think that you yeah. need to just prove that like you're like that you're not. Well, here's the weak, funny thing. You know? Here's the funny thing. In the army, a lot of guys are fucking tend to be short, right? I, you know, I was there. Are they? I don't know. Yeah, my size, a little bit taller, a little bit shorter. You know, you're talking between five five, five seven, five eight. There's a lot of Hispanic guys. There's They're people shorter. of different races. Yeah, They're all shorter. Yeah. yeah. You know, some of them are, are Mexican. Well, I think what it is is it's kind of like they're reading into it. A tall guy might see a shorter guy acting like a normal guy and think that he's being aggressive. That dude oh, is acting okay. the, exactly the same way a six foot tall dude would act. But if a six foot tall dude was doing it, you wouldn't comment. You wouldn't on comment it. on it. But you're right. seeing a five foot five, five foot so six. It's like, oh, he must be doing all oh, these oh, He thinks sure. he's big. Yeah, it okay. might be perception. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's I perception. get perception. That. That's what get that. that's what I it think is. You're right. They all act the same. Look who's here? Yeah, what's up, Pook? In, 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 oh, there's Pookie. I in, wonder in, where she was. In my Finally. experience, in the, sleeping all day, baby. My experience in the infantry, 
All dudes that were infantry acted exactly the same. It didn't matter how big they were. So if you're a big guy, Conga, a little guy, that means you're the one that's like all hyper You're the one that has issues. Yeah, why are you focused on his right. height if he's yeah. not acting that See, weird? See, that's right. another thing that I worry about. It's like, why are you so worried about... It's it's just kind of like the thing where... You know how some people will like worry about, why are the gays doing this? Why are they yeah. doing this? It's like, you know, maybe that's you. Like what? Yeah. Because why the hell are you worried it. so much about right. that? Are you other talking people about little dick motherfuckers. Like are if you're doing. not a little dick motherfucker. Why do you care right. what they? Like do? why yeah. are you worried about what other people are yeah. doing? Yeah. So I think that says more about you than it says about the person. Yeah, that yeah. You in are my in my experience, targeting. my experience in combat arms units, all guys that had made it all acted the same. Yeah, they it didn't matter how big they were. They no. all acted the same. Yeah. I'm just saying that anybody that is super worried about what yeah. other people are doing that doesn't have any bearing on them. Right. Like like I said, don't worry about like what other people are doing with their dicks. Don't worry about what other people are doing in their bedrooms. Don't worry about that. Anything anybody that's worried about shit like that, that's your issue. Yeah. Not their issue. Because it would be like a battle just happened. A, a six foot tall male civilian watched it happen. Okay? He sees a big dude I fucking see that mark, being yeah. victorious. And he sees a small dude or a five foot five dude being victorious. He's going, mm-hmm. the little guy's fucking. He's Napoleon. He's, he's right. Napoleon. Yeah. yeah. He's like, what do you mean he's overcompensating? Because that's the thing now. That's he a killed thing. six dudes. How is he fucking overcompensating? He fucking he killed six dudes. Your, he <laughs> you know what your ass. Yeah, yeah, right. You know what are you talking about? It's, overcompensating it, it, is yeah, like it's not Joseph D'Angelo having right. a micro dick and right. murdering and people. murdering. It's yeah. different because he was upset about right. That. It's it's very different. Or having like a giant truck because you have a micro dick or yeah. something like that. Maybe that short dude or that micro dick dude is just living his life, doing yeah. his thing, and he didn't. Right, right. He didn't have anything yeah. to do. Maybe with that. people yeah. should just You're like reading into and what quit he did. worrying about what other people right. are doing. Is that's yeah. all I'm saying? It's sizeism. That's all I'm saying. Sizeism. I just invented that. Instead of racism, it's sizeism. No, you didn't invent that. I've heard that. One. You've heard that before. Yes. Okay. Well, then it's parallel. Of, it's a parallel invention. It's a parallel. It's of not what they talk sizeism. about. Though. Sizeism. Sizeism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I don't want to be as big as I can possibly fucking be. <laughs> so I guess I'm he a had to make He had to make sure. I that guess I'm a sizeist. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fucking work out. Try to get big. You can't get taller though. No, I can't get taller. I can only like, get bigger. There's only certain... Se- you I never you really can have. get wider, but you can't, can't get, get wider. Yeah. I, I never really wider. looked at it that I never really looked at it that way. You know what I mean? Fucking... Being a shorter guy, you, you get some shit, but it didn't matter. It's really weird that, like, I've always me. heard that, like, some... Like, a certain percentage of women had a thing. It's like, oh, the dude's got to be tall, but it's like, I never... That honestly, honestly never occurred to me my whole entire I'm life. I'm kind of ashamed to say, but I have thought that before when I was single. Just said like that I would like someone to well, be t- my maybe, size or taller. Which, maybe it's not, because yeah. I'm only five foot three, so yeah. most you're, dudes you're, are taller than me. And the dating pool is like yeah, this. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it's kind of like so it didn't really yeah. so it wasn't something that ever had to occur to me. Well, like yeah. I understand like I had a friend in high yeah. school that was yeah. a girl and she was six foot one. So yeah. you know she yeah. had a lot of problems, and I get that. I'm not that tall, but I, I girl, get that. I feel you. I yeah. feel you. I get that. Let me tell you something though. As a short guy, it was easy, easy to pick up. I a think six that's, foot that's tall. Well, like I said, that's you. well, that's what I mean. That's women, that's not every dude. If she was tall, it was easy. Women what are was not harder. What was harder is you talking about like being being you know being five six. All right. I kind of like them, kind of like five feet around that time, yeah, around that's that size. That that's about look. right. Yeah, yeah. But they're almost impossible to get because they like tall guys. That's weird to yeah, me. Yeah, they like I tall guys. But but if they're more, more like five five or my size five three, like, yeah. but even easier if they're like six. Six yeah. one. Well, because they're like misfits. Because yeah. they're misfits. Yeah, yeah. Because so, dudes really right. do not want to date a woman that's taller. Right. Than that. That's what I mean. And a lot of girls right. don't. I'm saying don't want to really date someone shorter than you either. And I never yeah. looked at I've it been that. There. I never looked at it that way. They'd be like big and tall, and I just kind of saw myself as like a big game hunter. I like, yeah, I get that. She's like a giraffe. I'll hold my shit. I'm gonna get some horse pussy. But see, <laughs> it's like you're, like that, right? you know, you're winning, but a tall girl. I'm trying to win. But the tall girl with the short guy is yeah. not winning. It's I'm the like, opposite.
is it? I'm like, right. I'm like, babe, bend so, over. Yeah, you think you're. Give me the stool. <laughs> Give me the fucking footstool. And I call her. <laughs> like, yeah, like, you don't care. But like for it. her, she's like yeah. looking down on you. So for yeah. a woman, it's not the same. Like you're. I never and worried I, about it. And I yeah. get that, like, yeah. tall women, they're really self-conscious about their height, probably more than yes. dudes are. Like, you can't, <laughs> yeah. like, you feel like, well, I can't wear heels because, like, what if I'm taller than the dude? And he gets, like, um, all butthurt about it. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's when like, I was in high school. You gotta manage look, dudes' feelings. Girls, Jenny's, go Jenny's always taller than me when we go out because she always she wears, wears a high waist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are like, oh, man, she, you, she's taller than you. And I'm like, yeah. no, she's not. I'm not in real life. Not in real life. I just wear But no, in high school, like, I... I'm only five seven, which I say only, but like a lot, it's it's taller than most women. You're on the tall side, and they all these girls would wear little cute skirts and stuff. And I'm not really, I'm not a skirt person in general. But one day I was like, oh, I have a long skirt. I'm gonna wear it to school and just see what happens in high school. And a teacher and at least two other people were like, oh, you're so cute. What are you dressed up for? And they noticed it. And it was only because I was tall. Like, they're like, oh, you look yeah. so, like, you were noticeable. You were standing out, and I'm not a standout person, so I was like, oh. Yeah, not going to do that, that again. again. <laughs> yeah, and I never did it again. I, I was like, I just thought it was cute, but yeah. to them, everybody noticed it, and it's because I was tall. Yeah. So. Alex trying to like, get me to talk about me and the Swedish girl back in high school, back when I was in Brazil. Swedish girl? Yeah, I went to an international high school, and there's this Swedish girl that fucking I hooked up with. I went to school with her, and we went. We we had this big fucking party after this. I don't remember what event it was, but we were in the fucking nightclub, and I hooked up with this Swedish girl. I can't even remember her name now, but shit, she must have been six two. I think that's where my tall jeans come from. Yeah, my mom's side is Polish, and Polish people are little. Yeah. So I got my jeans from my German, Norwegian, and Swedish dad. So yeah. I, that's where the tall comes from. <laughs> All right. And that's where my story comes from, me getting up yeah. on a box. Because having sex with her was like having, it was like having sex with a horse. <laughs> that's that's your fault, though, because you can make that work <laughs> without a box. She was fucking hated that. <laughs> she fucking bent over, and I had to get a fucking box. You don't need a box. Oh, oh my she, goodness. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. He's, already, he's told me this story already. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just like. Alex like, is okay. like, yeah. that's on she you. I know. I, I love this She's story. She's probably about 6'2". She's probably about 6'2". She's pretty. That's, but well, that's like model height, was, though. Like, yeah. She was a high school girl, too. You don't, You wouldn't believe how many people, when I was in high school, shy as fuck, not... Yeah. Everyone was like, oh, you're going to be a model. You're going to be a model. And I guess I was a little skinnier back then. But, like, I was like, really? <laughs> yeah. It was either, if you're a tall girl, you're either going to be a model, you're going to play basketball, you're going to play volleyball. Yeah. Like, there was this, like, path for you, and I didn't do any of those things. So, I was like, no, no, I don't do that. Veronica no. says, would Tom care to explain how he knows what having sex with a horse feels like? Because I came up, no, no, let me tell you something. Oh, let me shit. tell you something. These oh, bitches, shit. These bitches are trying to get me to rise to this it's occasion on. and tell stories. You know, I come from the fucking horse industry. It's not like I had sex with a horse, but I know what a female horse looks like from the back. <laughs> okay? Yeah, a horse is constantly on all, all four. A horse is constantly on all wow. four. And you got to fucking brush the fucking horse and groom him and make sure everything's all brushed and fucking clean the hooves and shit. And it just, it just felt like you were having sex with a damn horse. She was fucking huge. Yeah, horses bent, are Bent right. over that... Oh, I'm going to fucking get these details. You try, these guys are trying to tell me these... Trying to get me to talk about these so fucking X rated like details. Yes, yes, they do. And about fucking how big people's genitalia are and what it looks like from the back and shit. <laughs> get a picture of a fucking fucking horse from the fucking back, okay? Take a look. If you're into that's, that. That's, See, I just that's I'm glad. Was, I wouldn't want to be the woman that's like that big and be like, oh, you're was, like a horse. You she know? was fucking huge. Yeah. That's what I mean. See, that's now, not, I wouldn't want to be compared to a horse. That's what I mean. If, if I was that girl and like, like I saw this later on and be like, fuck? really? That's how he thought of me? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, she went back to Sweden to go with her own men. They're I'm going to go drink myself into a coma. Exactly. They, they, she, went back, <laughs> she went back to fucking Sweden and and probably, and got married to one of her own men. They're fucking huge. Who were, who were much taller. 6'1", 6'2", 6'3". Yeah, they're fucking huge. I actually have a lot of sympathy. They're, they're basically they're another race. Basically. I have a lot of sympathy for women that they're are ta- that are fucking very, huge. very tall. Yeah. Because you, I mean that man, a woman that's like over it. Because like I said, I had a friend in high school that was six foot one, and she had oh she had. But so if you're many drop problems. dead gorgeous, you you'll be okay. I she think, was yeah. She, look, she was attractive. There was only yeah. one thing about her that when I fucking saw it, I was like, oh man, it's kind of weird. It was her foot. 
Her fucking Did she have foot, weird Uma Thurman feet? The, her foot was, was fucking bigger than a man's foot. Well, yeah, foot. she was six foot. It was foot fucking ahead. huge. And I'm looking at that foot, and I'm going like... Oh. But see, when, like, really, really those feet. type of people... Because you, 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 like, you have a thing yeah. about feet. He has a thing about you. Kind of, but he, did, he doesn't the, like feet. No, uh, yeah, well, you don't like I don't feet. like fucking weird feet. <laughs> that, I don't like weird feet. On a woman that size, the fucking foot... Foot is huge. Or Wait, are my, a mess are my feet normal? No, your feet are normal, pretty normal. I was gonna say you got a little bit of flat feet. I have, fl- I have flat, I have flat feet, feet too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have she got a little bit flat. But other than that, they're like they're little yeah. bitty. No, okay, I wear no. a size no. six. You. Her feet were twice your size. She must have been like a okay, size twelve crazy. or a size fucking huge. I wear a six or a. It size. was like a fucking duck foot. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's just I'm looking I at it. I feel bad and for girls like, like compared that. to me. But those girls need to like, get with like a basketball player or something, and then yeah. someone you look bigger. Good. Then it look, yeah. it look normal look compared yeah. to like a dude yeah. that size. And their kids are gonna be huge. Yeah. But I'm yeah. looking at them and I'm going like I'm like God. Imagine yeah. put your fans out. Imagine if you saw a foot that would compare to you as that a big. A woman's foot? Yeah. Yeah. Compared to me, it'd be like that. But if the rest of her body was cool, like I'd be like, "Mm, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, The proportions were good. It's just okay. But but she was giant. It was like having sex with a horse. But like a giant woman, she was giant, cool looking. Yeah, she was cute. She was cute. Yeah, Yeah. she was cute. It's just that makes you. It's weird because it's just weird. There's a difference between the skin texture of a small person with limp bitty hands, and then you. It, it no, looks right, and then you look will. at a big person with that same fucking skin. I didn't skin know of the weird. same skin texture. Yeah, I didn't know that was a really? thing. Yeah, Thomas it's, it's, studied it's, this kind of shit. He studied skin texture. Obviously. I didn't have to study it. I had a fucking I had a fucking response when I saw it. I was like, man, that's a fucking big ass foot. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine. Look at foot is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I looked at it. I was like, that's a big ass fucking. Foot. Maybe Bigfoot's just a big ass hippie woman that goes right through the forest. And she's just probably, like, oh, fuck oh, the world, it man. It probably it wouldn't the look woods. big yeah. to a dude that was six one or six two or six. It wouldn't look big to them. Well, look at some of the people that those pro athletes date. Yeah, they date big women. Yeah, models right, and stuff. right, yeah. right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Is it was a, it was a, it was scale. Yeah, because you're making her sound like a Sasquatch. No, she was good. She, was good she can still thing. be hot. Like okay, a you know what she looked show. like? She looked like a six foot one tall Deborah Harry with big boobs. That's probably good. She yeah. looked cute. Yeah, I'd hit and that. And she was about seventeen. <laughs> She's about seventeen at the time. I was in high school with her. Yeah. So she was cute. Yeah. It's just really cute, but she was giant yeah, though. Different. She's yeah. big. She, you know. I knew a girl in college like, for like a little semester who yeah. was very big, and she was a, like wide and everything, but she yeah. was athletic and yeah. she looked good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ken says she probably had a four inch clit also. It, shit. <laughs> don't get me fucking started, man. He's baiting me. He's baiting me to talk about shit. I ain't talking about it, man. This is getting so demoralized. We're done. Nurses. Right, that's that's right. Right. Nurses. Right. Right. Back yeah, to he's, trying, he's trying to get me to Look, talk about shit. You should make me another drink, I Okay, think. all right, hold on. Me and my me and my tiny ass feet. Yeah, you've got tiny feet. I do, not, I do not have big feet. I have, yeah. I have little bitty. You have tiny, yeah. I have a size nine feet, which is like feet. larger for a woman, but it's not enormous. Like, it's not out of normal. That's, yeah, but, that's yeah. like average size, I would think. I, I, think I, yeah, I honestly, average I have like seven, I think. I have seven like fairly small feet. But I'm a small, yeah. well, I'm not a small person, like ass wise, but well, I'm I a small that, person. I, think I have that small your hands. You should match your height, kind of. I have small hands and small feet. I have small wrists. But I don't have small ones. But the rest of me is enormous. Like, my thighs are enormous. My ass is enormous. Everything's enormous. But my hands and feet are very small. But that's kind of cool. Like, I hope... And my legs are really short, yeah. like, abnormally. But I don't but know. But that short, runs in my family. Short chicks are kind of cute, though. My like, mom always, yeah. and all of my female relatives on my mom's side are all built exactly the same. And I'm just like, damn you, genetics. Damn you. Well, my mom's Five side three. is all the Polish side, and they're not tall Giant at all. thighs. Little, I have all my dad's Little jeans. short legs. Little short waists. Yeah. So no pants fit me correctly. Here you go. Like, I buy, thank you, there I you buy, go. like, hip hugger pants, and they come up over my belly button, because I have, like, such a short waist. I have the opposite problem. I can't buy mini dresses <laughs> or anything, or they're, like, up to here, and it's, like... Mm, no. And then when I buy regular pants, it's like not only does this waist come up over my belly button, but they're like the the legs are too long, like they're like way over my feet. Yeah. So I can't ever buy like pants off the rack. Like I have to bu- I have to wear yoga pants all the time because if I buy like jeans and stuff like that, they don't they never fit right. I have you never bought You can buy a pair. short like they literally say short on them sometimes. That's I've true. I've seen them. I've seen them. That's true. Where there's like 
Yeah, or like petite tall. size. Those tend to fit a little bit yeah. better, but I've I've had a bitch of a time like finding anything that fits correctly. <laughs> like, I think that that's like every woman's struggle though, to be honest. It is. It's like who okay, like the clothes you buy in the store. Who are those supposed to fit? Because I have never known a single person. I mean, person. we could go on, like, an hour-long rant about women's clothing We were sizes. talking about, like, I think I said mentioned something about bras before I said I have yes, one bra, I saw this it, one. and I was like, And this girl. is the only one. <laughs> I have a bunch of other ones, and, like, I can wear them, but this is the only one that fits kind of okay, and this one is, like, not even great but it's yeah. better than like the 50 other ones i have that i spent yeah. money on that don't and fit say right. your weight fluctuates a little bit or you get a little older and stuff like your body changes too so then or, it's you like know, you just, blow down yes. you're on the rag and then the yeah or, or maybe the bra <laughs> elastic gets a little stretchy mm-hmm. or it just gets worn out and you're like and then it's and then you it can't, can't wear it anymore, anymore. You can't it doesn't wear fit anymore. you anymore so because it's like and the thing yeah. about it is like you know dudes will never know you you never know the struggle they like don't. The, they the honestly boob, don't. The boob will, will pop out I'll here. I'll die on that hill. It'll yeah. pop out over there. Your back fat pops out here, pops out there. I this is this is too short. Is my, it's too long. My, yeah, my, armpit uh, fat. That's is what's like, going to kill me is armpit fat. Right. It's like, I was born with can't that win. gene, and it's, it's not it's not fun. I have all, yeah, I, I have the, um you know, smell something that's five calories and gain five pounds gene. Yeah. I have those genes. I'm getting towards that point, because, you know, you get older and... Shit yeah, and look, well, yeah, and yeah, and like I'm almost fifty, so I'm just like dreading. It's like, oh my god, I'm just gonna turn into like a sentient blob, <laughs> like the older I get, and I'm just like, I really hope I don't. Like my, you know, my mom doesn't look like that, and she's eighteen and years older than kids, me. So she did. So I'm kind of hoping that I'm. That's how dodging I see. I'm like, I'm like, have no kids. We must prevent this. It's right because <laughs> I'm kind it. of hoping that I don't yeah. want to go down. I don't want to go down that. No road. cellulite, no stretch marks, ish, ish. Yeah. Well, ish. I'll I'll say ish. You guys running the show? You handling? We're it? talking yeah. about female issues. We're talking about female yeah, fucking, yeah. It's a good thing I was out here. All the, all the dudes gone. are like, bye. It's good thing I was going. Well, Let's we, talk yeah. about periods. No, no we didn't get to that point. We have my clothing. She doesn't fit right. We're talking about how no clothes fit right. You guys want some tacos tonight or maybe burritos or something? I'll make those. Uh, I got, I'll even make fresh tortillas. I'm going to be tipsy enough. I'm going to eat whatever. I'm just gonna or I'll make like yeah, a Yeah, probably. Burrito. Like, I'll, once I'm drunk, I'll just be like, yeah, give me all the food. Yeah. I don't have any of that. She's a and, vegan. I don't and have then tomorrow. I know. I chatted it because they said that Ben Franklin. Someone said that Ben Franklin was a yeah, vegan. Yeah, I saw that. Off and on, evidently. And that made me excited. I think I was like, oh. I Somebody asked that, if yeah. I was Italian. I'm not, actually. Um, I'm uh, Irish and Native American. I wish I was Italian sometimes, but I don't know why, but I'm not. Because they're very pretty. Italians, I find, are very pretty. They have pretty skin and curly hair and fun stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I always wished I had yeah. curly hair. My hair will not curl. Your hair looks good the way it is, though. My hair is, like, kinky yeah. weird. Which My hair is <laughs> just aggressively straight. When I was a kid, I was, like, very... Because in the 80s, like, everybody had, like, those really cool, like, uh, perms. Like, all those, yeah. like, ringlets and stuff. And I wanted that so bad. And my great aunt was a hairdresser. And so she would come over to my grandma's house. And I'd be like, please give me a perm. I want, like, the ringlets and all this other stuff. She would put it in there. It would look awesome for, like, an hour. And then it would yeah. all fall out. The perm will not... It won't stay in my hair. My hair just is like, fuck you, I'm straight. So. Yeah. Because it's heavy, it weighs a ton, and it falls out all the time. Did You didn't lose your place, did you, on, on the show, did you? Right, well, we no, it's, it's right there. Okay. Detour back to this time. Even right. though everybody, like, probably forgot what we were doing. Yeah, they probably forgot what we were talking about. All right, time to zip my lips. What, yeah, back it's like, what were you talking about? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about, like, doctors and nurses that kill people. People are asking Be me serious. to make drinks for them and everything, which is... Uh, well, we can't, good. like, give them to you over the internet. I can't give you a drink through the internet. We're going to try and give yeah. them to you over the internet. Here you go. <laughs> Drink the little time. Thank Shots you, Victor, <laughs> for the bra and perm fund. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much, much, Victor. Thank you. I Thank probably you. will buy a new bra with that. I probably yeah. need a new one. You guys, I have one that I have so one that, that I, wear. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. Like, there's a whole bunch of, like, you saw that shit. There's I like, bought a whole so bunch many of cheap ones. I'm trying to declutter my closet and. Honestly, my bras are like this many, and I wear like this many. You they're guys like, got some game. For, you get for these good guys ones, talking about their bras. Their good ones game. are fifty dollars a piece. This, you should be tipping. Yeah. You got them talking about the bras. Y'all need to be tipping. <laughs> we we'll keep talking about I gotta, boobs. I got to sit up here like a pimp or something and fucking saying you better pick and pay. You talking about boobs? Yeah. You guys got some game, man, to get you guys talking about boobs. 
I'm, I'm just co- laying I'm it down. I know how I'm it all com- works. I'm commending the audience. Well, you know, we gotta like yeah. commiserate with our fellow ladies out is? there. Any of the ladies out there know yeah, exactly. I think it's, exactly, I think it's men. Exactly what we're talking about. I think about. it's men. Well, they oh, have a prurient men. interest. Okay. But the you know ladies, I mean? they feel us. They know okay. what's going yeah, on. Yeah, it's like you you feel me, right? right? Like nobody like I said, I've never met a single woman that bought clothes off the rack that had them fit correctly. Yeah. Without like, trying for, them on first. For a long yeah. time I thought it was just me because I'm like, maybe I'm deformed. Like for <laughs> no. a long time I seriously seriously I thought I was deformed because mm-hmm. like everything I tried on, it's like, why doesn't this look the way it looks on the people on in the mannequin, the, the little yeah. tiny Right. Little it's like on on the people mannequin. in the commercial, yeah. it's like, why is this done it doesn't yeah. look right. This looks bad. Yep. It looks like a bag. Yeah. Why? Those, those mannequins those, those, those female mannequins they're bad they're there's like only bad. one girl we know that looks like that it's there's just, not those are not like normal no, no. human proportions they're talking about Sonya and Sonya weighs about 95 pounds and fucking 5 yeah. pounds of it is implants and has fake implants yeah, and I'm not trying to skinny. say that like we need to be you know which I'm not body shaming like, like you can have right. whatever yeah. body style but when it comes to buying clothes I do want to see what it looks like on someone similar to that is I really really like, right. do and it's not like oh just in a representation thing it's like no no yeah. no, no, no i want to i want to sure see what good. it looks like yeah especially if i'm yeah. buying it online like what yes. does it look like on like a dumpy five give me the weight i am person. and the, the, the height and like yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna it's put, like is this gonna look good is this gonna, gonna look put bad it on a mannequin i'm looks, gonna buy it and it just like looks like a fucking potato sack they're gonna put it on a mannequin yeah. of the mannequin modeled after a five foot one tall chinese girl that weighs 95 right. pounds but that's that's with infuriating fucking, with fucking yeah. with fucking d size implants yeah fucking, is it bad that like american size clothes i can wear small or medium like tops medium or large on the bottom if i'm ordering from asian countries i have to order like 2xl yeah. because i'm over i'm those over motherfuckers feeling bad about sizes tiny. like different brands i am an extra large an xxl an l a medium yeah. Yeah. i don't even because i anymore. bought like an extra large yeah. from like asian countries like in pants mm-hmm. and i can't even get that shit over my knees. i have 2xl stuff from asian stuff i'm like i'm proud of it i don't care <laughs> Like I knew my thighs and ass were giant, yeah. but thanks for making me feel super bad. I kind of want to see how small these people actually are. How though? can they be yeah. that small? Do they That's eat? like ridiculous. Yeah, like no. Uh, you, you look. You Asian can look at girls? videos. Yeah, you can look at videos of them and see how tiny they are. It must but be so genetic. Are the men, it must know, be it, genetic. It, it's just it's, it's small. It's genetics and diet. But here's something else. It's not just the women. Because I don't eat that. I mean, I don't you eat can, that much. You can take a Chinese man, and you get a side shot of him. He's half the thickness of me throughout the rib cage. Half. Yeah, so like the bone structure. Yeah. It's not just they're, so they're just like smaller. They're very small. Well, because yeah. you know the joke of when you're fat, you're oh I'm just yeah. big boned, and like usually that's no, kind of a joke. Too. But legitimately, I yeah. think that Western people, some of us, are yeah. bigger boned compared yeah. to you know Asian people or whatnot. Yeah. yeah. DJ um, Maniac even yeah. says even a two XL from Wish was snug on me. Right. Yeah. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Like, I can wear medium or large pants in American sizes. I've ordered shit from, like, you know, um, what was that Japanese place that we used to order from all the time? Uh, Ooh, that had all the goth clothing. Yeah, Remember what I'm talking about? I, I had to order, like... Punk th- Rave. Yeah, like, three punk sizes rave. larger. I love punk yeah, rave. Yeah. I had to order, like, three sizes I'm larger. An Unless X- they were... I'm an XL in Punk Rave. Yeah. yeah, I had to get, like, two or three XL. One of my old larger. motorcycle videos had... About Buell stuff, fucking had a Japanese guy says, "Dude, man, your fucking chest is huge. I wish they had a chest like that." And I was like, like, "What are you talking about? What are you talking about?" And then fucking, I looked at him and I was like, "Oh, I see what you're talking about now." Well, because you look at it from the side and they're just very, very, you know what I mean? Like, like from here to here, it's just like. I sell used clothes like Poshmark and some of those sites that you guys probably know. You can resell stuff and some of my little jackets and stuff that are kind of tight on me, I've sold them and dudes will buy them and sometimes it's Asian dudes and stuff like that. And I'm like, what? Dudes are wearing my clothes? But then I'm like, okay, yeah, some of them are smaller than me. They're little. Yeah. Yeah. So it probably looks good on them. Real fucking fine. Yeah. Bone. You can fit in my jackets better than I can. <laughs> but the, you know what? To me, it occurs to me that it's very sad about this, that every single thing that people complain about about themselves, somebody else is looking at you and saying, man, I wish I yeah. had that. It's yeah. comforting, isn't it? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I get, I try to think that. I try to <laughs> think that. Because, like, in my worst moments, I'm just kind of like, look at this fucking, oh, my God, this, my ass yeah. is so fat, this, that, yeah. and the other. It's like, oh, my boobs, and those, like, nothing will fit in them. And it's like, but then, like, I go out to the club, and I'm in the bathroom, and some girl's like, 
oh, I wish I had boobs like yours. Yeah. And then, like, like, that kind of makes me feel better yeah. for, like, yeah. five minutes, and then I start feeling shitty again. <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel you so hard. I feel like every, like every woman in the world. Drunk is girls good. in bathrooms at clubs are the nicest people you they really are. ever meet. I've they really are. I've had terrible days where my skin's bad, my hair's bad, everything's bad, and they're like, oh, you're so beautiful. What did right. that, what she say to me? She said... I wish I could stand in line longer in the bathroom so that I could look at you longer. And I was like, oh my God, that's See? the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. I wish I could stand in line longer so I could look at you. Somebody, yeah. somebody, in, the, somebody, in, the, uh, somebody in the comment section says it's not genetics, it's just they don't have obesity issues. There's something to be said for what you're saying. A little bit. There are a lot of Well, it depends on the diet as well. Right, like we our diet is right. very carb heavy. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of... Di- a lot of uh, very sugar heavy. A lot of di- dairy There's not in it. so much. But the thing is, though, is that you're also wrong. And I'm, in, I'm into fucking genetics and fucking look at bodybuilders and fucking understand how the fucking human physique is built. Also, I'm a pretty good artist. I can draw it. If you look at certain Chinese, your average Chinese male build from a side view, the rib cage is a lot narrower than mine. A lot from which, and there's not a lot you can do about. I'm not talking from a frontal view. I'm talking from a side view, from the front to the back of the chest. It's Several inches. Well, on they're average. just smaller. They're, they're genetically very smaller. thin build, and because of that kind of genetics, you, you can't pack a lot of muscle on it. And if you do, it looks fucking huge. If you do, because there isn't much room on it. Like uh, for instance, you know, being five six, if I gain twenty pounds of muscle, I fucking look huge. You put twenty pounds of muscle on a six foot one fucking large frame, you don't even see it. So it, well, doesn't, yeah. it does it, not it's fill all out what, the same. In a, in a positive and, note for yeah. the tall girls that you're talking about, yeah. that was one thing that my grandma told me, and she probably will never remember telling me that. Like when I was maybe 12 or 13, I was depressed and crying mm. in my room over who knows what. And I don't know what, what the deal was, but it was something about weight and this and that. And she said, you know, you're a tall girl. And she said, when you're, one day when you're tall and your metabolism slows down, you're going to be able to carry extra pounds that those cute short yep. girls can't. Yep. Yeah. And it's you're going to be you're going to be happy about that. You can hide See, more pounds. And I was like I never yep. thought about that and she'll never remember that she told me that. But I've like I've held that for a long time like yeah. Yeah. shit. In when some I get ways, old, yeah. I'm going to be able to hide more pounds than the little cute girls. Yeah. Can. Women that are taller can yeah. get away with. I mean, because yeah. like I said, I'm only 5 foot 3. I gain 5 pounds and it looks yeah. like and I look like a giant fat person. But it's so, so it's like you know, it's Everything, I like being short in a lot of ways. Like, I wouldn't necessarily want to be taller just because, I don't know. As, you don't as much, stick out and you don't really want to. <laughs> yeah, it's like, exactly. It's yeah. like, and I kind of like being the height that I am. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it is kind of a thing where my, my grandma used to tell me stuff like, well, you're kind of proportional. I you know, mean, she would say like thing. stuff that's like that. Yeah. And I'd be like, yeah. thanks, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's a, you know, it, it's kind of a thing. But I, yeah, I don't know. In some ways, I, I kind of wish I was taller, but maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. You're okay. probably more, like, centered, too, to the earth. Like, you're closer to the earth, so you're not, like... <laughs> I have, Yeah, I, I feel know. like if I fall down, like, I have... Yes, you have shorter to I have, fall, right? I have a yes, there you go. Whereas I fall. trip and fall, and so I'm, So I probably like, hurt yeah. myself less. Not, I, I won't, like, yeah. take my whole head off like Dennis... Yeah. I, I just thought I'd bring that back up to make We need feel to bring better. that back. I still, I still can't believe that that just happened. I still can't either. I'm still, like, thinking about it. Like I said, like, fucking Dennis's head fell off. You killed Dennis. You I don't believe Dennis. it, man. I'm going to fix it. Don't worry. You killed fix it. Dennis. The, 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 the break, After all this time. The break was extremely clean, so fucking... <laughs> It will it will glue right back His together pretty well. His head just came right off. Just as, as soon as I get sober and I get that fucking, I, I'll get. Don't, that. don't, yeah, don't do it don't now. Glue no, him don't drunk. do it now. That will be. No, I can because fix, there'll I'll be fix, glue flying all over. I'll fix it tomorrow. You'll I'll glue it. your fucking forehead yeah, yeah. to your hand. Yeah. And you won't like, even be able I, to see it. You'll glue your dick to the toilet seat. Oh, you, shit, who knows man. what? You must have read that something about gluing dicks to toilet seats. Well, that's like a prank that a lot of people played. Like, look, like shitty people. It would be like your butt cheeks, though. Wouldn't be your dick. I look, think. you girls should get. On it. I'm gonna keep these women in line. Look, you guys. Get gotta, it going. Oh, you you're guys gonna gotta it. get. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna step I'm in. I'm trying. Where's really the story, man? Where you? We, we're off track. 
What what case are we on? I told you if you tell me quiet, I'm we're quiet. still talking about how Harold Shipman. All right. Okay. How this is go, the second case. I'm going to piss. I have she's going to talk two, about two, two more. <laughs> I have two more. Okay. This show is going to be fucking right. seven hours long. Nope. nope this is going to be a seven hour show if you don't whittle away at this show. <laughs> and I want to make us something to eat. I want some Mexican food for tonight. Okay, I'm going to whittle Does away at it. Yeah. I mean, you can, like, give your insight, but let's not... I mean, listen I, to them. I like to going show. off on tangents, too. Okay. Because, okay. you know, I, I like to, like, you know, right. connect with the people and whatnot. Okay. But, yeah, so where were we? We were talking about how uh, Harold Shipman, otherwise known as yeah. Fred, but I'm going to call him Harold. Like, they called him Fred because his dad's name was also Harold Shipman Sr., and, like, that was his middle name, but blah, blah, blah. I'm not calling him that. We're just calling him Harold. So he goes to Donnybrook. Medical Center. Now, like I said, other than having a reputation as being kind of a snot, being kind of arrogant, um, he didn't, like, no one thought he was a murderer, obviously. Everyone thought he was, like, he's a good guy. He's, like, a hardworking doctor, whatever. Um, he was there for almost 20 years and really didn't uh, raise any red flags, didn't ping anyone's radar, nothing like that. Now, no one really noticed that anything was unusual until a local undertaker noted that a bunch of Dr. Shipman's patients seemed to be dying at a, um, at a rate that was a little uh, unusual. Like, a lot of cremations were coming in, like, people that had died, and, like, you know, the cremation order would come in and had his signature on it. And somebody that worked at the local um, undertaker's office was kind of like, hmm, that's a little strange. Seems like a little, that's, it's a very high proportion. They, she just noticed it. So... Another thing that kind of stood out was that a lot of the people that were dying were elderly women, sure, but they were dying in, like, their houses, like, in their living rooms. They were just, like, sitting in a chair, sitting on the sofa. Thank you, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Um, And they, like, were fully clothed. It's not like they were, like, in their beds or in their jammies or anything like that, like how people would normally die. So some people started questioning. They're like, okay, well, it's a little weird that all these people are just like dying in their fucking easy chair, like while they're, you know, fully dressed or whatever. That's just a little strange. So some people started to notice. Now, the undertaker kind of like approaches uh, Harold Shipman is like, uh, hey, bro, what is up with all these like elderly women dying under your care? Like they seem to be fully dressed. And he like talks to them and. After a while, the undertaker was like, well, okay, maybe there's nothing to be seen here. Maybe it's just a coincidence, you know, and maybe I'm, like, overreacting or whatever. Now, there was another undertaker later on, though, Dr. Susan Booth, who also thought it was weird. And she kind of looked a little uh, further into it. So she was kind of like, okay, well, I think there's something here that needs to be looked into. So they eventually ended up contacting the police. Now, they ended up watching this dude for a while, but they didn't, um, they didn't see any, like, you know, overt evidence that any, of any wrongdoing that was, like, going on. So they were kind of like, okay, well, maybe nothing, maybe it's just a coincidence, like, you know, we're not super worried about it. So they also didn't look into, like, his past criminal records, which would have brought forth his, uh, you know, forgery thing which maybe would have made them investigate further. So they didn't really look at them. Now, they also kind of like, another thing that he would do, and they didn't really notice this until later, was that after they, after his patients died, he would go back and like, he had a computer and he would go back and um, change like the, like, what time he went to their house, like, what their cause of death was, like, what he went there to investigate, like, you know, what the medical shit was that he went there to their house for. So that was one of the things that ended up, like, catching him later on. But they didn't really, you know, this was kind of back in the 90s, early 2000s. So they weren't really, like, super worried about it at that point. So basically... They couldn't really establish, even though they thought there was some, like, shenanigans going on, they couldn't really prove anything, right? Now, the thing that actually ended up bringing his killing spree to an end, finally, after supposedly more than 200 people that he had killed, 
was this woman named Angela Woodruff. Now, she was a daughter of one of the victims. She was also a lawyer. And uh, she was, like, not having this shit. Because what ended up happening was that there was this woman named Kathleen Grundy. Now, she was 81 years old. She was a widow. Now, she was very wealthy. Now, she was found dead in her home in June of 1998. Now, Harold Shipman had been in her house earlier that day for a house call, which wasn't super unusual. What was unusual, however, was that not only did Harold Shipman say, oh, we don't need an autopsy, which again, run flag, but also um, that there was supposedly a later will that Kathleen Grundy had made out, leaving all of her shit to her general practitioner, guess who? Dr. Harold Shipman, leaving nothing to her family. So her family thought this was a little odd. So they insisted that this be looked at. And like I said, the daughter was a lawyer, so she was not having this shit. So the fact that, so they look into the will, um, you know, the daughter is like, you know, the will is a forgery. You know, this dude murdered my mom. He was there. And then a couple hours later, she was dead. So she calls the cops. Now, the superintendent comes on the thing. Kathleen Grundy's body gets exhumed. And they do a postmortem on her and discover that she has died of a morphine overdose, which was administered within three hours of her death, which was, according to Dr. Shipman's own records, uh, the same time that he was there administering to her. So they decided Mm. to raid his house. So they raid his house. They find a bunch of medical records. They find a bunch of um, jewelry, which belong to perhaps some of the victims. They also find an old typewriter, which they determined was the same typewriter, which was used to type the fake will, leaving all of this woman's money to this fucking doctor. So they decide, okay, so... What they do at this point, they're like, all right, we're going to arrest him. And we figure that he's probably murdered more than this person. But because a bunch of his victims had been cremated at his insistence, that was one of his things. He was like, oh, this person died in their house. Let's cremate them and like not ask any questions. And then like the shit gets pushed off. The person gets cremated. Obviously, they can't do anything about it then. So they were like, well, okay, well, the ones that were just buried we're going to like prioritize those cases because we can actually dig those bodies up and get some like evidence to, you know, try this dude. So basically what they did too, they not only did that, like the people that were just buried and not cremated, but they also looked into his criminal records because Harold Shipman, as I don't, as brilliant as he was, I guess, But he wasn't brilliant enough to know that the changes that he made, like on his computer records, it's time stamped. I mean, and he apparently wasn't bright enough to realize that. So when they looked back at his computer records, it was determined that what he would do was that he would go to a house, like on a house call, and he would kill the person. And then he would go in his computer and like finagle the medical records to make it look like, oh, you know, hey, this person did this, that, and the other. And it's like, so they knew that, like, the, he had made the changes, like, after the person had died. You know what I mean? So he didn't seem to realize that that was a thing that they could check. So that was a thing that they checked. And that was another thing that was uh, very instrumental in getting him in trouble. So there, a whole bunch of people. Well, hey, Pookie. Pookie just jumps up on. She the table. just jumped up on the table. Yeah. Are you gonna put your butt in the camera? No. You just come here, Pookie. Come here. Come oh, here. here comes the butt. Here comes the butt. Come here, Pookie. There, <laughs> there, she was. It's time. She's like, no, don't touch me. Don't touch <laughs> no, me. No, don't touch me. And she jumped down. She didn't put her butt in the camera. Okay. So. Come <laughs> so she eventually. Looks outside. That's what that is. Well. She's like, come baby girl. Outside. Well, come it's only. It's only 10 to 8. Yeah. I mean, you can let her out if you want. Just, like, take care to check on her. I'll take her out for a bit. She has her collar on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, she can go out as long as she doesn't go any further than the front porch. 
Because we still got like two more cases after this one, man. I can't understand it. This is going to be a well, show. You're, you're I'm the one that can't understand it. I'm going to write in chat. I'm done. Yeah. For Pookie's done, only done. Done. No, I'm done as in like she okay. do her thing. I yeah, feel yeah. I'm not we're responsible stepping back. anymore. Because I'm trying to. Yeah. I told... I told people that I was going to cover four okay. cases. You do I, your I, thing. I, didn't know I don't understand why you bite off so much like that. No, more than what it, you could chew. I'd do like two cases. But she's like, no, I'm going to give them more for their money. There's probably people out there that want okay. that, though. Okay. So, I mean. All right. Yeah. Well, like I said, the longer we go on, the more people seem to be like. Yeah, okay. okay. Like yeah. I said, I'm going to try and stay sober enough to. Okay. Yeah. What's up, sweetie? Yeah. Look at your yeah. So. So anyway, they do all these investigations. They do a bunch of, like, exhumations. They do a bunch of autopsies. And they find out, like, all these fucking drugs in these people's systems. So they end up charging Harold Sipman, Shipman, rather, with 15 individual counts of murder. This is in September of 1998. As well as one of forgery. Which I love that because that was just like, oh, well, you probably murdered 15 people at least. But here's this one little forgery case on top. It's like the cherry on top of the Sunday, Because for forging the will. Because he was trying to get all this fucking woman's money, right? So that, that was enough to, like, send him to trial. So he goes to trial in 1999, October of 1999. Now, his defense, they were trying to get him tried in three different phases. They wanted to do, like, one phase with all the cases that had actual physical evidence, as in they had exhumed the body and they found fucking poison or whatever. They also wanted to do cases that were without that, and also, like, the Grundy case, which was the one where he had forged the will. So they wanted that to be a separate trial. And then they also wanted to do another case that was just kind of, like, him trying to get... Um, accumulating like morphine and like other drugs and stuff. So they were trying to like do three separate trials. I don't know what the fuck they were. They were just like grassman straws at this point. Um, so the judge was just like, nah, bro, you're not doing that. So he said, nah, bro. That well, essentially, <laughs> in essence, <laughs> okay. that's what she said. All right. Uh, it was a female judge. That's that's essentially what she said. She like, yeah, you're not doing that. So we're just gonna like do all the fucking shit in one go. So. Even though they only, okay, so he he only gets, like, fucking, they did 15 counts, because that's what they could prove, and also the forgery count, so it was 16 counts. Um, they pretty much established that this dude got off on, he was one of the dudes that, uh, you know, when we were talking about Angels of Mercy, Angel of, De- Angel of Death Killers... He was one of the... What are you guys uh, doing? No, no, we're talking... We're looking we're at being, the comments. Okay. We're reading comments. We're reading comments. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. You're, like, distracting me. No, we're not distracting <laughs> But, yeah, so... He was one of the... He was, like, in the second category where he was, like, um, a power and control motherfucker. You know what I mean? He got off on having the power of life and death over other people. Because, like I said, he was very... Even from a young age, he was very arrogant. He had, a, like, superiority complex. So he seemed to get off on, I can just, like, kill these motherfuckers. Also, he had a little bit of an H.H. Holmes kind of thing where he um, seemed like he was trying to, like, scam money out of the shit, too. Yeah. Like, in in the sense of, like, I'm going to, like, forge these people's wills. Because that's a thing that people do. Old ladies, they die and they leave all the money to their GP. Yeah. No, that's not a thing that they do. But um, he tried to make the daughter think that, and she was like, nah, I'm not having it. Because she was a lawyer. She didn't buy that shit. Yeah, so she, that's what I mean. So it was kind of her, like, effort that got him caught. So basically, they, um, all the bodies they exhumed, they found out that most of the people that they, that had not been cremated, which a lot of them had been, but the bodies they could exhume, um, all of them had died of morphine toxicity, which, like I said, a little suspicious. And they also found they did a fingerprint analysis on the will, supposedly, of uh, Kathleen Grundy. And it showed that Kathleen Grundy did not have any fingerprints on it. Only this motherfucker's fingerprints were on it. Meaning, obviously, he had forged that shit. Trying to get all her money. Trying to get all the shit out of her family. So, and again, they had also had a computer expert that came in and testified, hey, this dude, like... Why are you like? What's you that? guys are like smirking behind me. It's like no, 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 no
No, you sleep no, no, through anything. It has nothing yeah, to do yeah, with you. Yeah. Nothing to do with you. It's like what I'm like. What are you guys smirking about? Mm-hmm. Like that. It's nothing. like it's stressing me out. All right, so I'm done, 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 done. Put in my phone. You get away. it. So a computer uh, analyst comes in and he's just like, basically, look, all this dude like changed all these like uh, death records like after the people had died. Like he would come to their house, like to do a house call, and then he would kill them allegedly, and then he would like go back to his office and change the records, like saying, oh, they called me out for this, that, and the other, so it looked like a natural death. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he would do that kind of shit, but because of the timestamps, they could tell that he had done it after they had died, like he was trying to cover his tracks. So they had a computer uh, analyst come in and talk about that. So basically, uh, and they also brought in the whole thing about the earlier shit that he had done where he was a drug addict and he had been like drug hoarding and he would over prescribe so he could have like extra morphine. Also, they put him on the stand and um, that did not help his case because he came across as super, super arrogant and, like, he was better than everybody else. Like, even though he tried yeah. to make it seem like, oh, I'm a doctor, I'm trying to help everybody, but, like, no one bought it because he came yeah. across as, like, a snot. So, you know, the jury wasn't really buying it. Hold on one second. What's Z- that? Zach is here. Zach, welcome about back. About time. To, welcome back to the show. Just you kidding. Hi, Zach. <laughs> I've heard about you. You bitch, you. You missed all the gay action. We had all kinds of gay action going on. on Wait, the did show. we? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. We were talking about the train dude. So oh, that's right. Train dude. Oh, the yeah. train dude. We were I talking forgot. about Panzram. You know that the was fuck, so long ago. You know you fucking Swiss deep town. down, Frank <laughs> Panzram is going to fucking jump out of the shadows and no fucking butthork you. And there's no way to fucking run from it. The fucking male on male bum rapist. No Think of that wa- shit. No bro. one wants to get butt horse. You could Carl be Pan's a man. filthy Even ass. Even if I was a woman and that happened, I wouldn't be happy. You no. could be a filthy ass, 65, 70 year old bum in the same ass clothes for the past fucking three months. Fucking not shorn. You're not even shaved. N- no wiping. An unwiped motherfucker. And Pan's Ram jump out and rape you. Well, at least Just somebody still wants to have sex. Fucking with you. terrible. I mean, on man. the upside. Terrible. Just let you know. Which should make everybody feel better. Just let you know. <laughs> every gay, every man's fear. Every man's fear. You missed it, Zach. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It. Zach said he's having his own gay action. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was late oh, from the show. Whoa. That's why we were three, hour, three hours he, into the shit and then he shows up. Doing something with his boyfriend. Yeah. He's got one of those Jewish lawyer boyfriends. Does but he really? That's what he said. I think he was a lawyer. Wasn't he a lawyer? Nice. Zach. Fucking sometimes you got to abuse a booty. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know that sometimes you have to abuse a booty? I think I do know that. Yeah, well, okay. sometimes you do. Sometimes okay. you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Louie's talking about the skid marks that the bums have. Fucking Pans Ram didn't give a shit. Man. Back in the day, whatever year that was, you know how gross people probably were back nasty, in the day? Nasty. Nasty. They were early 1900s. What was that? Is that? There wasn't running water, was there? No, especially not for bums. Because <laughs> I'm saying those people were out on the road for uh, for months, probably. This Hobos is like up on the this train. is like okay. Remember how we talked about Moon Pie, like on the Hoarder Show? Yeah. Yeah. This is like Moon that, Pie, yeah. but yeah, we're like she didn't have a house. Yeah. I'm kind of convinced that people back then didn't have the same sense of smell that we do think, now. They must not. They must like, not. you must have just gotten used to it after a while. Yeah, because just, everyone stopped. Maybe they yeah. eroticized it. Because They're there like, wasn't deodorant. <laughs> Even for, like, regular people, I don't think they wore deodorant. Yeah. And there was no air conditioning. I mean, people right. sweat and yeah. people didn't shave. Like, people yeah. were pretty nasty. Yeah. Think about it. See, this is why I would never want to, like, get You bringing up Moon Pie, man. Fucking, uh, yeah, Moon Pie. If you guys don't know who Moon Pie is, we I don't talked even about remember Moon what, Pie what in another episode. About. Yeah, it was, right? a, it was a show we were talking about the new the new season of Hoarders. Yeah, and there was this woman on there that I named Moon Pie because her face was totally round. Because her face round. was totally round. And she, had, and she would save her own... Can I just... Yeah, there's a Moon Pie. Moon, it's, a, it's a doll Moon Pie. I'm, Wait, moon what? Pie oh, that's a real moon pie. No, it's, it's for a like, moon pie box for Jamie, adult. AK Black, Yeah, but I thought you had a picture of the real girl. Say, Why no, would no, you no, tell No. So, Do you still have the picture of moon pie? I think um, I saw it. It's not I loaded. I, threw, I think I threw okay. it out. Yeah, you know, and okay. you know what's weird? It's like I just remembered that I had pictures of all these serial killers, and I've totally been forgetting to, sh- yeah. forgetting to oh, show Oh, did them. you? 
No. But I think I didn't. I don't think I told him. Moon Pie was a hoarder <laughs> woman who would save her own piss and shit in fucking cranberry juice bottles. Because you never know when you might need that might later. Need and you it was just all later. over the fucking property. Her fucking property was a fucking human waste dump. Do you see it? It was face? like yeah, it was like a sewage dump. And that was Moon Pie. That's what I called her. So that's, that's why Jenny brought that up. I wasn't prepared to talk about Moon Pie. Moon Pie, boy. She and then she was that. amazed that other people could smell it. See, that's what blew my mind. Fucking crazy. That blew my mind. Yeah. She was like, you can smell that? She says, yeah, we smell it. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah. Um. And I don't, like, you guys won't see this for several weeks. But yeah. I just did a book review of a book called Ken by Keelan Patrick Burke. And there is a scene in there with a very um, morbidly obese woman yeah. whose sons had to scoop her poop out from her crack? bed. Oh, okay. Nasty. From her ass crack. Nice. So, and that's what I was thinking of when I was reading that passage in the book, was, which also kind of made me throw up a little bit in my yeah. mouth. Um, it... Made me think of Moon Pie. And Z I was thinking, oh, it's Moon Pie. That's what yeah. I pictured when I was reading the book. Zach is saying that his boyfriend is not a lawyer, and it's not technically his boyfriend, so Zach is running oh. game. You're running game, yeah. Zach. I think that's probably the best. Says, I'm only 23. Isn't that, isn't that some shit? Man, don't pin the shit down. Don't pin the shit and down. And then Zach says, Jenny, tell your friend she looks like a god. I was just, Marlene I Dietrich. was trying to comment. She is my <laughs> idol. She's yeah. my beauty icon. So yeah. that is the best compliment yeah. I've ever gotten, honestly. Yeah. One of, at least. Top you, five. You do look a bit like Marlene Dietrich. I you do, actually. I love her. I haven't seen yeah. any of her movies, yeah. but her, her style and her yeah. makeup... Uh, ah, I love her. All of, well, all yeah. of the shit like Louise Brooks, all of those people yeah. back in the twenties. Oh my god! I, I was telling my hairstylist who does yeah. makeup as well. I was like, for Halloween, I don't want to go all out, but like some goth slash twenties makeup would yeah. be mm, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Man, now too. now I'm thinking that we have to do some like shit for Halloween. We gotta like dress up for Halloween, man. Louise I, Brooks was cute. She, she was, was very she was cute. Fucking adorable. She got blackballed from talkies though. She did. Yeah. Those little uh, silent actresses in the early yeah. 30s ones, oh, I don't know why, but, like, I love me some crazy eyebrows and yeah. dark lips and little, like, I know it's, like, not natural and it's not what people do nowadays, but I'm all over that. Yeah. Well, look, I don't That's even have, shit. I shave my eyebrows off and then so draw them I. back in. Yeah. It's much easier. Goth girls are yeah. foes. They're faux heads. Yeah, faux but, like, heads. you Just feel, so. you can. It's because it's yeah. easier. Why, why well, are you going to tweeze them? And, Fuck well, and here, then, well, here's the just thing. Shave that shit I off. I have clinical it. OCD. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's much <laughs> easier to just yeah. shave them off and draw them back on than it is to pluck them or, into, like, an acceptable shape. Like me, yeah. just go out without them and shock people and it goes yeah. along with the same. That too. <laughs> you know? But yeah. it's also kind of like, here's the thing too. I always feel like I don't like... The whole thing where it's like, I'm going to wear makeup, but I don't want people to realize that I'm wearing makeup. Because, like, I want people to, like, think that I look like this naturally. I'm like, no one yes. looks like that naturally. I feel like if you're going to wear makeup, look your, like you're wearing makeup. I've got, yeah. I've moved towards that point. My evolution you know what I'm of saying? makeup, we, I've had a love-hate relationship with makeup, but That's nowadays. That's kind of my. You turned it into war paint. Aesthetic. Right. Thank it's you. It's like war paint. Yes. I've, Yes. As, although yeah. I'm too poor to have tattoos, I've always yeah. thought about having some kind of a tattoo with some badass eyeballs with makeup. You're too poor to have tattoos? I'm too poor. Man, we they have are, all kinds well, of friends that come over the house and They're tattoo. expensive. I well, yeah. I don't have those kind of friends. I want a back piece. Yeah. Somebody I needs want to like anything, come over here and do this. But yeah. I've thought about that. Something about war paint, because makeup for me has a lot of meanings. When you're well-connected, yeah, yeah, you yeah. when you're well-connected, you just have your friends go over and tattoo you. That's what well, we did there. You're the most well, well-connected well, friend <laughs> I have. So. We had a guy come we'll over bring some. We'll, for, uh, we'll find somebody. Although he moved back to... He moved back to fucking... Yeah, I heard your story. Uh, he's he was like a special guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, was he, he was... He was Colombian, Colombian right? He was a Colombian yeah, guy. Colombian. Yeah. He was a fucking, actually, a really cool Colombian ex sniper He's fucking guy. awesome. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Jacob Angel. Jacob Angel. Google Jacob Jacob Angel looks like the devil. Bald guy with He is the nicest there. dude ever. Yeah. He did this he did this yeah. tattoo. Yeah. In ten hours. Jacob at Angel. my house. <laughs> right. In my on, bathroom. He's pretty well known in Central America, been on a lot, a lot of T V shows and, and, and shit. Oh he's in France right now though. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, okay. he moved to France. 
He's doing shows in France. Man, good for he him. He would do suspension and do all kinds of shit. He had he's a cute. A, he's seriously. The he had a cute girlfriend. He married he's a friend of ours named Aurora. Yeah. And fucking, he stuck spikes through Aurora's back. And fucking suspended her from the ceiling and was swinging her around. That was, was a good wild. show, actually. Yeah, it did that shit. At I the have some club. pictures of that somewhere. Yeah, and Roy, Roy was cute. Yeah, the fucking She's weird shit. Yeah, <laughs> was I'm saying you know haven't seen her in a while. That's why I say that. Yeah, we're not like talking about like they're dead or yeah, they got right. fat now or anything. I haven't they, seen her in about they, three or four. They years. still look good. We just haven't yeah, seen them. Haven't seen them a couple years. <laughs> yeah. All right. So where was I? So this motherfucker. Uh, they listen to this bullshit about his, oh, I, you know, these people just happened to die under my watch, blah, 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 and they didn't buy it. So he gets guilty on all charges, 15 counts of murder, one of forgery. Now he gets 15 life sentences and a four-year sentence for forgery. And at this point, the judge was like, you know what? I'm just going to convert that because they can do that in the UK to a whole life sentence. They're like, you know what? We're just throwing you in jail, like forever. Yeah. Um, we're not letting you out because you are a douche and <laughs> you don't, would it, well, they do that. Yeah. And I, and I kind of feel like they have that, um, flexibility where they're kind of like, it's a whole life sentence in the sense that, well, if we feel like you've reformed when you're old, like we'll let you out, but we don't have any like time limit. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if we feel like you're still a danger, then your shit is still saying in there. Yeah. And that's kind of what they did. Okay. And this dude, mm, I, I kind of feel like this sh- dude should never be let out. So, as I said, now, even though he was only convicted of 15 murders and one forgery charge, um, from what they have determined, they have estimated that he may have killed as many as 250 people. Maybe up to 300. They're not entirely sure. Because he doesn't remember, and he's not really admitting to it. But they're extrapolating from, you know, how he's worked, like how his personality is. They're kind of extrapolating that he probably killed as many. And that's where he gets his reputation as one of Britain's most prolific serial killers. Because they think he may have killed as many as 250 people. Now, we're already at three hours and seven. Have I done commercials? No. All right. I'm going to do commercials now because i got to pee. And then we got two well, thank more. thank you for telling them. Just and then we got, pee. hey, you we're guys on this here. I'm going to get that shit on video. No, we're on this okay. here. All right. All right. Well, like other people don't do that? Or? I don't know. I'm just girls gonna... pee, you guys. You some? And girls pee and girls do worse okay. than that, too. Right. So. Yeah, we're humans. Okay, mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah. You know, okay. spoiler alert. But All yeah, right. so I'm going to do some commercials. <laughs> Well, some people might not know. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know what the hell is going on. fucking fun. I don't know what the hell is going on out there. I don't know what everyone's experience is. I don't know if people like think girls are like not human or. I, no, I think it, some dudes do honestly. No. I, well, I think that too, and that's why I always feel the need to clarify. Think that's some shit. No, no, no. It's true. You're it, probably you know, hold on. Hold on. What's all this sexism and shit? What's all this? No, sexism because for? well, no, okay. it's not your generation. It's the younger ones. Oh, okay. Right. I'm proud. Well, of and you. and the thing about it too is that when you are a dude, you don't. Uh, you know, I'm not if hating. If you're a dude without a girlfriend, you, you don't, don't know. really, um, yeah. you don't know what it's like to be a, a girl or a woman. You don't, like, know the experience of that. So, anything we say, it's kind of like, we're not hating on you. It's just that you never lived it. So Some you, people put women on a pedestal, like, they, there's so certain you don't things really they know. do and don't do. And really, we're not that different from you. <laughs> just That's what I mean. We're yeah. just the same. We're just the same. We're just you know, it's not meant for messages. It's not, it's not, for not meant for me. You. It's gotta no. be meant for me. No, 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 no. no. Okay. We're just, trying to educate said, because I'm sitting there going, these no, no, girls no. are telling me. I'm just no. saying how that they it's, are. No, no, no. Just just, like, you people on. can't. You're fine. You, okay, you pass. Right. Okay. It's just see, I got, I got, I got to Yeah, you are fine. It's just I don't. I feel like it's girls are fucking hilarious. There's people that put women on pedestals. <laughs> and they have this idealized image of what women do and don't do, and they have no idea that we are just like you. I think you guys. I think you guys are drinking, drinking too much. You guys want another drink? That, uh, well, you I don't, better get another drink. Sh- no. <laughs> you want? She's you're, good. You're no, good. I can't drink more than Jenny. Okay. I'm okay. good, and I have two more cases. No, I'm talk about. damn, I, I have to at least. I at least have to pace her. I can't go any okay. further. Alex says I heard I'll women me don't me have trouble. earwax. True. False. Women have earwax. They got earwax. And yeah. honestly, I have such bad 
Like, I'm deaf in one ear, actually. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. <laughs> but I have had ear infection problems since I was a teenager. One of the worst pains that I have ever experienced. True fact. See, I think that me and Jenny in our alternate parallel universe should just have, like, a women's educational We should do this. Thing. We yeah. should do like this. Like, a little video where guys can just ask questions that maybe they just haven't asked people, either friends or wives or whatever, and do they're you just want not it? comfortable. And we can just tell you the honest-to-God truth. Do you want to know the best yeah. thing? And honestly, I didn't know, like, in this century, in 2020, yes. I can't believe... That a dude, okay, so I heard that a dude was getting made fun of on Twitter or whatever, social media. He was actually suggesting that, well, you know, if you're getting in, you know, trouble because you're period or whatever, you should just hold it. Yeah, you gotta hold it. You should just hold it. (laughs) I just hold that shit, yeah. That's awesome. I wish, I'm like, don't you wish that you could be just sleeping hold it? at Do night? Do you and not? Like, it's like piss. You could just hold it. It's up in your bladder. You Do can hold you it. not like know how a period were? Oh my god! What century is this again? What century? But is think it? about if you didn't have good sex ed in school, and if you didn't have oh sisters or parents or a girlfriend, how would you know though? Oh my god. I'm but like he actually didn't know. No, I'm gonna you give can. that. No, 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 no. Let's stop. You let's can't. Hold and it. I don't you judge can't. people. So if someone wants to ask me about it, let's I'll stop. tell them. Let's stop. I'm like gonna, for real. Like, yeah. but well, that's why I was like confused. I'm like, really? Nah, I'm, really? I'm, I'm gonna stop this. Thank I'm gonna, you, Ken. I'm, I'm gonna nip this in. The I'm like, really? Did somebody really stop. actually not know that you can't? I gotta stop. Well, it's not it just for you. It comes for, out whether these, you want it to or not. Millennial Gen Zs, no. they're not like you. I have to. Oh. No, I'm gonna stop this because wow. I'm gonna give that man a commendation. Wow. I'm gonna give him a commendation for inventing something like that. That's like know. something that a drill sergeant would invent. I don't know. They're like, what? You, what's he talking about? You pussy bleed to hold it. Uh, yeah. Just hold it. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Wow. You know what? That would be that like some. I, I would tell the dude, if they could think, make that happen, do it, please. I think it's like a. Yeah. I think, I Can think we it, like make that a law? Cool. I think it was like a fucking. Actually, that's like a stroke of genius to come up with some shit like that and tell But. Yeah. You just hold it. Yeah. But. Just, but on the other hand, I can see. Yeah, yeah, just hold, just hold it. it. <laughs> well, I can understand that. Like, that's the thing. Like, that's why I didn't know because I was like, wait, okay, now. Is this a troll? Or I, think it's like, troll. I think it's no, troll. I think it's troll. No, I wasn't sure because some dudes could be dumb enough to think that it was just like pee <laughs> and <laughs> that you could just like hold it. Because you can hold pee if like for ready, a time. If you're ready for some TMI, there are some things about men that I also didn't know about men's fluids. <laughs> <laughs> and I also did not know at a certain age or experience. So yeah. you know what? Women can be on the naive side as well. It could be. It could be. Sure. If you went to Catholic school and you didn't have boyfriends, okay, I did you not. would learn I things. Did I did. I would learn things <laughs> as they come. Although I wouldn't blast them on the internet if I didn't know something. I probably want to ask someone. Well, I would make sure yeah. before I made fun of them. I would make fun it, of them, but nothing. I would make sure first. Yes. The hold it angle, as genius as that is, might have been the invention of like a six six to nine year old boy. He might come up with something like that. Just hold it. But <laughs> but honestly the, the shitty thing is that I could see how in might this day and age yeah. Yeah, I somebody that too. was in their twenties yes, yes, they would so. know. That would not no, I can like, see it too. I can, I promise, I can see how yeah, that would happen, yeah. that you would think that women could do that. If you didn't have sisters, you didn't have good sex ed, and you never had right, a right. girlfriend, how would you know? I mean, look, I've had, like, he's an only child, I'm just saying. Yes. I have I have a sister and two brothers, so I know, and the brothers are younger than me, so I know about all the smells, I know about all the shit that goes with, like, boys growing up. I had two brothers, okay? But I can see how if a dude grew up with no sisters and did not have girlfriends when he was growing up, I could see how... They wouldn't know. You think their right. mother's going to tell them that? That's too much Because here's the thing. Yeah. Like, my... Okay. My ex-husband told me that his mom... Like, he mm-hmm. knew better at this point, but he no, said his mom... I'm making weaker. His mom told him that tampons... Because he was like, what are these for? Like, he asked about tampons. Ooh. What are these for? And... His mom told him 
We put them up our butts, like, to do something, like, because I don't know what Did why. they really say up their butts? Or something like that. I don't think she said that, but she said that essentially, oh, it's just like, you know, for, you know, poop-related things. And, like, so he didn't know for a long, until he got a little bit older, and he's like, oh, he figured out what they were. So he didn't know what tampons were until he was, like, older. And I, so, I was like, I can see, even in this day and age, even in the age of Google, where you can, like, Google anything you want... I can see how dudes that are, like, mystified by women could actually think that we could hold it the way you could hold pee. So I, no, when I somebody it. posted I it that, yeah. I was like, you know what? I don't know if I want to believe that, but I do kind of believe it's that. Funny. That some dude thought yeah. that we could actually do that. I'm like, that would be nice if we if could do that. If a dude asked me that and he was a nice guy and he genuinely meant it, and I he wouldn't ge- laugh. I would, I would try yeah, to be like, I would okay, try I'm going to help you out. I would try yeah, not to laugh. Yeah. yeah. I probably would Later laugh. on, maybe. But if he was really nice, I <laughs> would When he wasn't around, I would yes. laugh. Exactly. But I'm the same. I'm the oldest of three girls, so we didn't have boys in our house. And, like, I wasn't really super Christian, but I did go to Catholic school. And we kind of just, like, you asked questions if you wanted to, but if you didn't really know or you didn't know what to ask, then you just didn't or whatever. So there were definitely things that I had to learn on my own. Yeah. So. And, I mean, I get that, yeah. like, people are, people in general are grossed out by so maybe to, like girls bodily unless functions. Unless people are They're being, kind of unless out people by are that. being antagonistic, then don't make them feel bad if they don't know something. They don't know. So, like just help them out. You just right. help a brother out or sister out. You know, Fuck right? I'm not. I'm not automatically gonna assume malice. No. But I can see how that would happen, and it does kind of make me think like it's like what? a sad state of society. It reflects on society, yeah. but it doesn't reflect on you as a human being. It doesn't right. mean you're a bad person. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, if you're asking in genuine honesty. Right. And that's how I am. Like, I don't judge anybody for questions and stuff. Like, I don't care. It's no skin off my back. Like, if you want to ask something and it's really awkward, like, it's okay. Yeah. I'll answer that shit. I'm not dating you. I love awkward shit. I love awkward shit. Yeah. I love it. I don't know if I love awkward shit. Oh, I do. In fact, I can I can accept all kinds of, of perspectives. Though. Right. Yeah. And honestly, like, this show, like, even though I have still two more cases to talk about, mm-hmm. like, the drunker I get, the more awkward questions I'll answer, well, I which can, is probably a bad up, thing to say And you can continue loud, on your show. Which is like, probably, well, actually. Do you want me to control this situation and just, like. Where did Tom go? I think he's doing drinks. I don't know. Did he get, Man, you have a drink, I have my drink, he has I gotta drink. pee again, though. <laughs> do you want to go pee and I'll just sit here and talk to people? <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. No. I wouldn't do that to you. I'm drunk enough, though, that, like, I don't think I'd care <laughs> or remember. See, that's what's nice about being drunk. That's what I like about drinking. I love being drunk, but only to a I certain do too. extent. I've well, had a couple, a few, maybe three or four bad experiences. That, like, I feel kind of ashamed I shouldn't have done that. Well, but, I've had many bad experiences. You yeah. know, I'm a lot older than you are, but so I've had many bad experiences. Although, I, I will say I didn't start, like, drinking to excess until I was older. Yeah. Um, until I was probably late 20s, early 30s. Like, when I was at a teenager and stuff, I didn't drink all that much. I wasn't a lot. Because I was a nerd. <laughs> I was a... Good but, you know, so I, I wait until I got older and then I was like, now I really have some shit to drink about. And then I drank. But, um, I, I like drinking up to a point. It's like drinking is good for somebody like me that is not, um, super social, like super, like, so it's easier for me to like talk about stuff. The effect that drinking has on me is I talk a shit ton more and I try to be philosophical and it doesn't always come through, but sometimes. Me too. (laughs) Yeah. Me too. And I feel like it's bad because I feel like I'm being super logical, like Spock like. I feel like I'm being annoying, but some people like it. And but then afterward, know. I don't even remember what I said. Yeah. And then Tom would be like, You said this, that, and the other. I'm like, Really? Hmm. At least I'm not yeah, okay. mean, right? Like, you hear about mean drunks and angry drunks? I don't get mean and angry, so. I do sometimes. It depends on what mood I'm in, and it depends on what liquor it is. If I'm having, like, a panic attack situation, you don't want that. Because then you're not rational. But if you're in an okay mood, everything's okay. 
Yeah, I I feel like it's better to get drunk when you're already in a good mood. I think you want the right people extend too. Like, if I don't feel mood. comfortable where I am, that's a that's a no go. Yeah, if you're already in a bad mood yes. and or then you bad, get drunk, like, physical environment where you don't feel safe, ooh, then you'll just start bad, to bad, cry bad. or just yeah. start wanting to fight. Or you everyone. start saying things that you don't mean, or yes. like wandering off into yep. somewhere you shouldn't be. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We've all been there. Somebody's We've asking, we didn't do commercials yet. We didn't even do commercials. We have three people. Yeah. Do we need commercials? <laughs> Should I do commercials do now? Do commercials. Because I kind of have to pee. Go ahead and do commercials. Yeah, right. do so commercials. I'm going to do commercials right now, even though we're three, hour, three hours and 30 minutes. God damn. And I have I have two more cases. You people are getting a fucking... You know, people, I, think, I guarantee it's all my fault because when you have Pookie. three people... Yeah. Pookie's coming yeah. in. So this is gonna be a deluxe. Yeah, it's about. To, it would have been long, probably. Anyway. He, I mean, you yeah, know. you added a little bit, but that's good. I, I think I'm only like here it. for two shows, guys. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> and like no, I said, be, that'll be out as soon as I came in. Yeah, you, you next be here week for is the birthday two shows show. because we have, which will probably be Urban two Legends, and it'll be two of these shows, two, yeah. two of the main shows. Yeah, yeah. the main shows. Well, you'll do matinee shows too, but those are like those are. They should be like an hour or less. Yeah, cut that shit. Yeah, I mean, Quit the men. The men you, you, you guys gotta understand something, man. I gotta feed these girls. Well, Tom likes feed. this because he's got I, like two women. Now. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> feed. I gotta feed two of them. I know he feels like he useful. feels really important. He feels useful. He does some yeah. shit. These women are using, trying to use me up, but in different guess. ways. But yeah, <laughs> I, got, I wanted to make some um, Mexican food. You, you don't have to make all that though. Like I couldn't imagine yeah. being drunk and be like, "I'm going to make this feast for people." I couldn't do that. Well, I, no, I, just, I couldn't either. When I'm drunk, like, I'm just like, "Can I just about, sleep?" Tell me, maybe, yeah. Tell me about maybe some burritos or something. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. I, I my expectations are so low, and not because of you, just because. See, of... She's vegan, so I got to feed yeah. her in a different way than no cheese. But I do have some homemade salsa. And I have some black bean stuff that I can fucking make. When I get drunk like enough, I don't even taste food anymore. I just yeah. know like I can make what some. ravenous feels like. But I think for me and Jenny, I'm gonna take some. Well, fucking, and then the next, thank them, you, Victor. I think I'll either take the chorizo and fucking do that with some eggs and make some chorizo egg and cheese burrito, or maybe I'll cook up some of them fish sticks and make fish sticks a fish burrito. What do you think, Jenny? Well, I like that idea. Well, actually, burrito? what? Let's back up a couple seconds. What you said about the eggs? I was, I was, my Did ears pricked up. Like that. Yeah. So you want chorizo and egg and cheese burrito? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. Jenny loves eggs. Okay. Yeah, I like them too. Jenny loves eggs. <laughs> yeah, and I'll fucking talk. even seriously. Even if I was a vegetarian, I would eat the shit out of chorizo, eggs. egg, and cheese. I yeah, can do you it. could do that. I like you it. could eat I be like a vegetarian. Egg. Eggs okay. were the last thing that I gave up before right. being vegan. I mean, so. you know. Should but we, we still have two more cases, okay, and we have to right, do commercials, right. and I have See, to go to the we bathroom. We can shut the fuck up. I can shut the fuck up at a drop of. And a I have to go to the bathroom. bathroom. Okay. So, let's so have what you I'm going to do some commercials. Look, I got commercials. Victor, okay, Victor, well, hold on, Victor. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you. I already said that. Okay. Now, can I trust you to run this or not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think I've I can. got I him. I can spot I him just like the way. Yeah. All right. So we got. I got Marlene Dietrich over here telling me how to do the commercial. Okay. Guys are going to make me blush because she's my favorite. Do you have your She's hot as shit. Okay. Yeah, uh, Do you see this FE3 commercial? Yeah. Strange Realities commercial? Okay, and then go to the bottom. Yeah. Pookie and too. Beijing. Okay. okay. You have to click each one. So which, yes. are the, which are the two? Which are the two now? Yes, we can. I got to see what the commercial FE3 commercial. Was. Strange Realities. Strange Realities commercial, Pookie and Beijing. Okay. I got it. Okay. All right, all right. I'm on all right, it. I can do it. Are you guys going to do it? I've got his ass. I Send can do Send that first yeah. one. Send that first one. All right. Send the first one. Don't you fucking... Know. You are incapable. Don't you mess this up. You're incapable. I got two of them fucking with me. I can do this shit. Don't you mess it up. It doesn't take a genius. It doesn't take a genius. Clearly it does because... Oh, look at her. You, look at her. Look at I have, you a, look look I have a brain similar to yours. I can do it. One, two, three. You gotta yeah. hit three. If you don't hit commercial, three. Put self in charge. Put self in charge. Yeah. Do you want me to self in charge? Yes. Okay. I trust you more. Fine. I'm gonna sit here and as long as... I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it looks like when it's done, but if he, like... Do okay. I have to cook each one? Yeah. Yeah. FE3 okay. commercial, when that's done, Strange Realities. So this screen is going to come back? Show. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. keep that there. I can All do right. that. So I'm going to put this one on because it's longer. Okay. Strange Realities commercial is on right now. Then mm -hmm. do FE3 commercial. Then do Pookie. Alex, Mexico. I got the Spanish chorizo. That's all I can find. I ain't worried about Portuguese. I am Tammy's gonna... laughing at the look on my face because... Yeah. Yes. This is a show for the records, I think. For, for all time. This is for the best thing. show that we've ever no, done. No, I don't know. 
I don't know. I, I like to think well, about fucking every Well, breaking... I feel really, really breaking, bad, but... <laughs> breaking Dennis. Breaking Dennis is fucking... You know what, though? Look, feel That's that. That's what's gonna... Si- tomorrow, no, the side dress. No, 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 breaking no. Breaking no, no, Feel that. Feel that. It's almost like it was... Why are we stroking? It's almost like it was glued on to begin with. Look at how straight that is. We're stroking Dennis's... Stroking... BTK severed head. We, it's weird. I don't like Did it. you guys ever think that that sentence would be said out loud? No? I didn't think so either. I'm but here we are. I'm <laughs> All right. Push All right. Push the button and I've got it. This commercial is like an hour and 20 seconds. Yeah. That one is like <laughs> an hour and 20 seconds. a minute. Or a minute, no, you know, a it. minute and thirty seconds. That was a minute, and that is like I've minute. watched all three in my house okay. or my apartment. Seriously. So you're, you're laughing at the look on I'm your face. I'm doing it right now. Laughing at the look on. We're all getting drunk. It's getting wild. I don't wild. trust the shit. I don't trust the shit. They're gonna mess. You can up. trust me up. though. All right. Hit the okay. damn commercial. Okay. Boom. Join us September 25th, 26th, and 27th for a three-day special streaming event, Strange Realities, to push the limits of your reality. Featuring authors, academics, researchers, occultists, experiencers, podcasters, and practitioners. All presenting fresh cutting-edge material and research. Streaming live. Featuring presentations by Brent Reigns, editor of Alternate Perceptions Magazine. Aaron Gullius, host of the Saucer Life Podcast. David Metcalf, writer and researcher. Alan Greenfield, author of Secret Cipher of the Euphonauts. Stephanie Quick, writer and blogger. Red Pill Junkie, 14, researcher and explorer. Tim Banal, host of Banal of America. Guy Malone, iconoclast and troublemaker. Timothy Ritter, host of Strange Familiars. Kiki Dombrowski, author and practitioner. Greg Bishop, author of Project Beta. Ginny Ashford, host of 13 O'Clock. Recluse, host of The Farm. Jack Montgomery, Folk Magic. Joshua Cutchin, author of Thieves in the Night. Reverend Michael Carter, Alien Contact Experiencer. Dr. Future, host of Future Quick. Tony Kale, author of Memphis Hoodoo. Rin Collier, Occultist. Soraya Ascath, host of Where Did the Road Go? John Tinney, Ghost Stalkers and Hell. All three days, only $20. Tickets and info available at strangerealitiesconference.com. Brought to you by the Conspiranormal Podcast. Conspiranormal.com. Strange realities. You love true crime. I love true crime. And I've spent the last three years compiling a series of the most intriguing unsolved murders of the 20th century. It's called The Faceless Villain, and Volume 3 is available now. Featuring such fascinating cases as the Ketty Murders, the Carey Babies Case, the Frog Boys, the Alcacer Murders, and the Anokashira Park Dismemberment Incident, The Faceless Villain Volume 3 is an involving exploration of unsolved slang spanning the years from 1980 to 1999. Pick up your copy in print or ebook formats on Amazon, or download the audiobook version from audible.com, and get ready for a chilling journey through modern crime history. Hi, Beijing. What you doing? Princess Fluffass. You are so pretty. Oh, uh oh. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Pookie. Pookie. I know you just can't resist it. She just can't resist that big fluffy butt. She just has to jump on it. Why are you such a bad girl, Pook? I know. I know you can't resist the fluffy butt. I get it. You're still kind of bad, though. You're still kind of bad. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Where did Beijers go? Where'd you go, Beijing? Did Pookie get you in the butt? Oh, she's now she's going in here. <laughs> she's like, fuck this shit, seriously. Okay. The ticker. All right, and we are back. Bitch, I'm drunk. I know what I'm doing. It's all right. We're gonna get. We're gonna take care of it. I still had to do it, you guys. Yeah. Even though I went to the bathroom. Yeah. I came back from the bathroom while the first commercial was still on, so I just came in here while everyone yeah. was like drunk and on their phones, and I was just like, click. People <laughs> fucking with me about fucking. Breaking Dennis. It was a I fucking I still have accident. to do shit even when I'm fucked up. I just had Dennis in my hands. I was talking, dropped him, and fucking landed on his head and fucking broke. But I'll fix it. It, it. The break was very clean. I'm gonna get fucking. I'm gonna get McCoy in from Star Trek. 
I got some fucking special shit. Damn it, Jim. It's just, damn it, Jim. I'm a fucking doctor. I'm not a bricklayer. I'm not you know, an epoxy I'm not a fucking epoxy man. I'll, I'll fucking I'll fix it. <laughs> I can fix it. We've been watching classic Star Trek. And that is so number. Fi- that is the first edition, Dennis, number 51 out of 300. Edition one. Collector's piece. Yeah, 51. There you go. Yep. Yeah, so... You still got uh, plenty over there. Looks like. so okay. much, Drew. All right, good. You're all right, Drew. Wait, this is, this is my third one, right? Yeah, it should be. That's Holy your third shit. One? Yeah. You gotta get through this. Am I still coherent? Yeah, you're, you're doing good. We're off We're off base a lot, but you're not talking shit. So. Yeah. <clears throat> that's good. I probably won't remember any of this tomorrow, but that's, uh, that's all right. All right, so we got two more cases to talk about. So let's yeah. talk about the shit. So I finished with uh, Harold Shipman. Like I said, the bitch got arrested. He got a whole life fucking sentence. Then he hanged himself, evidently, like good riddance. And then his body disappeared. Who cares where it went? I don't. He hanged himself in prison? Yeah. Because... How'd the body disappear? I mean, they don't know where they buried it? Well, I don't know. There's like some... (laughs) There's some controversy about like, well, we buried his body here. No, we buried his body here. Like, I don't... I don't really know how like that happened, but... And that time, they didn't really care. Well, it was 2004. Oh, 2004? So. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking we were on that other case back in the so, late 1800s. So, yeah. So, some people are like, well, it's still in the morgue. They're, like, holding it in Sheffield, like, in the morgue there. And, like, some people are like, you know, his family took it. I don't know. But, like I said, he's dead. Who cares where yeah. the fuck it went? I don't. All right. So, let's talk about Donald Harvey. Now, this guy was kind of a nurse, more of an orderly type dude. This was another, quote-unquote, angel of mercy, angel of death type of killer. He's uh, originally from Ohio, Butler County, uh, born in 1952. Also a very prolific serial killer, thought to have murdered um, maybe 87 people. That's how much he's kind of, like, admitted to, but they're not entirely sure. Official death toll... 36 to 57, which is still a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, you know, more than normal is is what we're saying. So he um, often gets called an angel of death killers. A lot of people uh, of this ill could do. Uh, I believe he is still alive. I think he's in prison still in Ohio. So... He gets born in Ohio. His parents moved to Kentucky when he's still a small child. Um, up in the Appalachian Mountains or whatever. Now, apparently his childhood was very normal. Um, he didn't have any of the uh, signs of like being a serial killer early on. Um, he was apparently very um, a very good student, was very uh, well-dressed, very clean, very uh, kind of a teacher's pet type kid. Um, you know, like it, all his teachers were super into him. He was super cute, like super intelligent, shit like that. Um, but also a little bit of a loner, um, kind of like a reader, you know what I mean, that type of kid. So he graduates um, from high school in the late 60s, early 70s. He was actually a very good student, but he didn't really have any um, goals, even though he was very smart. So he kind of like dropped out of school. So he eventually like moves to Cincinnati, Ohio. He gets a job at a factory. 1970, he gets laid off. And then he goes back to Kentucky and he... Um, goes to visit his grandfather who was dying in a uh, hospital. And apparently this is another thing, just like in Harold Shipman's case, where it feels like he saw one of his older relatives dying and that kind of seemed like a catalyst for some weird uh, behavior of theirs that was like kind of latent. Uh, That seems to have been the case here also. So he goes to back to Kentucky and he sees his grandfather dying and he's kind of like, yeah, I want to get in on that action. Maybe it, it kind of seemed like that kind of thing. So he's in Kentucky. He's in Marymount Hospital where his grandfather died. And he's like a lot of the nuns that work there, because I guess it was kind of like a Catholic hospital environment. Um, they kind of liked the dude. 
So, you know what I mean? They thought, what are you doing back there? There's a uh, kitten down there. Playing oh. Pookie. oh, Pookie's back Pookie's there? Pookie's back on her yeah. back. I'm fucking trying to play with this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is a cute little yeah, yeah. thing. Though. I can't resist. Yeah, I can't resist. I know. She was calling. Well, no one can resist Pokey. Yeah, she's going, Daddy. Daddy, play yeah, yeah, with yeah, me. Oh, yeah. baby. It's okay. It's okay. Because <laughs> she really wants to go outside, I think. Well, come up here and stick your butt in the camera. Everybody yeah. wants to yeah. see your butt. Yeah. Come on. She's giving us the belly. Yeah. Well, we're looking at her, so she's satisfied. She's, you're looking at me. You're looking at me. Yeah, she's yeah. like, that's okay. As like, long as you look at it. Abby wants to see my little, it's, like, foofy tummy. You guys have seen the videos. You know how it is. Well, yeah. you guys, her belly, Yeah. she's like, where she got fixed <laughs> was like, weird? she has, like, yeah. longer hair yeah, than the longer. rest of her body. So she has, like, this little, like... That's Jenny's theory. No, it's this it lot of Jenny, longer hair. It is hair. longer than, but the thing then is... Then where the rest of it is. So it looks like a little fat pouch, but it's not. I looked at other... Photographs of gray Manx kittens or cats, and they have that same length hair at the belly. Maybe they have, that's, they're a little yeah. pout, pot bellied looking little cats. Yeah, she's not pot bellied. She's not. It's fat. just the hair. It's, it's just the hair, the hair is the longer hair makes her that, pat, on her belly. belly. Right. So she looks. Yeah. She looks like she's like chonky because yeah. she's like she has this big body and then she has these little short legs. This big fucking hairy belly, but and the, a little short tail. Yeah, but the belly isn't hairy. It's just. What She's not fat. The belly isn't hair. big. It's just, I don't want to talk about the cat. Come on. Why not? Because I'm getting too drunk. Why you know what I'm talking about the cat? Okay. You're taking me down a certain path. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to talk about the cat for a half hour. Is she still in here? I've already explained the cat. Oh, she, oh I see. I I just saw her. She's the back kitty, there laying I have explained it. You know what I mean? it <laughs> She's is back there laying on her. She's you like, look at it and you go, I know what that is. Yeah. It She's cat, back it, there on her back. I have a spiritual motherfucking connection to the cat. I baby talk the cat. I'm a what? grown man. Baby talking a fucking cat. See, but I I'm, like that. Like it that. makes me feel baby. Well, me and Jenny are cat no. moms. Yeah, like, literally, okay. they are our children. Yeah, so. I don't understand it. Yeah, understand Pookie it. is like, I mean, she Just, is like my human child. I don't have a human child, so yeah, she's not, like my human child. Us baby. women, as much as we might not agree with Tom, but yeah, we've got like maternal instincts that have to go somewhere. Just a little bit somewhere. And yeah. cats... We'll fill that void. I'm Maybe. not supposed to be baby baby talking to any of these. Cats. I have I two black they're... cats. They're Go. gorgeous, and they are my children. And yeah. I'll fight anyone that says that they're not. Right, so, exactly. There you go. You bitches exactly. are embarrassing me. No, no. Making me feel feminine. No, that's not <laughs> feminine. You, it, we, that's we take, not feminine. We take responsibility. Okay, okay, for okay, this. okay, okay, okay. It's not. I don't see that as feminine at all. I, in fact, I see that as like a lot more attractive. Like dudes, dudes that like cats. Yeah. That is a b- huge like boost in Look the at estimation. The cat. Look at you, kid. That Look is a huge boost. In- she's because it's not, it. it's not. She's, she's enabling. enabling. I feel like, yeah. like she's back enabling. in the old days, like I here's the fuck, thing. No, no, fuck this shit. I gotta show the people. So, yeah, you <laughs> I gotta show, show the people. people if you I gotta show, show the people. people. Okay, like don't. Look at that. Shit. I don't know if the cords. I can't see it. They can't see it. They can't see it. They can't see it. She's just on her back, all like. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You can't see it. She's she's on full display over there. She has the cutest little face. Yeah. Can't see it. Yeah, she's like, you love me, right? When you look we at it, you understand. Life. Well, you understand. the thing about... And I was reading something about this the other day, actually. Because I feel like dudes... Maybe not so much nowadays. Dudes are more into like... Oh, it's like dogs are more masculine or whatever. I, I like dogs, too. But I'm not a dog person. I'm a cat person. I was a dog person until I got chosen by cats. Yeah. So... I'm yeah, old. I I'm, feel like I'm you have 50, to 50. you have to get the right cat yep. before you become a cat person. Because cats their personalities are a lot more disparate than dogs' personalities are. Because dogs are very much like, Oh, you're my person and I love you. But cats are um sometimes you get one that loves you and sometimes you get one that's like, Man, fuck you, motherfucker. I used to be so kind it's, of terrified by cats until right. I had my own. Because the thought of something little that could sneak up on you and you wouldn't hear them or, like, at night, like, I'd think about, oh, I could be sleeping and a thing could be staring at me and I wouldn't know it. That scared the shit out of me. But they do and it's yeah. fine. It's fine. But dogs don't do that. So I had to get used to it. Like, now, but yes, but my own cat, <laughs> my cat, I know that my cat isn't malevolent. He's not trying to kill me. So it's okay. You know. That's yeah. what I mean. I, yeah. I kind of very quickly, I got used to Pookie, like, jumping up on the bed and, yeah. like. 
coming up to me and like at five in the morning and like it's looking at my face helped, and be like, it's helped my anxiety and fear, are you fear and reflexes because I'm not so afraid of that anymore. You know? Yeah, she's jumping yeah. on play with me. It helps. Yeah, she's jumping great. And it's fine. It's like she just jumps up on the bed and it's like I feel her little feet going. Yeah. And but then if you she didn't like, have cats ever and. And that happened, you'd freak the fuck out. You'd freak the you'd fuck out. Like, what is that? I yeah. got but two drunk not. women talking about cats. We need to get back to the show. These people are going to watch Two drunk, two drunk, <laughs> two drunk cuties talking about the fucking cat. I know the fucking audience is loving this shit, but we gotta fucking keep they this are, show. Yeah. Are we? You're in number three, right? You're in three or four. Show I'm on the third. This or fourth. will be a six-hour okay. show. No, 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 probably no, will. No. We're we're coming up on four hours. All right. And for the six hours, and no, Jenny's gonna do this. The flash bulbs are not rolling in like they were before. So. Well, next week is my birthday, so hopefully people yeah, are yeah, 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 yeah. going to watch it. I'm going to have a cake It ceremony. looks like it's going to be like an urban legend kind of show, which I'm yeah. into. Yeah, it's going to be a good show. Gonna I think it's going to be fun. And like I said, we're going to have some cake on the shit. Like I'm going to have some cake, and I'll probably be so fucked I, up, I'll probably fall asleep on the I show. I understand that people like the fucking true crime stuff, and really, I, I like the paranormal stuff the best. I just think it's weird. Well, I think it's tr- crazy. I like the true crime stuff better, yeah. but I understand that like it's yeah. not as fun. Like yeah. because you feel worse when you yeah. like, make jokes. You're making jokes about because you're like, making jokes. And I kind of like, like the it, true crime and like anything that I can relate to, which is very far, yeah. few and far between. But sometimes I don't know. But mostly the true crime because it's so diabolical that like yeah. you're like, oh shit, this is so bad. I need to comment on it. It's diabolical. Is that a diabolical? Oh, you haven't done that in a while. I haven't. I, haven't I just did. What's it from? <laughs> That's from the haunting. Haunting. Haunt oh, okay. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. There was one called the diabolical. Yeah. We gotta show her some of those old haunting episodes. I got them on. You have them. I bought you a uh, yeah, bunch yeah, of. Yeah, do that shit them. after the show. Yeah. yeah okay. I'm gonna show you some of this. Well, yeah, we're not gonna do it right. Yeah. Now. Hilarious. I just don't want to diverge into some another subject. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, trying to stop it. Before they were gonna put me on that series. I decided not to go. I can open. Yeah, I can you. open. Yeah. Open so many wormholes. I don't want to yeah. be the one that opens all the wormholes. Yeah, we're. I don't they know. called me. They wanted me to do it, but I'd had to get Lois and Red all lined up, and they they really didn't. And they, they really, really, really do really it. did not want to. And do it. I, I was, they were like having a weird paranoia. They yeah, they were afraid. Like, like well, watching them. well, we we don't really want other people in our houses and shit like that. And I'm like the fuck don't you want to tell the story and they were like no nah, we really don't care about telling the story but and you know what looking back on it now what cable tv is i don't blame them cable tv but i shit. that still would have been cool for you it would have been about. cool in this i mean i know they would have like fictionalized it and, like yeah. put some like like and, ghosty like shadow shit that wasn't and, there but it's like it still would have been and cool. we're talking like season eight or nine and by that time it's already kind of a although i'm gonna scene. tell you right now like every like the travel channel like all the kind yeah. of like tlc offshoot stuff that yeah. is all paranormal now yeah but do people all watch it i don't think they do well they must because they still uh, like they're still a thing yeah so people still must watch it. So they still must have like they're advertisers. Watching it. They're watching it. But I noticed that the travel channel, yeah. the travel channel yeah. is all paranormal. paranormal shows. Yeah, and they're watching all it. They're watching shows. it in the fucking in, in the fucking convalescent homes. <laughs> or something. All the old people. I'm going to the afterlife. I'm going to the afterlife. That's what they're doing. I'm gonna haunt this shit after. Yeah, I'm gonna haunt this shit. Which I don't. I don't. I'm making fun of it, but. I have my own thank personal. Thank you, Ken. Like, I've had my own personal. Thank you, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Keep them flashbulbs rolling, Ken. You know I love You're it. You're awesome, Ken. The the he like comments on every single. Yeah. He's been watching all of our old videos. Ken's a big and he contributor. Comments on yeah, and he comments Ken, on every Ken's single one. That is fan. awesome. He's, he's a, a super he's, fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to like comment on every single one, but I don't have time. But it's like sometimes I like comment on some. But he's been like watching all of our yeah. old stuff, which I don't envy that because we've been much. around for a very long time. Thank you very much. That's Elvis thanking you. Thank you very much. Or maybe no, that was an Elvis. That was a Ryan. That was a Ryan. That was a Ryan. I feel like that was yeah. a Ryan. But uh, no, just uh, I don't think fucking cable TV is really there anymore. And, and uh, it was just another era. Really, fucking something like something like a haunting would be better. They'd probably get more hits and make more money on YouTube. I well, they they good. may be on YouTube yeah. at this point. I don't really know, but right. I feel like I most cable look. channels have a YouTube component. Yeah, I got to look into it. Like, where they shoot trailers and stuff. I just said that I noticed that Travel Channel, like, whatever that other channel is that's kind of affiliated with them. But it's I feel like everything is, like, paranormal shit nowadays. Like yeah, part of the shit. problem with the haunting is that 
they wanted me to say that it was a ghost. Which you were very really adamant about that. saying that it's not a no. ghost. You thought it was you. Yeah. I think it's RSPK. Right? Like Recurrent you didn't think that at the time, but you thought that. Not at the time, but looking back on it. And, uh, well, with what your observations, don't you confirm that? Wouldn't well, you think I that, think it's you. That's this, why I wasn't scared This place it. isn't haunted. This isn't the same place as That's why every time shit happens in this house, I'm like, yeah. Tom, knock it off. Yeah, this house isn't old. It's not. And I this know house per- is 10 years old, maybe. And the people who lived here before us are not here. I know where they are. They're alive. Yeah, they're not dead. It's a young woman. So, no. it's not. This is not a haunted place. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, that's why when it happened, like, when the fucking, you know, uh, the remote control, like, flew up the table, yeah. when the shit happened, I wasn't scared because I knew it was you doing it. Well, it's, it's a part of me. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, it doesn't... It's not my conscious mind doing it. So, it doesn't... Yeah. It's not like some... No. Paranormal Even if kind of paranormal shit. stuff happened and I was with other people, I think I'd be way less scared. I wouldn't yeah, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't... Like, by myself in a dark, like, alone in a house in right, a dark room, right, right. that's spooky. But if you had, like, two other people sitting with you or one other person, some spooky shit happened, I would be way... Like, when I first saw it, it scared the shit out of me. Yeah. But looking at her reaction to it as a grown woman who has a background, I told her what it was, and then she saw it for the first time, she's like... The normal human reaction is, oh, okay, that's what they're talking about. It's not as impressive as you fucking, as well, you Well, the first thing, like, oh, like, that's what when it is. we okay. saw it, I yeah. looked at our friends and I said, did you guys see that? And they saw it. And then I looked at you and I said, did you do that? Yeah. You know when your friends were here? Yeah. yeah. It yeah. was Dimitri. It was Dimitri. I said, did life. you do that? Yeah, because I... And I wasn't aware of it. I was like, I suspected uh, that you were done. Yeah, so it didn't then, scare oh, that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, and then and then I stood up and there was money at my feet, and I was like, "Yeah, I, yeah, I did. That's it. That's the phenomenon." Yeah, so I was kind of like, "It's just oh, a phenomenon." Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah. So it doesn't bother me because I mean, if it was a dead person that was like fucking yeah. with me from beyond the grave, yeah, that'd be freaky. But if it's just your subconscious doing shit, yeah. Now Demetri was like, "You know that, what? That doesn't was that your me. stepdad? He died the year last no, year." No, and I was like, "No, my stepdad would fucking." Plus, that was going on way, yeah, way before, before. Yeah. And, and and he wouldn't want anything would, to do with being around. I here. would not be scared of him either. That dude was trying <laughs> to get out of this world. He wanted. That's nothing, what I mean. He wanted Even if he was haunting this shit, yeah. I would not be afraid of yeah. him. So I don't yeah. really. He hated the world. He was ready to go to the afterlife. Yeah, I don't think he would hang around. No. No. I don't think he would hang around. He didn't even like my mom by that time. That's what I mean. Yeah. I don't think he would hang around. He was like, yeah, I used this up. Yeah, I tried to move and even, along. Like that's, I said, that's, even that's if he went. did hang around, that's yeah. not scary. Right, no. Because he wasn't scary when he was alive. He was a dick, though. Yeah, but that's not but he scary. Wasn't, you know, true. That's just annoying. <laughs> he had nothing to do with it. He, that's had just he, had nothing, he had nothing to do with it. There's no so I was like, if, Even if you were a ghost, you would just be an annoying there, ghost. There's no, no chance he could have been haunting me. There's no dead people haunting me. Ken says, hey, Jen, have you seen all the colors of Giallo? I have, actually. Um, not a super fantastic document. I found it, like, fascinating, but I can see how people that were not into Giallo movies, like I am, would find it boring because it was like interviews but i found it really like interesting and it it's on tubi if you guys want to if you guys are into giallo movies and you want to watch that shit actually today i started watching shutter just added dario argento directed some like uh direct to italian tv like short films like they were like an hour long and it was like a series i think there were four of them and um what was it called door into darkness or door to darkness or something like that and um so i started watching today and they're actually very good it's like the quality of it is very shitty it's like vhs quality but they're actually kind of cool if you're into twilight zone or night gallery or something like that you should probably like watch those i started watching them today so i'm just saying i might like review them later on at some point yeah sandra was going that if she um that she would pee her panties if she saw even a remote control flying. Look, it happens so fast that it's over before you realize that you're like, did that happen? 
And yeah, you're it's like, not it's, as scary yeah. as you would think it would be because it's like yeah. shit happens, and then like for a long time you're kind of like, wait, did I just like see yeah. what I think I just saw? Yeah. And then like by the time you realize that you saw the shit, it's over. It's not scary. Anymore. Yeah, but but that was that's the way it's been recently. It's not the way it was when I was it, when I was you know thirteen, fourteen. It was a lot scarier then. There was a feeling of presence and being watched. There was an impressive kind of a fucking heaviness. It was cold. It was like something out of the damn Exorcist. It was. It was. It was bad then. Um, but it just whatever it is that it is, it ages and it's not quite as impressive as it was. And just throwing the remote and giving money, the timing was fucking fantastic. You know, it happened in front of witnesses. It was nothing compared to what a few days before it had ripped off the fucking trim on top of the damn counter. On top of the cupboards in the kitchen, and, and, and threw the statues off, and of threw the fucking them. statues sure. of the horses off, and it threw them out about seven or eight feet, and it hit the ground, and they broke, but not real bad. And it made a lot of noise, man. It made more noise than you think it would have, and it happened fast. And I turned around, and it happened when my back was turned, and then I turned around and saw it, and. I looked at it and I saw that piece of trim hanging and I was and I saw the shit on the ground and I was like was it some kind of a temperature warpage maybe with moisture Well it and, pulled the nails and, out. Yeah and I went back and looked at the nail it pulled it out by they the were nails pulled out and like kind of curled It took force to do it but it was just fast you know But by the time I had analyzed it it wasn't doing it anymore and I was like uh, I know what this is Well you were and, very very mad that yeah, day Yeah I was mad that day and I was like I know what this is and then it, it didn't do it again. Not, well, it did do it again, but it didn't do that again. It started, remember that? It was opening that, doors and turning I mean, TV that, around. I was at work when that happened, but yeah. it's like, I was kind of like, that's what kind of bothered me because I was like, what if he got mad at me one day and just like chucked a brick at my head? It won't. That would be like. So be, far, it's never a, a directly a, attacked or hurt a person. It's, that's true. It's just psychokinesis. It's coming from the subconscious mind, the same thing that controls your dreams. But it's still you. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to do anything you wouldn't normally do. It does. It's not out of line with your behavior. That's true. So, I just feel like you wouldn't. It's like probably, there's rules. It's yeah. Like, it's like there's rules to it. You wouldn't like hurt me, so and I feel like it probably yeah. wouldn't do and it, that. And it's definitely everything that is done since I was a kid is it's a demonstration. It's not. It's not something to get something done. You know what I mean? It's not to fucking eliminate a person. It's not to fucking change the game. It's well, it's just, just showing. It's you a sh it's a demonstration. Yeah. It's a temper tantrum. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, and it's it like hasn't a child, done. Like... Yeah, it hasn't done anything that effectively changed anything. That's why the CIA and parts of military intelligence were interested in psychic ability abilities. They thought maybe they could use them on a battlefield, maybe precognition or. Just Which would a, be useful if they yeah, could control it. But in but my like, observation of it, you wouldn't be able to use it. I don't think it can be no, controlled not in, in the, any not in any meaningful way. No, not because in a pinch. it's like too unreliable. Yeah. I'm fucking I'm fucking throwing the show off, Luke, man. Delaying the show. We gotta get back yeah, to the show. You are. I know people want to hear that shit, but <laughs> All right. Who are we talking about? Donald Harvey. Yeah. So as I said, so he um as I said, he goes back to Kentucky at this point. Um, he goes to Marymount Hospital. And the nuns that work there, because I guess it was kind of like a Catholic hospital, they thought he was a cool dude. Nobody, like, again, nobody suspected because he seemed like a normal person. Like I said, he wasn't trained as a nurse. He was an orderly, but he did, like, nurse type of things. Like, he would, like, you know, fuck with people's catheters. He would do that kind of stuff. So, he was doing, like, nursely duties. Now, so they asked him, he had been, like, working at factories and shit like that. So, the nuns liked him there because his, uh, you know, parent was dying there. And they're like, hey, you want to work here as an orderly? And he was like, yeah, sure, why not? So, he starts working there. And he liked it because Again, like a lot of these type of killers enjoy, they um, don't have a lot of like oversight into what they're doing. And a lot of their patients are otherwise sick. And if they die or something bad happens to them, no one will necessarily notice it. 
So a lot of them like this type of environment to work within. So that's basically what he started doing. So he didn't have any like formal nursal tra nursing training, but he started working as an orderly, which included like changing bedpans, like, you know, working with people's catheters, like inserting them and whatnot, you know, giving people their medications and whatever. So he starts working there. Now the first couple weeks, nothing bad happens, you know, so no one thinks anything of it. Now, a couple weeks later though, um, they're not sure if something snapped or if it was just like something that, uh, you know, was there all along or no one really knows. Now, what actually happened was that he's on an evening shift. He has only been working at this hospital for a couple of months at this point. Now, he says that he goes into this private room and there was a guy that was in there that had suffered a stroke and he was in a bed. Now, this, now Donald said that this guy like had some kind of, um, he, he got mad or, you know, at the nurse or he had some kind of psychotic break or whatever. And he like smeared poop on him or started throwing Damn. poop around. And so Donald Harvey said that he got so angry at the dude for smearing shit on him that he just like flipped out and he like lost control. So he said that he smothered that guy. Now, after that, he says he cleaned up the patient and then he just gets in the shower, cleans everything off. And then he tells the nurses, hey, that dude in that room, he just died. And no one really thought to, you know, say anything about it because the dude was already sick. He died. It's like nobody was really like concerned about it. So three weeks after that happened, um, he decided that he was going to commit yet another murder. So what he decided to do, there was this elderly woman who was there and he decided that he was going to disconnect her oxygen tank. So uh, apparently he did that. And as the weeks went by and no one really seemed to catch on to what he was doing, I guess he decided that he was just going to roll with it and start murdering more people because he was getting off on it at this point. Um, I don't know if it was because he was bored or if he just like always wanted to murder people and was like now being given the opportunity or whatever. But so he starts doing that. Now, the unusual thing about Donald Harvey is that a lot of these medical type killers, angels of mercy, angels of death, whatever you want to call them, usually use poisoning. Like they will inject something into their like IV bags or something like that. But this guy seemed to have been into experimenting with different um, methods. He would like put a plastic bag over your head and smother you. He would uh, give you excess morphine and your IV drip. He would use like different drugs, like experimenting, like what would happen. So he would do all different things, like trying to see what would happen. Uh, you know, so he, he kind of seemed like he was into trying out different ways of fucking doing the shit. So at some point it seemed like one dude that was in this hospital like gets in a fight with Donald Harvey. Now this patient said that Donald Harvey was trying to kill him, which was probably true. And so this patient says that he picked up his bedpan and like knocked Donald Harvey out with it. Which, good for that guy. But what apparently happened after that was that Donald Harvey woke up from being unconscious. And then after that, he sneaks into that patient's room. And then he took a coat hanger and stuck the coat hanger, like, through the catheter. Like, Ooh. he pulled it all through the catheter and punctured, like, the dude's whatever the catheter was going into. Damn. So the dude got an infection and died but nobody would have thought that was a murder because it was just like an infection. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. So that's why these type of killers get away with this shit for so long because, 
you know, uh, to be fair, like a lot of the people that they're victimizing are people that are already in the hospital that already have other issues. And if they die or some weird shit happens, everyone's like, well, you know, they were sick. Like, shit happens. Like, nobody would really think that there was, like, a nurse or an orderly or something that was just being an asset. And it was just, like, going around killing people. But that's <laughs> what this dude was doing. So the dude actually ended up uh, dying a couple of days later from the infection from what this asshole, like, shoved up his catheter. Dang. So, you know. Now, <clears throat> 1971, um, apparently Donald Harvey gets arrested for drunken disorderly because he was trying to, like, burgle someplace. He was, like, trying to, like, break into some shit. He was burgling. So yeah. they start questioning him about the burglary, which seemed like a minor uh, crime at the time. But because he was drunk, he started ranting about all the murders he had committed, which... Whatever. It's something that you do if you're drunk. He's like, hey, by the way, I killed all these people. So you better check into that. And the police were like, hmm, interesting. Okay, so maybe we should do that. So they start, like, looking into the shit. So they start questioning him about it, but they couldn't really find any, like, substantial evidence. Because that's another thing about these medical type of murders is that there's not a lot of physical evidence left behind because a lot of times you know, the people are elderly or they die or whatever, and then, like, they're buried or they're cremated, and no one really thinks that they were murdered, so they don't really have any reason to exhume the body or, like, look for any, you know, they don't look for any, like, poisoning or anything like that. So a lot of times they get away with it. So that's kind of what happened in this situation. There was no, like, physical evidence to back it up. So he goes to trial a couple weeks later for the burglary charges. He pleaded guilty to uh, petty theft and pays a fine for that. And then because he figures, well, maybe the heat's getting too bad on the shit. Like, I think I may have drunkenly committed, like, you know, admitted to a bunch of murders and maybe that was bad. So maybe I should go join the Air Force. Damn. So that's what he did. He went and joined the Air Force. So he was in the Air Force for less than a year. Um, he gets a general discharge in 1972. Um, they didn't really list any grounds for the discharge. Um, but it's speculated that maybe his superiors had found out about him confessing to, like, the murders that he committed earlier. It's like, yeah, we don't want to, like, deal with that shit, so let's just, let's just get him out of here. We don't really want to do it. So I don't know if that's true, but that's, like, what the speculation is. So he decides in 1972, in the summer, that like after he gets out of the uh, Air Force, that he's like, uh, he commits himself to the VA Medical Center in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, because I guess he feels like he's having mental problems and he can't like deal with it anymore. So he stays in there for about a month or so. And then um, he, like, admits himself again, like, after they let him out. And then he uh, tries to kill himself, and he messed that up. And then he gets uh, brought back in. They put him in restraints. They do electroshock shock therapy, all the shit they were doing in the early 70s. Um, and I guess they thought that he was fixed. So they let him out in late... 1972 they let him out of the hospital now he goes like the next couple months after he gets out of the hospital he's trying to get his shit back together now he eventually gets work as a part-time nurse's aide at a hospital in lexington kentucky now he also gets another nursing job at another hospital good samaritan hospital now he had both of these jobs concurrently until August of 1974. And then he also gets a job as a telephone operator in another clerical job at another hospital um, in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Now, during this time, supposedly, he didn't kill anybody because he said that he was so busy that he couldn't really, you know, commit the time to killing people like he was doing. Now... The thing is, though, he couldn't really stop himself because I feel like it was kind of 
I'm just going to kill people and that's all there is to it. So September of 1975, he moves back to Cincinnati. He gets a job uh, at the Cincinnati VA hospital and he's working over the night shift where he's not really supervised. <clears throat> So he's just like doing a little bit of everything. He's like, even though, like I said, he didn't really have the c credentials. He wasn't trained as a nurse. He was just kind of like an orderly. So he was like doing nurse's aid stuff. He was like doing just whatever <coughs> jobs that like people needed to be done. So he's like working on the night shift. He doesn't really have any oversight. And so over the next 10 years, they think that he probably murdered at least... 15 patients working at this particular hospital. And he kept a very detailed diary about the killings that he, on each person, because he was super into it, apparently. And he would use different methods each time. He would either use suffocation, like he would take like a plastic bag and like put it over their face. Um, one of the victims, he actually poisoned them with rat poison. He would, like, put it in their food. Um, he would also put, like, arsenic and cyanide into their orange juice. He would put cyanide into their IV tube or inject it into their butt. Damn. Which was another thing that he did. Um, yeah, so 10 years he was able to, like, kill a lot of people without anyone really being the wiser. Um, but he kept, as I said, a detailed journal of what he was doing, like a lot of serial killers do because they get off on reading about the details about the shit. Now, over the years that he was committing these crimes, somehow he managed to, um, he managed to have like 30 pounds of cyanide in his house Dang. which i guess he was stealing like a little bit from the hospital like bit yeah. by bit and he was like storing it 30 pounds like in his house lot. somewhere yeah 30 pounds yeah. of cyanide 30 pounds mm. so he would like and he kind of had like a little chemistry lab at home he would like mix up some cyanide some arsenic he would like bring the shit and he would like put in a little vial and then he would bring it into work like you would bring your fucking sandwich for lunch and then He'd be like, hey, who, what patient am I going to give this to you today? And he would do that kind of shit. So he would kind of like put it in their food or put it in their gastric tube or whatever. He would do that kind of shit. Now, at this point, it was the early 1980s. Um, he moves in with uh, a boyfriend whose name was Carl, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Hellweller, 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 something like that. Now, this boyfriend that he moved into in with he apparently also started poisoning this dude because he just couldn't help himself, I guess. So he used the justification. He's like, well, I thought my boyfriend was cheating on me. So I thought I would start poisoning him because that's a thing that you do. So he would start putting like little bits of arsenic in his boyfriend's food so that the dude would be too sick to leave the apartment and cheat on him. Hmm. So that was kind of like how he kept him. Kept at bay chased. or whatever. Kept, right. Kept him chased. So, yeah. So, he's, like, putting poison in there. Now, also, another thing that he did was he <clears throat> got into a fight with a female neighbor of theirs, and he also decided he was going to poison that bitch as well. So, he started, like, fucking giving him, hey, have this drink. I made this tea for you or something. And he put, like, fucking poison in that shit as well. Um, she was actually... She didn't die, but she almost did. Like, they didn't really, like, they had a diagnose, like, later on, like, what, she just thought it was an illness, because it was arsenic, not, I'm not saying that this is, like, something that you should do, but arsenic, if you give it in small enough doses over a long enough period of time, it does mimic a natural illness, and unless there is some reason, they will not check for it. So, yeah, but that's modern kind blood. of... Modern blood work will get you. Don't try it. Well, now. yeah. Like, don't try it now. But yeah. back, in those days, back in those days, that was kind of like something yeah. that a lot of people would do. Just because if you did it over a long enough period of time, no one would think to check for it. Because everyone would just think that you died of a natural illness. Because it mimicked the symptoms. And that's kind of like what they were doing. He also, like another female neighbor that he had a fight with, he also laced her shit with, like, he gave her a drink and it had hepatitis in it damn that worked 
It had hepatitis in it. Yeah, I guess so. Huh? She didn't die, but she got like super sick. And then like another neighbor that he had like all these neighbors like don't yell at this dude yeah. because he'll just poison you. Another like those people didn't die, but he had another neighbor that he was like, okay, fuck you, bitch. I don't like you because you're like complaining about me. I don't know what the deal was, but like you know, but so oh my dog pooped in your yard and all like it. But he decided he was going to put arsenic in something that she had made, like a pie or something. And she fucking died from that shit. Damn. So, hmm. just goes to show. Yeah, so she died um, like a week later. So, at this point, too, he has a fight. This is in 1983. He has a fight with his boyfriend's parents. And he decided, well, I'm going to poison them, too. So, he starts putting arsenic in their food, also. So his boyfriend's dad has a stroke and goes to the hospital. And then this Donald Harvey goes to visit the boyfriend's dad in the hospital and then puts fucking arsenic in some pudding that he was eating in the hospital. And that dude died. Now, the boyfriend's mom, Margaret, also... He, like, poisoned her a bunch of times. She kept going in and out of the hospital, like, at, like various illnesses. Now, he kept trying to kill her, but she, like, stubbornly refused to die. So, she actually lived. The dad did die, though. So, in January of 1984, the boyfriend is like, fuck this shit, and he is out of there. He breaks up with him. And then the next couple of years, Donald decides he's going to try and kill the boyfriend the same way. So he tries to, like, keep giving him, like, poisonous drinks and stuff. And um, that didn't really, like, work out. He also tried to kill a female friend of his boyfriend's, like, with poison. That didn't work out either. Um, but he did actually get his boyfriend to go to the hospital at one point with, like, all the shit that he was giving him with, like, poison and stuff. Now, in 1985, summer of 1985... Security guards finally noticed that this motherfucker was, like, leaving his job and was acting kind of weird. So they decided that they were going to search the bag that he was carrying. It looks like a gym bag. So they go through it. Inside the bag, they find a thirty-eight caliber pistol. They also find uh, a bunch of hypodermic needles, a bunch of uh, surgical scissors, a bunch of gloves, a cocaine spoon a bunch of medical books to occult books and a biography of a serial killer named Charles Sobrage. Hmm. So a little fishy, you know, just saying. So then they're like, well, we don't have enough to like hold you on, like to arrest you, but um, you can either quit or we're going to fire you. Mm -hmm. So basically they were like, he's like, okay, well I'll quit. Now he only got fined. $50 $50 for carrying a weapon on this. I mean, at this point, this is a VA hospital. So this is like federal property. They only find him $50 for carrying a gun and all this other shit on like this property. Yeah, they're asking about Sophie. Let me find out what's going on with Sophie. Where'd she go? I don't know. She might be fucking sleeping or... Did she fall asleep somewhere? I don't know. All right. Well, I'm just going to keep talking. So... Because of this, like, nobody thought, I mean, this was the 70s, to be fair. No one thought this was, like, a huge red flag. Even though he's got a gun, he's got occult books, he's got, like, all this kind of weird shit in his gym bag. So everyone's like, well, that's weird, but, eh, it's the 70s. What are you going to do? So they find him, like, 50 bucks for the gun. But other than that, they were just kind of like, eh, we don't really have anything to hold him on. Which, fair enough. So they didn't. Um, so they didn't open an investigation. Sophie's in bed. <laughs> Is she really? Yeah, she's like, I don't feel so good. Oh, no. Yeah, I fucking love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> we take it for granted that we're so old and we're, like, so inured to, like, yeah, alcohol. Inured to, yeah, yeah she's like, oh, man. I'm Whatever. Right. I, she, could, I could use another drink, she, honestly. She's in bed with the fucking... Here, fucking drink hers. She hardly didn't drink any of it. Oh, okay. We'll That's, uh... That. Just really? pour it into your drink. That's, um... A uh, vodka and cranberry. There you go. Yeah, she fucking... I can't have liquor go to waste. 
a can of liquor go to Yeah, waste. she's I was like, I was like, what you doing? She's like, oh man, I'm fucked up. These youngsters, man. And I was just like, what? She's like, I sent you a text. You didn't see it? And I was like, no, I'm doing a show. <laughs> This is one of the funniest things that has ever happened on this show. <laughs> Fucking lightweight. I am almost 50. Yeah. And like, am I still coherent? I'm coherent, Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I think the show's good. I mean, I thought I was coherent. Yeah. I still got one more game. No, I'm listening time. to the show. I'm going, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, so they don't investigate. Like, they don't open an investigation of this motherfucker. Because like I said, it's the 70s. Like, yeah, you have a gun in your bag. That's like, not good. But, eh. We don't have, like, any other shit to hold you on. So they didn't. Now, seven months later, you guys, seven months. So this is February 1986. So he gets another job, because obviously he got fired from that place. So he gets another job at another hospital. Now, he's like a part-time nurse's aide. This is at Drake Memorial Hospital in Cincinnati. Now, because of the 70s... um. His new, this new hospital didn't know anything about that shit that had happened at the last hospital because that's evidently not important. That's not something that you need to know. So all the like shit in his like employee folder and stuff were like, yeah, this dude's awesome. It's fine. Not, he's not killing anyone. Who would ever think that? So he gets, uh, he starts out as part time, but then he moves on to full time because everyone's talking about how awesome he is. Now, over the next year, a little more than a year, actually, he murdered another 23 people. 23 people. And it was all, like, different ways. He would either disconnect their life support or he would, like, inject, like, air bubbles into their veins, like, with a needle or whatever. Or he would suffocate them. Or he would inject them with arsenic or cyanide. Or he would inject them with... Petroleum-based cleansers. Damn, nasty. Jesus. Yeah. Alex is going, I told you this episode was going to break new ground. It took out a host. <laughs> it did. <laughs> These youngsters, man. Ken's going, she needs they a can't snack, hang with, They can't hang with the old people. I can't make a snack, man. I got they a fucking hang with show, the old man. I got, we got at least another hour to go, don't we? I'm almost done with this case, and then we got just one more. Yeah, and that's another hour at the rate you go. Well, if you don't like interrupt me, I'm not interrupting. Yeah, I'm not interrupting. If you don't interrupt me every five seconds, I'll be able to fucking. hmm. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, the authorities didn't actually get suspicious of this motherfucker until 1987, which, if you're keeping track, is many years after he first started working as. That was a year I graduated from high school. Yeah, I actually started high school that year. I graduated in 1990. Because mm-hmm. high school used to be three years. I think mm-hmm. it's four years now, right? It was four years when I was in it. No, it was only three years when I was there. Huh, weird. Because was elementary school was six years, and then you had junior high, which is three years, and then high, high school, school when I was in years. was ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. No, I only, but the high school I, w- I went to was only tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Okay. Junior high was seventh, eighth, ninth. Okay. But I feel like, thank you, Ken. There, take that. I'm glad Sophie is okay. She's okay. She's just... Yeah, she's okay. She's just... I guess she just wandered off she's and like, just... I'm, just sp- I'm not feeling good. I'm she wandered off and... World <laughs> spinning. Yeah, her fucking world spinning. Man. Fucking lightweights. Can I... Oh. Yeah. She's I, like, rem- I don't feel good. I was going to say I remember what it was like to be that young, but I don't. Yeah. I don't. She's not I, that young. She, how old is she, actually? She's, she's almost 30. I think she's about 30. Well, still young enough to be my yeah. kid, though. She's yeah. still young enough to be my kid. Yeah, if you had, if you popped out a child at twenty. Yeah, but that's a, that's that. an age that a lot of yeah. people. My mom had me when she was eighteen. Yeah, that was back in the day, though. That was back in the day. My mom had me at twenty-two. My mom was eighteen. But that was the fucking sixties. Yeah. Late sixties. Yeah, my mom had me in nineteen seventy-two. I was born in nineteen seventy-two. Next week's mm-hmm. my birthday. Everybody has to come by for my birthday next yeah, week. Yeah, next week. Next Saturday. Yep. That is my actual birthday. So We're going to have the cake ceremony and everything. I'm going to be 48 years yeah. old. Yeah. God, I'm so old. Yeah. I never thought that I would be that old. That's young. That's young still. How am I still alive? They got people in their 80s and 90s and 70s and shit. You're young still. When I was a kid, I thought yeah. that I would be dead by 35. That's what everybody thinks. It's not true, though. I don't know why I thought that. Like, I wasn't a drug addict or anything like that. I just thought, well, I'm not yeah. going to be alive then, so what the fuck do I care? 
But yeah, so it's it's very weird to me to still be alive at this age. But yeah, so so he's going around doing this shit, like experimenting, like, hey, I'm gonna inject some air bubbles into this bitch's tube. I'm gonna do this, that, and the other, because you know some people are the worst. So as I said, the authorities didn't get suspicious of this motherfucker until 1987. Now, the reason they got suspicious was because there was this one guy, and his name was John Powell. Now, he, I believe he had actually been, an, he wasn't like an old person. He was a younger person, but he had been in a motorcycle accident. But he had been in a coma for a very long time. But he had started to get better. Like, he had been in a coma for many months, but he had started to get better. But then all of a sudden, like, he started to get worse, and everyone thought that was a little bit weird. So he actually ended up dying and then they did an autopsy and then the coroner who was doing the autopsy was like cutting open the things and he's like, oh, I smell almonds, which if anyone has read any Agatha Christie, any crime fiction, anything like that, if you smell almonds, that means poison. That means cyanide, motherfucker, Uh, uh, or arsenic. arsenic. Yeah, it it also smells like uh, almonds too. So, at this point, they're like, well, okay, well, there's some fishy shit going on. So, they decided to uh, investigate. Now, they investigated all of the dude's family, and they're just like, look, nobody had a motive for killing the guy. So, they're like, okay, well, who was on duty, like, when he died? So, then they started asking around, and they found out that this dude, Donald Harvey, who worked on the fucking, you know, uh, worked in the hospital, had a... A uh, nickname of Angel of Death just because people seemed to die while he was on shift. Hmm. That's hmm. a little strange, yeah. isn't it? So they thought that was a little weird, so they started looking into it. So they started doing the investigation. Now, in April of 1987, they get a search warrant on his apartment, and they found in his apartment, I mean, you guys, if you're going to be a serial killer, just a pro tip. Don't keep all this shit in your fucking house because they mm-hmm. searched his apartment. They found big jars of arsenic, big jars of cyanide, big books on poisoning people, big books on the occult. And they also found a bunch of journals where he talked about his very detailed accounts of all the murders that he had committed, which he kept in his apartment like a stupid dumbass. So they arrested him on... Only one count, because I guess that was all the shit that they had, uh, you know, evidence for at the time. Now, he decides he's going to plead not guilty by reason of insanity. He gets held under a $200,000 bond. However, the evidence against him was, like, you know, growing at this point. So they start looking into other mysterious deaths at the hospital. Now, he wanted to avoid the death penalty, as a lot of these dudes do. This was Ohio. They did have a death penalty. And he was like, well, I don't want to get executed, even though I killed all these people. Mm. So, 1987, they sit him down. He's 35 years old at the time. He confessed to 33 murders over the following, uh, over the previous 17 years. Now, as they started questioning him over the subsequent days, he ended up um, confessing to 70. Damn. Which I don't think really they had any reason to doubt. I mean, this type of murder, it's hard to kind of pinpoint because, like I said, some of these people might have just died anyway. It's like, you know, natural causes, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you inject an air bubble into somebody's catheter or something like that, it's like it's very hard to catch you. So I do feel like they might have killed way more people than they admitted to because Mm. maybe they don't even remember. But they do think that maybe this dude did as many as 70. Now, they uh, decided they're like, well, let's give him like the psychological to maybe he's just making it up. Do they have to do like the psychological test? Now, they give him like three different psychologists, psychiatrists, whatever, like give him the fucking you know, insanity test or whatever. They all say pretty much um, he's sane, even though he's probably compulsive and he should never be let out because he basically deals with his stress and tension by killing people. So, um, not good. 
So basically, they take him to, uh, he goes to court in August of 1987. He pled guilty to 24 counts of aggravated murder, four counts of attempted murder, one count of felonious assault. Four days later, the 25th guilty plea earned him a total of four consecutive 20 years to life sentences, and he also got a $270,000 fine. So, um, he ends up going to, uh, three life sentences, three terms of seven to 25 years. Um, so they had so much shit against him that they're like, they had all these other investigations. It was like, fuck it. Well, he's just going to prison like forever. So they didn't actually end up giving him the death penalty, but he's basically in jail like forever. They asked him... Um, the Columbus Dispatch did an interview with him and they said, like, so why do you kill people? And he said, and this is a quote, people controlled me for, t for 18 years and then I controlled my own destiny. I controlled other people's lives, whether they lived or died, I had that power to control. And then the person asked them, what right did you have to decide that? And he said, after I didn't get caught for the first 15 I thought it was my right. Yeah. I appointed myself judge, prosecutor, and jury, so I played God. So I guess he thought that because he didn't get caught for the first 15, that, he could do it, that yeah. God said it was okay. And so he could just keep doing it. I'm not sure it. he's saying God said it was okay. He just realized the that universe, was the implication. That the was the universe implication. says I can do what I want. That I can do it. Well, because clearly yeah. I didn't get caught. Because I haven't been caught. So apparently, like, right. the universe says it's all right. Yeah. That's Which, yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't know why the why does the universe why does the universe why do you think that the universe cares about you particularly? I don't think he's saying that. That I, mystifies. I, what I think he's saying is that the universe is indifferent, so therefore I can do what I want, and I'm not indifferent. I understand what he's saying. I don't agree with that application of what he's saying. Uh, no, but I if understand you did, what he's he would saying. Be a psychopath. Yeah, I understand exactly kind of what he's saying. He's just misapplying it. Basically, what he's saying is, is like, I do what I do, and it works. So, therefore, that's how shit therefore, is. Therefore, it's okay. That's, no, not that it's okay. You're trying to pass a moral judgment. Well, no, I'm it just is, saying that's what I do think what I do, works. and the shit works, and, and it continues to work. So, therefore, that's how things are. There are some people that don't need any kind that's of moral. That's a moral. little, that's an offshoot of the naturalistic fallacy. Yeah. Well, just because that's the way, like... It seems like that's what things are like, so that's yeah. how things ought to be. Yeah, but I understand what it, what 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 they're saying. I, I get that, but that's I understand what up. they're saying Don't because do um, you know a lot of times moralism and trying to make things right or wrong has a lot to do with opinion. Everyone has their different opinions about what's right or wrong. Some some people say I don't really care what these people are saying is right and wrong. I'm only you know I only care about what's actually happening, and the things that actually happen. You're shading a little bit into like solipsism there. No, it could also it could also be in like like a universal indifference. This is how things are. You know what I mean? But the that, thing about it is that, well, excuse me for a second, but Go Glowing ahead. Turtle says, where did you get that Frank Frazetta Conan poster? Sophie. That was it. Sophie, well, she was here. Yeah, she's fucking knocked out. She got drunk and she like, <laughs> wandered she's, off. And she's in the bed. We didn't know what happened to her. And they're like, where'd she go? And then, like yeah. 20 minutes later, she's like, oh, we're we so like, all right. She was, I she was here you. earlier. She was right here. Yeah, if earlier in the show, it. you'll see her. She sent that to us for a present. Yeah. It's actually on canvas. It's not, like, not it's even a canvas. poster. Yeah, it's it's like super poster. awesome. Yeah, it's called like the, what's it called? The Barbarian. The Barbarian, yeah. Yeah, it's actually He couldn't call it Conan because of the like rights issue. It's called the Barbarian. It's me and Jenny. <laughs> oh well I'm just laying down there like you understand, I, I you understand, wanna, you understand I want to stand up on that it's too. about I fucking, do that it's too. about fucking masculinity it's about masculine dom just 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 like dominant knock like that, that shit off well it's not the same kind of dominance you're thinking it's not a bad dominance it's just strength and then you got some women worshipping him at his feet going that's right this is my man that's what that's all that's all that is whatever a lot of women just that's that's how they are. 
That's natural. Well, good for them. I, I got my own shit going on. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but a lot of women, that's how they are. But uh, They don't yeah. want a weak man. They, like, they want a strong man. And I'm just saying that's just how it is. Now, weak and strong, that's open to interpretations. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's it, doesn't a, necessarily, a it doesn't necessarily mean physically strong. Or and like I said, I don't yeah. really like enjoy the uh, the thing of like oh the strong man and like oh it's oh, look women at me. no like, no 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 like I got my own shit I can do me, I, I you, can do my own shit. Let me tell you guys, without, something. I'm, I'm telling this between me and you guys right there. Women do not like fucking betas. They just don't. They don't like men that they want to take care of in that way. That's just not. That's just not how they are. Women like men that they can respect. That. They like respectable men. If they're not respectable, then you wouldn't be with them, would you? Well, you don't... Also, you don't like men that are going to, like, take over the shit and just that's be true. like... Well, that's not respectable, right? Yeah, and they'll just right. be like, well, I'm awesome and you're just down there, like, that's not, worshiping but me. But that's not what I'm talking about. And you don't have your own shit going that's on. You're not, not a person. Yeah, but you're reading into it and that's... You're just like, uh, see, you know... That's typical. That's typical that women do, women do that. That is not what was said, and that's not what's implied. I don't know. That's kind that's, of what that's, that okay. painting is implying, though. No, that's Conan. I know. Well, he's being himself. He can't call. Yeah, he's Conan being himself. He's got his fucking sword relations. and all kinds of shit. And then this woman is just kind of like down in the bottom, fucking just going, "Look at this motherfucker." That's all that is. That's all it is. You're reading too much into it. We don't need y'all, though. Need isn't isn't a part of human life. It's it's want, it's desire. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't you know, really need. Have you don't. To. Nobody needs anybody. That's true. Okay. That's nobody true. needs anybody. So, and if so, anybody needs to hear that, you don't need anybody. You can just yeah. Do, just you don't do need your own anybody. Shit. Right. Do your own shit. Right. And like, don't worry about if other people like it. Don't worry about it. just do right. what you want to do. And and do Conan Conan definitely did his own shit. He yeah, definitely did his own shit. shit. And Don't worry about it. And, 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 and what the picture says, if you understand the legends of Conan, Conan was doing his own shit, and he was trying to do the fucking right thing. He was a barbarian, but he was a noble savage. It goes back to the old noble savage thing. And all the picture, the meaning of the pictures is that women found that kind of man desirable. That's all that is. And you, you, well, you back in the day when women didn't have any rights. Sure. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you, you, fucking something else. You are just something else. Well, you never had to live through that. This shit, is the know? fucking. This these stories are taking place in a primitive world. I know. I when there's no government at all, it's primal. That's all it is. You're reading into it too much. It's typical feminism stuff. Well, you want to go back to that shit though. I'm already in it. You know me. That's where yeah, I came from. Yeah, you have from. fun with that. Uh, you know, that's the way it was. <laughs> you know, just saying. Yeah, and it's not like that anymore. And I would not want to go back to yeah, that well, because I would be you're in saying, big trouble. You're saying it's not like that. I think it still is like that. that you have fun with that. I think I'm it still have, is like that. I think it's just a thinly veiled. I'm gonna go fucking, over here and do my own fucking shit okay. then. All right, because, go ahead. This is thin. because yeah. Okay. So, somebody asked me a question and I forgot. I don't know. I forgot what it was. Tom made the drinks tonight. He, he always yeah. makes the drinks. Yeah, I fucking knocked I one of them out I can't believe already. that Sophie wandered off. Yeah, I'm fucking... I'm going to talk to her about it. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to get a talking to tomorrow. She's going to get a talking to. Where did Pookie go, by the way? I don't know. Oh, I, put her out front. I put her out front. Oh, she's outside? Yeah, okay. She's out front. We got she's one more front. case we got to talk about. Okay. So, this motherfucker, like I said... So they put him in jail, and he was just like, well, I didn't get caught after the first 15 people I killed, so I figured, he didn't say, like, I figured it was okay, but he just said kind of like, well, I figured that it was, like, sanctioned. It was kind of, that was the implication. So he thought that it was all right because he hadn't got caught, so he was just kind of like, well, I figured that this was what I was supposed to do, so I just kept doing it. Let me go see the cat. Basically. Go. So that's what he did. So... This motherfucker, so he, they put him in prison. He is going to have his first scheduled parole hearing in 2047, when he will be 95 years old. Hopefully he will be dead by then. Um, I have a picture of him somewhere. Where did it go? Here he is. Yep. That motherfucker right there. I had some like pictures of other people, but I forgot to share them. So yeah. He'll probably be dead by then. He's not going to live till 95. 
All right, so the last person we're going to talk about, now that I'm like all alone, is Beverly Ellett. She is also called the Angel of Death, as a lot of these types of killers are. Now, this woman, um, this was the most recent of the cases that I'm talking about. And this woman, um, she, she's a piece of shit. Let's not, you know, dally about that. But this woman also had some really um, significant psychological issues. I feel like she had... She was one of the few people that was diagnosed with Munchausen syndrome, as in, you know, I'm going to hurt myself for attention. But she was also diagnosed with Munchausen syndrome by proxy, as in I'm going to hurt other people for attention for myself. Um, so she was diagnosed with that as well. And that is very, like, unusual for the same person to be diagnosed with both of those things, because that's not usually a thing that happens. So she is one of the few people that was. Now, trigger warning, this woman killed uh, children, babies, like little bitty kids, like 11 year old kids, little babies, all kind of. So this is very upsetting. It's probably like kind of shitty that we're ending on this shit on this case. But this was the most recent one. So. So this woman, Beverly Allett, she, um, she kind of like um, showed some worrying tendencies when she was still fairly young. Now, she had three siblings, um, but when she was growing up, one of the things that she would do, and this is very common of people that have Munchausen, Munchausen syndrome, is that they always try to like draw attention to themselves by faking injuries or illnesses. So one thing that she would do when she was growing up was that she would always like put um, casts on herself or she would cut herself or something like that just to get attention because that was something that, and as she got older into her teenage years, she also kind of got a little bit um, overweight. So I feel like that was something that was, um, you know, working against her in the sense that she was not getting the positive attention that she wanted. So she figured that she would just get any attention. So she would like wrap her arm up in casts. She would do shit like that just to like get attention. I have a picture of her as well. Where is it? There it is. That's her right there. So she would, um, usually like go to doctors she would like try to get she's like look my arm is broken look i'm cutting myself look i'm doing this on the other thing so she would kind of like you know she was very attention seeking when she was uh, a child spent a lot of time in and out of hospitals um she also faked i'm not entirely sure how she did this but she faked um that her appendix was messed up and she actually ended up getting it removed because I guess she was pretty successful in saying that the that her appendix was hurting her, so they took it out because that was something that they did. So she got her appendix removed, even though there was apparently nothing wrong with it. Also, another thing that she uh, did when she was a teenager that was kind of noted at the time was that she did something called doctor hopping, which was when one doctor that she went to would say, hey, I think this girl is just coming here and like acting like she's sick just to get attention as soon as a doctor would say that she would go to a different one so she would like she was pretty savvy to that kind of shit so as she got a little bit older she wasn't like a super great student but she decided she was going to train as a nurse so while she was um doing her nurses training she um when she was in nurses school now nobody proved this but they thought that maybe she did some shit like she was um, training in like a nursing home with like a lot of elderly people and somebody, not saying who, somebody smeared some shit on the walls. So in hindsight, it might have been her because that seems like some shit she would have done. But at the time they couldn't prove it. But it uh, seemed like something. 
So there was also the fact that she kept calling in sick all the time. She was always sick. So she was like out a lot of the time. She always had something wrong with her. Um, she also had a boyfriend at the time who complained later about her being um, super aggressive, maybe being um, abusive towards him, both emotionally and perhaps physically. So this kind of came to light after. Now, she has like a bad, you know, track record of, uh, you know, her training job. She's kind of like absent a lot of the times because she's quote unquote sick all the time, you know, and like kind of weird behavior. But at the time there was like a, um, a shortage of nurses. So they were kind of desperate for, you know, nurses to work anywhere. So she ends up getting, even though she passed it, like just barely scraped by like her fucking, she was like a D student essentially. So she scrapes by, she ends up getting like a six month contract at this, uh, hospital, the Grantham and Kestevin hospital in Lincolnshire in 1991. And like I said, she was like bottom of her class, but they were desperate because they're like, we need nurses, um, especially in the children's ward. It's very understaffed. So she ended up getting a job there, unfortunately. Um, when she got a job there, there were only two trained nurses on the day shift and only one trained nurse on the nights. So like I said, you can see how they were like looking for people and they weren't super worried about their credentials because her grades were not super high. So she gets a job there. Now, in early 1991, here comes her first victim. This is a seven month old baby named Liam Taylor. Now he gets admitted to this ward four at this hospital, which is like the children's ward. Now he has a chest infection. The creepy thing about Beverly Allett was that um, she was like really nice to the families of these babies that were brought in. And some of the families were so grateful to her for the help she provided that they would get like, in one case, they made her like a godmother hmm. of their like surviving kids and stuff, even though she was like, essentially, she was killing their children, but she was so, she seemed so dedicated and so nice and everything that they didn't really think to question it, which is like really, really frightening to me. So basically, so this little boy, see seven months old, Liam Taylor, he gets admitted to with a chest infection. Now Beverly comes in and she's like, no, it's totally fine. We're going to take care of him and everything. Now her par the parents go home. Now they come back and then she says to them, well, he had a respiratory emergency, but he got better. Um, she volunteers for like an extra shift. And she's like, I'm going to watch over him. Everything will be fine. Now, the parents, like, also stayed the night, as they would, because he was just a little baby. Now, before it was midnight, he has another, like, respiratory crisis. And he kind of comes through. He's okay. And then Beverly gets left alone with him over the night. Now, over the night, he gets worse and worse and worse. And then he gets like really pale. He starts getting red blotches on his face. And then Beverly like calls the emergency resuscitation team. Now, the strange thing, like nobody thought anything like super weird about this at the time. But they're like, well, normally when somebody in the children's ward or in any ward really like starts getting close to death or something really bad is happening, like an alarm will go off, right? It's like, you know, to summon all the nurses to the ward. Well, that didn't really happen in this uh, situation. So they thought that was a little weird, but they weren't really thinking about it at the time because it was like a baby. They had to save it. So this baby had stopped breathing. He had a cardiac arrest. And then he like, basically he had such bad brain damage that he was only alive because of the life support machines. And at this stage, the doctors told the parents, like, look, he's brain dead. It's like, you have to, like, you know, 
turn off the machines or you have to make the decision to turn off the machines. So they finally did that because there was no chance that he would recover. So they basically said that like the cause of death was heart failure. Now, this was the first murder that they know of that Beverly Allen was uh, associated with. So they didn't think to question her at the time. They're just like, well, the boy, you know, it was, he was an anomaly. He died of heart failure. You know, it happens. So they didn't really think anything about it. Now, a little over two weeks later, there was another kid that came in named Tim- Timothy Hardwick. Now, he was 11 years old. He had cerebral palsy. And he gets brought into Ward 4. He had had an epileptic epileptic seizure in uh, March of 1991. Now, Beverly takes over his care. And she is alone with the child for a long time. Because, like I said, you know, the ward was understaffed. She was one of the few nurses that was working. Now, she's with him alone for a time. And then she summons an emergency team because something has gone wrong. Um, they came in and they found him that like, he didn't have a pulse. He was turning blue, like he was suffocating. So they were not able to revive him and he died. So they couldn't really come to a conclusion. They did an autopsy, but they couldn't really come to a conclusion about like what the cause of death was. So they basically just like blamed it on his epilepsy, which he did actually have. Her third victim was a one-year-old girl named Kaylee Desmond. She got admitted to Ward 4, the children's ward, um, in early March of 1991. She had a chest infection. Now, she seemed to be getting a little bit better, but her parents were kind of worried, so they brought her into the, uh, you know, the children's ward to be looked at. Now, the kid was in there for five days. Beverly was taking care of her. While Beverly was taking care of her, she went into cardiac arrest. This was the same bed in which Liam Taylor had died earlier. Now, the resuscitation team came in, like, after Beverly called them, and they were able to um, revive her. Um, But she, and she got transferred to another hospital, which probably saved her life, honestly. Now, while they were looking at her at this other hospital, they found something unusual. They found, like, um, a weird, like, puncture hole, like, under her, in her armpit, which they thought was a little weird. And they also found, like, a weird, like, air bubble there. But they didn't, like, think a lot about it. They thought maybe it was just an accident. Like, maybe somebody, like, fucked up when they were, like, doing the tube or whatever. So they didn't, like, think anybody was, like, going around murdering people. Because that's, like, not the first... Uh, you know, conclusion that you would come to. So that little girl survived and they didn't really think any more about it. Then a few weeks later, in comes a five month old named Paul Crampton. Now he was uh, put into ward four. He was, uh, he had a bronchial infection. It wasn't super serious, but you know, the parents were kind of worried. So they like brought him in to be checked out. Now, before he was going to be discharged, Beverly, again, she was in the ward by herself because, like I said, this was shit was very understaffed. Now, she was like, oh, like something's the matter with him. Everybody has to come in and check. So they all came in and checked. And then they found that he was suffering from insulin shock, which they thought was a little strange. Like he was going into like a coma-like state and this was very unusual. So they thought that was very weird. The doctors could bring him back, but they were just like, what is going on with this? We don't understand like why his insulin levels are so high. That is like very unusual. So they basically like put him in an ambulance and sent him to another hospital in Nottingham, which again, probably saved his life. Now, the crazy thing about this is that because his parents were so convinced that Beverly Allett was doing everything in her power to like save this baby. They let her ride in the ambulance with him to this other hospital because they were like, oh, she's like going above and beyond. She's doing all this shit to save the baby, even though she was like killing the, killing baby. the babies. Yeah. So, but nobody knew that. Like, yeah. that's what's fucked up. So she, yeah, so she rode with him in the ambulance. So he gets to the other fucking. 
hospital, and then they find that, again, his, like, insulin level is, like, way too high, and it's, like, super unusual, so they thought it was really <clears> weird, <throat> but they were able to, because he was at the other hospital, and she wasn't the only one that was in control, they were like, okay, well, we got this handled, and they were able to save him. Now, the day after that happened, though, there was another, there was a five-year-old, uh, his name was Bradley Gibson, and he had pneumonia, and he was brought into this ward where she worked, he had, again, a cardiac arrest, but was saved by the resuscitation, resuscita- resuscitation, resuscitation. team. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even talking. No, no, resuscitation. We don't know I'm Look, not even talking. I'm talking right now. So if he fell asleep, yeah, that bit you, you were not even talking. Yeah, I am the I, only yeah, yeah. one that is still keeping this show no, I'm listening. on the track. I'm listening to the show. On the track. I'm listening to the show, loving the show. I'm listening to the show. No one appreciates all the work I put into it. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm the only People, one gotta, Jenny you guys thinks can that y'all just, don't appreciate. Y'all guys can y'all just fall appreciate. asleep. No, y'all no, no. I'm just, sitting here listening to the show, I'm man. She's killing my people. I gotta fucking <laughs> persevere. <laughs> Even if I'm drunk, I still have to keep going because no hungry? one else is gonna do it. You hungry? Not really. I'm hungry. All right. Okay. I'm almost done. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember where I was. All right. So, as I said, this baby, Bradley Gibson, he was five years old. Now, they find out that his insulin level is super high. They think that's really weird. Um, you know, the doctor was attending is like, what the fuck is this about? This is, like, super unusual. And then they put him in the care of Beverly Allen again, like, later that night. Like I said, she was the only one working on the ward that night. And the kid has another heart attack. There's a five-year-old kid, and he has a heart attack. So they think that's a little weird. Yeah, it sounds up. So finally, they're like, okay, we'll send him to the bigger hospital. Because, like, the hospital she worked at was, like, not the main hospital in the area. So if, like, something was really bad, they would send him to, like, Nottingham. So in a lot of ways, that was kind of better. Like, not better because some people died, but... A lot of the babies that were like, well, you know, what the fuck, they sent them to the bigger hospital, and those kids survived because they weren't under her administrations anymore because she was the one doing it. But like I said, no one realized that she was the one doing it at the time. So he gets sent off to the bigger hospital, and he was, um, you know, he survived. So as I said, now it's really creepy because there was like a fucking, I watched a documentary about this bitch on, uh, it was on BBC or something like that. And they talked to some of the nurses that had worked with her. And they're like, nobody, like, absolutely nobody suspected that it could have been one of the nurses. They were like, she seemed totally normal, totally. There was nothing about her that would have, like, raised any red flag. She wasn't weird. She wasn't anything like that. So it's like nobody even thought of it. They're like, what, is there some kind of virus or is there some kind of what? Because they did notice that there was, like, some, like, wow, there's a lot of kids dying or a lot of, like, bad shit happening in this ward, like, of the children's ward. But they didn't really attribute it to a person. They, like, Thought it was a disease. Yeah, they thought it was, like, some kind of weird disease they didn't know about. Well... I mean, that's what you would think. You wouldn't think that it was, like, one person just doing it for no fucking reason. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when she came across as just, like, a normal fucking... Nobody... Everybody they talked to that knew her said there was nothing weird about her at all. So she's a totally normal person. Right. Like, no one would suspect anything. Which yeah. is... So what happened next? That's scary to me. So... Uh, 22nd of March, 1991, there was another, there was a two-year-old named, uh, Yik Hung, Yik Hung Chan, and she came into the, um, the hospital, and she was blue, and, um, it was actually a boy, actually, sorry, <laughs> I forgot, but, uh, so they, they put him on oxygen, he seemed fine, but then, like, the, he had, like, another, like, heart attack or some kind of, like, oxygen attack that that was very strange. So then they transferred him to another hospital in Nottingham, and he recovered. Although they did find out that his, um, like, what had happened, like, he had a fractured skull, which he didn't have when he brought in. So it seemed like this nurse was doing some more physical shit to these babies. Hitting him in the head. Yeah, and some shit like that. Now, this case, this bummed me out and i'm sorry you guys i'm like we've been going for five hours at this point damn i can't believe it i know we're almost done seriously right. but this this case really bummed me out so these twins come in like the first twin that came in they were they were two months old 
Now, they had been premature, so they had, like, a lot of health problems that, you know, come with being premature. So, Becky Phillips, the two-month-old baby, she gets brought in because she has, uh, apparently, gastroenteritis. Now, she gets brought into this baby ward on the 1st of April, 1991. Beverly Allen takes over her care. Two days later, Beverly... Like, calls the alarm and says, hey, something's wrong with this baby. They found the baby was hypoglycemic. Very strange. Um, said she was very cold, but they didn't find any, like, illness that, uh, you know, they could attribute to that. So they're like, okay, well, there's nothing wrong with her. So they send the baby home with the parents. Now, during the same night that they sent the baby home, the baby goes into convulsions and the doctor comes and says, oh, she just has colic. It's fine. Um, but the parents were like, okay, whatever. They keep the kid. The kid died mm. later that night. Now, they do an autopsy, but they, didn't co- they couldn't find anything. Now, Becky, the baby, also had a twin sister named Katie. Now, because Becky had died under weird circumstances. They figured, well, let's take Katie to the hospital just in case there's like some kind of genetic, you know, defect, like, you know, just as a precaution. So they bring Katie into the hospital. And unfortunately, Beverly Allen was their nurse yet again. Now, she is alone with the baby. Thank you, Ken. She's alone with the baby for some point. Then the resuscitation team gets brought in as usual. And they have to revive this baby who had stopped breathing. Now... Thank you very much, Ken. Yeah. So they revive Katie. She's fine. But two days later, she has another attack and her lungs collapsed. Now, they revived her again. They sent her to the bigger hospital at Nottingham. And at that hospital, they determined that five of the baby's ribs were broken. Damn. And that she also had brain damage as a result of oxygen deprivation. Strangling a baby and hitting it. Now, creepily, this made me so fucking sad when I saw this. Katie's mother, whose name was Sue, she was so happy that Beverly Allett, the serial killer, had helped her baby and had helped her baby survive that she made... Beverly Allett, the baby's godmother, even though this bitch yeah, had killed kidding. the twin sister yeah. of this baby. Well, he didn't know. She didn't know. That, like, that made me so fucking sad when I saw it. That was, like, the saddest That's some weird thing. shit, man. This woman fucking needs to And die. this baby, and the second baby, like, the first baby died. Beverly, like, the first baby died. Katie lived, but... She had um, partial paralysis. She also ended up having cerebral palsy and had, like, damage to her sight and damage to her hearing because of all the shit this fucking She never was. recovered? Nope. Yeah. This bitch needs to die. Yeah, this well. shit, man. Now, so there were four more victims, um, and there were all kind of, like, unexplained shit, like, happening on this fucking ward. And finally, finally, in... Late April of 1991, somebody thought, hey, yeah. what the fuck is going on in this children's ward? It's very unusual. Like, all these fucking babies, like, dying of these, like, strange, like, ailments. So, what ended up, like, being the catalyst for this bitch getting caught was this baby named Claire Pack, who was 15 months old. She actually had asthma. And so, she was in and out of the hospital a lot. So, they had brought her into... um this into the hospital and she was in Beverly Allett's care and she was only in her care for a few minutes. And then the baby had a fucking heart attack. The revival team comes in, they revived her and then they left. And then Beverly Allett is left alone with this baby again. And then she had another heart attack She's fucking and then they couldn't revive her from that one. Injecting those babies with something. So they do an autopsy on that, and yeah. then they're like, okay, well, the autopsy showed that she died of quote unquote natural causes, but the doctor who was in charge was like, yeah, this shit is not normal. Let's like do an like investigation into this shit. 
because there were so many unusual like cardiac cardiac arrests like among like babies and children in this particular ward of this but it was like something like 200 percent like over the normal kind of statistics shit alone will point that's out. what i mean the well like i said it took yeah. a long time to you know get to the point where they're like statistically that is unusual because like i said it's sad but in a hospital even like in a children's ward you know among babies or something it's like you're gonna get a certain percentage of babies um, of children who are going to die of natural causes and that's just what happens but you know there there's a baseline of what's normal for that and this was way over the baseline yeah so somebody started noticing now initially they thought that it was just like some kind of like i said a virus or something like that but then when they did an autopsy on um the the baby like claire peck they're like they found a whole bunch of potassium in the blood so they call the cops and they exhumed the baby and they found that there were traces of lignocaine in her system which is a drug that is normally given during um to adults if they're having a cardiac arrest but is not given to babies ever Hmm. it is not like a thing so they thought that was very strange so basically the dude that was the uh police superintendent he's like okay well this is like a fucking murder case so he went back and he looked into some other suspicious cases um that had happened over the previous two months and in those cases where he had the bodies exhumed or he looked into the records he found that the um levels of insulin were like way too high to be normal So he thought that was, like, unusual. So he started looking into all the people that were, like, personnel that were, like, who were the nurses that were on staff at the time that this happened because he's not a dummy. And they found out that Beverly Allen was the person that was on staff at the time that all this happened and also found out that the key to the insulin refrigerator was missing, um... And Mm. basically, later they found out that she had it. Um, They also found out that a bunch of the record checks, like the nursing checks, were missing um, during the time that these children had died. And when they searched Beverly Allen's house later, they found that shit in her house. They also found the key to the insulin refrigerator in her house. So... July of 1991, they, um, the police found that they had sufficient evidence to charge her with murder, but she wasn't formally charged until November of 1991. Um, when they first arrested her, she was pretty, like, cool and collected. She was basically like, hey, I don't have anything to do with it. Like, shit happens. Like, people die, whatever. Um, but they searched her house, and like I said, they found the uh, pages of the missing nursing log, And they also found, like, the keys to the insulin thing. They also found, like, a weird, like, pattern of behavior. They figured that she had, as I said, not only Munchausen syndrome, in in that she had a history of, like, harming herself to get attention, but also she had Munchausen by proxy syndrome in that she was harming other people in the sense that she would get attention for herself, like, for saving them. Because she seemed to get off on fucking up like fucking up these babies i don't know if she was like trying to kill them necessarily but she was just like trying to i will inject them with some shit that'll maybe like put them into some like medical distress and then everyone will come and i will look like i'm saving them or i'm helping them so i feel like she had that kind of she wasn't too good at it was malignant she? hero syndrome like yeah. we were talking about earlier i feel like she had kind of that wasn't too good at it with the amount of she, she wasn't killed. actually well she she ended up killing four of them like yeah. i think when she was convicted she was convicted of four murders and 11 attempted murders because a lot of her attempted murders were just she probably would have murdered them but they got transferred to another hospital right. and like out of her care you know, which ended up saving their lives because there wasn't anything wrong with them. It was just, like, what she was doing to them. I think she subconsciously just wanted to kill them. Probably she did. Because the ones that were around her, she killed. Yeah. The ones that she focused on. I mean, that's the thing. 
Now, the thing about it is, like, even after they arrested her, they put her in prison and everything like that, they were like, she just would not confess to anything that she'd done. Like I said, she um, she got charged with four counts of murder because four of her victims had died, 11 counts of attempted murder, 11 counts of causing grievous bodily harm. Uh, she ended up developing, because she was a little bit overweight when she got arrested, she actually ended up, while she was awaiting her trial, she... Um, developed anorexia and ended up losing like 70 pounds or something like that. Hmm. So she had some issues. Like she had some psychological problems. Now, even when they were like doing her trial and shit, it, it kind of had to be like kept putting off because she was going, Oh, I'm sick. Oh, I'm sick. Oh, I'm sick. Like she had like all the, like I said, Munchausen yeah. syndrome. So she was like sick all the time. She was trying to get attention. So it kept like putting the trial off. Um, so she finally ends up going to trial in February of 1993. And then, you know, they kind of like set all the shit up and they brought all of the shit out from her childhood, like how weird her behavior was. Like, look, she pretended to have like broken bones and all this kind of shit to get attention. The trial ended up asking, uh, lasting two months. She only ended up attending a little more than two weeks just because she kept calling out sick because she, you know, was trying to get attention, like I said. But she got convicted of all charges in May of 1993. She got given 13 life sentences for murder and attempted murder. This is the harshest sentence ever ever given to a woman. Um, but according to the judge who was, like, presiding over the trial, he's like, pretty much this bitch is never getting out. You have essentially fucked up the trust of the entire nursing profession so good for you and you are never and honestly the hospital that she worked at they closed down that entire maternity unit because nobody trusted yeah the nurses there anymore because of her yeah just because that one person so she ended up kind of changing a lot of shit over there so she actually ended up getting sent not to prison, but she um, got sent to like uh, a mental hospital, clearly because she was Looney Tunes. Like I said, Munchausen syndrome, also Munchausen by proxy. Uh, so she got sent to a hospital in Nottingham, a high security, insane asylum slash mental hospital. In Texas, they had to hung her. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And when she was in there, she also tried to get, like, attention further. She tried yeah. to, like, she ate, like, broken glass. She tried to, like, boil yeah. water on herself. Yeah. She did all kind of shit like that. But basically, they put her in there, and they're just like, yeah, well, you're not getting out. Yeah. So that's where she ended up. And she is still there to this day, as far as I know. Um, and that's about the end of that story. Damn. Okay, well. Fuck that bitch. I guess that's a fucking show. That was a long ass show. Did it, that was a long ass show. It was six hours. I think that was the longest show that we've ever yeah, done. Five show. hours and seventeen. Damn. Minutes. Well, if you guys didn't talk so much, oh, I here would... we go. Don't blame it on us. Okay, shut it down. If you guys didn't talk so much, okay, shut it down. <laughs> he leaves me a do shit by myself. I can't believe. I still can't believe Sophie like wound it up and fell asleep. She's like, I, I can't take it. I can't take it. She's fucking went to bed. I gotta cook for us though. I'm fucking starving. I'm kind of hungry too, actually. Yeah. But it's only 10 o'clock. Holy shit. I'm fucking starving. All right. Well, yeah. he left. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. I get left all alone, as usual. Hopefully this audio is okay. I know I checked earlier, but you know. So remember, like, share, subscribe on all your social media. If you like the show, please consider supporting the show financially, which would be really nice. Uh, you can go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash 13 o'clock podcast. You get to vote on all this fucking shit we're doing, like movies and topics and all that kind of shit. You get to vote on all that stuff. It's super fun. Also, if you'd like to give a one-time subscription, if you don't like Patreon for whatever reason, you can go to my uh, you can go to my blog, 13o'clockpodcast.wordpress.com, and there's a button in the sidebar to a PayPal account, which goes right to yours truly. Help me pay all the bills for the show, buy cameras, buy shit for the show you know what i mean yeah what are you doing nothing what are you doing i'm trying to do the fucking job i know that we'll go ahead and do it now do you see what i have to do do you see i'm just gonna sit right back here and wait for you to do it <laughs>
<laughs> so right here, we need to shut that shit down. I did good though, right? I got through all my shit. Yeah. I got through to the end. It was a fucking end. heavy day, man. It was a real heavy day. Every day is a heavy day Every for day me. Every day is a heavy day. I'm not retired like you well, are. Well, you did like fucking four I offenders. Did. You should have done like two. Well, yeah, I, didn't I know, know how you, you are. I didn't You're know you like, guys well, were going to talk on I'm going to go ahead and do four. Well, if you didn't do four, why don't you do eight? Why don't you do 12 of them? Next time I will. Okay. Well, I know better than to do that. Because All right. Just do 20. See what happens. <laughs> I'm going to do 20 fucking... I'm going to do 20 offenders. We'll be on here for five days. <laughs> <laughs> Tom needs an old old man nap. Hey, I got no time. All right. I can't believe how long this... This is our longest show ever. You did it to yourself. Like. You did it to yourself. I didn't. You did? I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Come I make some go, burritos. Man. Shut this shit. I'm going to make some... Yeah, I'm going to make some... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make some... All right. Just here fucking with me. The, Shut well, the it's, it's easy. And yeah. it's fun. All right. Don't make me pull Conan out. What is that going to do? Fucking Conan will defend me. I got him right here. What, are you going to hit me with the painting? No, he's just going to come out here and go... <laughs> <laughs> he's going to hit me with he's the painting. He's going to come in and go, you have to stun the stun something. <laughs> I, I, somehow I'm not that threatened. Look, all right, okay, but, I got to go. I got to go. You want to talk going. all day. You want all right. We are ending the show. Thank you guys for stopping by. Thank you, everyone that contributed. Please make sure to stop by. We're going to do like some matinees like we always do. But next Saturday is my birthday, you guys. So come by. I'm not sure what the topic is going to be. It's probably going to be like some urban legend shit because I just looked at the Patreon page and it looks like that's kind of way ahead in the voting. But um, so that should be super fun. It won't be as depressing as this one, which is all about murders and stuff. So it'll be a fun show. We'll have cake. It'll be super fun. Uh, so that'll do it for episode 214. Thank you guys for stopping by and we'll see you next time, probably tomorrow. Bye.